salvage the situation in view of the Gujarat election. And Arvind Kejriwal was finding it extremely difficult to defend Rajendra Pal. Mr. Balvia, do you believe that this will really, as you said, indeed salvage the situation for them? This, is this damage control enough that Rajendra Pal has resigned? Quite unlikely because Gujarat has reacted very strongly to it. The kind of posters that we saw that have come up across uh, Gujarat have put Arvind Kejriwal's credibility uh, in the talk and that is why he has probably forced Rajendra Pal to resign. But it is too late, too little. Arvind Kejriwal is the man who must go if you have to get rid of this kind of divisive politics. We, we heard the BJP uh, you know, demanding for Rajendra Pal to be sacked. Now, before that attempt, it appears he's resigned at this point. Will that mean this, this would settle the controversy for you? Well, it will certainly snowball further because it will expose Arvind Kejriwal and the kind of people he has in his ranks. This might seem like a damage control from Arvind Kejriwal's perspective, but more and more questions will be raised because there are several Rajendra Pal in the Aam Admi Party and Arvind Kejriwal is one of them. Right. Right. Uh, Mr. Balvia, thank you very much for joining us with those details. Of course, the BJP uh, now at this point uh, hitting out at the Aam Admi Party, saying that this is nothing but an attempt to salvage the situation. The controversy has gone out of hand. People in Gujarat have very strongly reacted to this mass conversion, the anti-Hindu oath that's, that was taken in Delhi at the Ambedkar Bhavan on the 5th of October with Delhi Minister Aam Admi Party leader Rajendra Pal Gautam very much in attendance and taking that oath along with the rest. All right, on that note, we're going to step into a short break. We'll be right back with news and updates on the other side. Stay with us. You are watching India Today. Everyone's busy finding what's trending. You're busy finding out why. India Today, for those who research before reacting. Download the India Today app now. Battery swapping was a real game changer and is a real game changer as we go into other markets, large scale markets. your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. You are watching India Today.
All right, now India Today earlier spoke to the head of the Center for Civil Liberties, which won the Nobel Prize, a Peace Prize winner, Alexandra Matvichuk, spoke on the Russian aggression in Ukraine. Let's take a quick listen at this World Exclusive. Alexandra Romantsova, the executive director of Ukraine Center for Civil Liberties, is now joining us on this broadcast. A very big congratulations, Alexandra, for your organization winning the Ukrainian Nobel Peace. The, the victory is fantastic. Uh, congratulations to you. First up, of course, you're going to be very, very happy about this particular victory. Uh, tell us a little more about your efforts uh, in that region. Oh, that, that was really a big honor for us, sure. And that was big surprise because, yeah. you know, now, uh, in the region, we have uh, exactly in Ukraine, we have a war uh, because of aggression of Russia Federation. So we have a lot of job, you know, because it's like um, every day happens something which we need documented like war crimes. And together with other organizations, human rights defender organization from Ukraine, we join to the coalition tribunal for Putin to document it, all the war crimes which happened here and now in our database it's 21,000 cases but officially in even in Ukraine um, prosecutor office have more than 40,000 and it's just here for your understanding it's all the territory of Ukraine but in occupied, occupied territory we not have a full uh, access uh, to the places, so we think it's much. It will be much bigger than this place, which uh, will be uh, exactly real released. And uh, if you will speak about <laughs> nomination, mm -hmm. I think uh, we was nominate not only because of documenting core crimes, which we're doing uh, eight years from starting of war with Russia from 2014. Uh, but uh, we work a lot with political prisoners, uh, which exactly Russia kept in the ter occupied territory. Let, let me of, come to uh, let me come to Crimea. those modality in just moments from now. But ever since uh, Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine, Alexandra, uh, the Center for Civil Liberties, and I've been tracking that on the internet as well, has worked alongside national and international partners. All of this to document the potential Russian crimes. If you could shed some more light on the work that you've done and the crimes committed by Russia too? We uh, we documented all the crimes. We not right. uh, we not separate, for example, if do if something will do uh, Ukrainian soldiers, we are not covered. We uh, documented all the crimes. But uh, now, for example, we see that even a uh, few cases which we have from Ukraine side react by Ukraine army and Ukraine prosecutors. So here we have justice like at the moment. Uh, but if we will speak about all the war crimes from Russia side, from Russia soldiers and officers, here we see a huge like scope of problem, like using people like life shields, uh, mm. torturing, killing people, mm. uh, forcibly disappeared people. So here we have a lot of work, we connection with all the people who stay in the occupied territory and uh, they give us information about situation there. So um, we understood that we need a separate tribunal for this because yeah. um, each national system can cover such big scope of episodes of war crimes. Hmm. And uh, how do you view Putin and all the atrocities committed by Putin against your nation? Uh, Putin, it's a main... Um, main general of Russian army because he made it, um, made exactly this decision to start the war, start occupation of Crimea, start occupation of Donbass and start uh, exactly full invasion in uh, in February this year. But uh, not only Putin uh, responsible for that, like president of uh, aggressive state, but Lukashenko same, because we have testimony for people who was uh, like civilians who was bringing to, uh, they take um, by Russian army when they was lose in the territory of uh, Chernigiv uh, and Kiev in April, they was bringing to the territory of Belarus and uh, tortured there and exactly was kept there like hostages. So, uh, and you know that from territory of Belarus, we have a shelling from uh, by rockets uh, of territory of Ukraine. So 
in this way, uh, exactly, mm -hmm. and even President Lukashenko, so-called, mm -hmm. uh, he told that exactly, yeah, we are participant of so-called special war operation. Mm -hmm. So this responsibility, not only Putin, Putin, first of all, but uh, Lukashenko in this way, same responsible. Because you have worked with national and international partners very well to document the crime that Russia as a country with Putin at the helm uh, has extended to Ukraine and many other nations too. If you could elaborate a little further on that. Yeah, we collaborate with, uh, first of all, International Criminal Court. Yes. You know, the biggest team of International Criminal Court now working work here in Ukraine. Uh, they choose uh, more awful cases for exactly, exe um, exactly execution, uh, execution of uh, mm. uh, presidents. Uh, and uh, for first of all, for Putin and but mm. with all other cases working here, for example, mm. with our prosecutor office working, right. French criminalists, uh, investigator from L Lithuania, investigator from Germany and all other European countries, open case in their national courts because they have a system of uh, mm. uh, like uh, uh, universal jurisdiction. So now we have 12 countries which open case against international crimes here in Ukraine in their national level. And you know, while Russia's invasion of Ukraine added a far bigger urgency, I would say, to the work that you're already doing at the Center for Civil Liberties, um, you've also been monitoring, documenting human rights violations. You're monitoring and documenting potential war crimes in Ukraine for years now. If you could elaborate a little further on that too. Yeah, we started eight years before with war crimes when uh, when was occupied Crimea and Donbass. But previously of this, it's main task of our organization. We was elaborate in 2007 and uh, we put the task for us. It's like in, uh, improve exactly standards of human rights for whole the territory of Ukraine and support in that our neighbors from all other mm. uh, countries. So we are monitoring, for example, work of uh, Ukraine court system, Ukraine police, Ukraine government and parliament who produce some legislation. So we always react if, if this legislation not included standards of human rights. So that that was our main task was during a uh, long period. After this, in 2013, when Yevromaidan started, we opened Yevromaidan source hotline which uh, each peaceful demonstrator who was arrested or uh, feel some uh, violence against them can call and have a support, aid support, uh, legal aid support. So we uh, we start to be like, uh, you know, center of supporting of peaceful demonstration during the Yevromaidan. And after this, we monitor, uh, mm -hmm. make monitoring mm -hmm. of whole court cases mm -hmm. against uh, exactly prosecute, uh, against uh, exactly government representative who do that, who validate in Yevromaidan, who arrest people, who beat mm. people, who give the orders to do that. So mm. we have long story of our work. And last one that was political prisoner who started the big group from 2014. Yeah. They was arresting Crimea and bringing to Russia Federation. So we start campaign safe elections of and let my people go. It's international campaign with joint huge numbers of different people from different countries, more than 47. So I think that's why Nobel Prize Committee look at us. You know, uh, for the, Nobel Prize, the Nobel Peace Prize Committee looks at you for many more reasons than that, because uh, for many years, Alexandra, uh, your organization, what I was reading about, you all have promoted the right to criticize power. Uh, to protect the fundamental rights of citizens as well. And you have, uh, so to speak, made an outstanding effort to document all the war crimes, uh, whether it is the human right abuses, the abuse of power. How much of that exists in Russia right now? And what are the steps that could be taken going forward to contain all of that? Um we, you know that Nobel Prize, uh, not only we are uh, like uh, accept, but uh, together with us, it was uh, nom uh, nominated and awarded exactly Alex Bilatsky from Belarus and Memorial 
uh, from uh, Russia Federation. Uh, both of these organizations, both these human rights defenders, our colleagues, hmm. working with us a lot of years, mm -hmm. and uh, each of them now persecuted by their government, their power, their authorities. Uh, so, first of all, uh, we are in this case we exactly in much better conditions because uh we can criticize here in in ukraine can criticize have a dialogue with our state and our state um really often hear us and change exactly their practice but in russia federation hmm. in belarus if you criticize power yes that means you will be destroyed like memorial at the day when we started knowing that we are ever to the Nobel Prize, uh, uh, Nobel Prize of Peace was uh, a court of Russia Federation take off the, uh, their exactly uh, building where they work a lot of years. They uh, exactly research all the crimes of Soviet Union times and they have a huge archive with uh, numerous of cases uh, and for Ukraine really same important because during the Soviet times a lot of Ukrainians was killed by Stalin uh, and KVD and um, security forces. So uh, for us it's really important same support memorial and uh, Alice Bilyatsky in Belarus exactly sitting in the jail now. Uh, it's yeah. second time when uh, Belarus authority put him in the jail. Yeah. So for us our colleagues human rights defenders who fighting for values, democracy and human rights in Russia and Belarus are really important because they are our, we are union in that and they fighting with, uh, with their uh, regimes, like auto uh, autocracy regimes, like we are fighting in the, <laughs> we need to fighting in the uh, field of battle. On that note, it's a wrap on this edition of the Bulletin. For the news and updates, you could log on to indiatoday.in. You could also download our app for more. Stay tuned. Our India Today special on the other side. You are watching India Today. pandemic has forced us to reassess what we are doing with our physical health and our mental health. Many of us have started to do things for ourselves, for our health, things that we would not before the pandemic. In that sense, the COVID-19 pandemic has been an eye-opener. And to help you get back to the basics, we put together Health360 for our viewers. Welcome to India Today's brand new health show. I'm Sriha Murdani. Today our conversation is going to be about food. What's going wrong with our food habits? Why exactly are we eating out of packets? And why is the food that we eat from packets called junk? Why is this type of food pushing India towards another epidemic? This is an epidemic of lifestyle diseases. Have you ever thought?
what about the food value of what you eat from a packet? When you pick the bag of chips to go with the bland ghar ka khana or before you polish off a nutrition bar, what is the nutrition that it is really offering you? The chocolate that you eat to kill hunger pangs between lunch and dinner and that packaged meal are ready to eat kadi chawal that you have just microwaved. None of the foods, if you can even for a moment call it food, have any nutritional value. Far from it, these foods, ultra processed, laden with preservatives, sugar, salt and fats, not the good kind, could lead to a host of diseases. They only fill your stomach up. But do nothing for your health. First, let us identify these processed foods. Breakfast cereals, cheese, tinned vegetables, bread, savoury snacks such as crisps, sausage rolls, pies and pasties, meat products such as bacon, sausage, ham, salami and pate. Microwaved meals or ready-to-eat meals, cakes and biscuits and soft drinks. Anything that has not been cooked at home has a long shelf life, is actually laden with preservatives that prolong the life of the food and cut short yours. That is the ideal definition of a processed food. You put out a pack of biscuits, it will survive for months together, it won't go bad. How does that really happen? Now it has ingredients that will ensure its shelf life. Those very ingredients are bad for you. In fact, a quick breakfast for many would involve one or more of these processed foods that I just told you about. But nutritionally, they add zero value. Instead, a homemade ghee laden paratha is actually much healthier. Ghee is good for you. The ghee is rich in fat. It contains high concentrations of monosaturated omega 3s. These healthful fatty acids support a healthy heart and cardiovascular system. Now studies show that using ghee as a part of a balanced diet can reduce unhealthy cholesterol levels. Now why is the paratha good? It is freshly prepared, it will go bad in a few hours in the heat and has the good fat. It has no preservatives and no harmful packaging. So a paratha over packaged muesli is a better choice. In fact, a freshly prepared samosa, not the frozen one, is actually better than a bag of chips. So not like I'm promoting an oily snack to you. Just drawing a comparison on what you should choose from if you are actually having a choice between these two things. Ingredients such as salt and sugar and fat added to processed foods to make their flavor more appealing and to extend their shelf life or in some cases to contribute to the food structure such as salt and bread or sugar and cakes. Artificial flavors are added, food color, texturing agents. These foods, unlike your ghar ka khana, will be much tastier, even addictive and meet your cravings but damage your health in the longer run. Ultra processed foods are also cheap and easily accessible. For example, a pack of chips or biscuits, even in rural India, has now become a substitute for a wholesome meal cooked at home. In fact, the level of awareness in rural India about the dangers of processed food is so low, it's frightening. Processed foods are linked to increase in cardiovascular disease, obesity in kids, lack of agility, Increased sodium levels means increased blood pressure. Regular consumption of processed foods is an open invitation to ill health. Imagine what a pack of biscuits can do to you, to your child. Have you even thought about how much is the excess salt and sugar intake when a five-year-old polishes off a bag of chips? Or what is the nutritional value of the fizzy drink that your child has finished off? In this day and age, cooking three fresh meals a day is a tall order for many. But conscious eating and limiting your junk food intake, processed food intake, will translate to a healthier, longer life. Getting your nutrients as much as you can from anything that does not come in a packet. Because most things in a packet are what they are called, junk.
Well, our next report is going to give you an insight as to why India has become the diabetes capital of the world. And things are only worsening for us as far as this dreaded lifestyle disease is concerned. I tried everything. It didn't go away. No one is destined to be diabetic, but so it was. Everyone I have met. Living in a joint family of 15 folks, Sohit saw diabetes all around him. Parents, aunts and uncles, one can say his fate was sealed. To all three families, most people are diabetic. Yeah, my... Sohit, who is in his early 30s, found out that he is a type 2 diabetic when India was under a lockdown due to COVID-19. I knew what a fatty liver looks like. I suspected I'm diabetic on 6th May 2020. Uh, I felt some a tingling sensation in my leg so because I have also faced blood pressure issues so I checked my blood pressure was normal next logical thing was check your sugar I, I borrowed my mother's sugar machine and checked my sugar and it was about 340 so I told uh, the doctor that you know I'm not really fond of that many sweets so why am I having these issues? So she, I, she asked me, what is your routine and all those things. I would tell, I would have like three, four glasses of Tang, mm. Coke, things like that. So she told me, you're virtually living on sugar. India has been struggling with its diabetic population. Projections say in 2019, 77 million individuals had diabetes in India. This number is expected to rise to 134 million by 2045. The worry is, the youth is contributing to the bulk of this burden, as 57% of them remain undiagnosed. Ah, the PCOS girl. Doctors explain why. Over the years, over the decades actually, uh, there is a change in eating patterns and lifestyle patterns. And the exponential growth that has happened in diabetes is accompanied by a lowering of age at onset. So, more and more younger people, as you very rightly say, are affected by this type of type 2 diabetes. Covid has also been a major trigger for the rapid rise in diabetics across the globe. Covid did many things. There was worsening of diabetes during Covid that everyone knows. There were a lot of people who were pre-diabetic or borderline diabetic who became floridly, di floridly diabetic during Covid. But there also seems to be some increase in actual risk of new diabetes which is still being studied. It is not only an urban phenomenon. Rural India is also moving towards increasing numbers of diabetics today. India has another problem, that when mothers are undernourished and their babies are small, even those babies have a greater risk of developing diabetes and I'll explain that. When such babies, when they're exposed to the same kind of food, the energy dense food that everyone's having these days, they also suddenly tend to put on weight around their tummies and they also tend to become metabolically, quickly diabetic later in life. Today, Sohit's story is the one to inspire. He has now fully reversed type 2 diabetes. I think today only I was told that my diabetes has been reversed. My H1BAC is a 5.4. Of course, heredity is one such factor. But a bad lifestyle, overconsumption of fast food, sugary foods and smoking is making Indians diabetic. There should be a larger focus on child health and women, especially maternal nutrition during pregnancy that could act as a preventive measure against the spread and increase of diabetic incidences in the country. With Pradeep Gupta, Milan Sharma for India Today. Have you ever thought about what goes into manufacturing food that is found in packets? What exactly are the ingredients? Have you tried reading labels from processed foods? First of all, do these labels found in processed foods in India inform you or mislead you? Our next report tells you more. The biggest burden of lifestyle diseases in the world Maximum number of patients suffering from diabetes, childhood obesity on the rise. India is battling a silent pandemic. This is a pandemic of increasing burden of non-communicable lifestyle illnesses.
and one of the major reasons is because there is lack of awareness about what we are eating for example what is the nutritional value of this pack of biscuits uh, that I've just picked up there is nutrition information uh, which I can't even read in fact this lack of information about this so-called food in a packet the government of India intends to bring about star ratings now in the face of it it appears that this is uh, you know, rightly intentioned, but experts say that star ratings are actually counterproductive and that there should be warning signs that should come right here instead of star ratings. What do junk foods deserve? Star ratings or warning signs? That is the question being asked by public health experts in India. It does not help people to identify unhealthy nutrients. For example, a diabetic may like to know how much sugar in a product is there, but it doesn't tell. Second, the use of uh, healthy nutrients, like for example, if you put uh, nuts in the chocolate, gives more stars. So it is misleading in nature and manipulative. Industry likes it because it gives more stars. They can use it for health claims and that is useful for marketing their product. Thirdly, which is general creating a halo or health halo around all the food products. Once you adopt this policy, all the food products which are industrially produced will be labeled as healthy in varying degrees from one star to five stars. Instead, introduce warning signs, say experts. Experts from Cambridge University have shown that cigarette-style packaging would also put people off junk food. The idea is to focus on the relationship between the product and its health effects and that they believe could be the key to targeting unhealthy food consumption. So your chocolate bar with a health warning, the coke with a cigarette-like warning could work. While these may be drastic, simpler warning signs instead of star labeling is the way forward. If we give clear-cut health warnings about high levels of salt, sugar and unhealthy fats, we are educating the consumer to make an informed choice rather than being misguided by a supposedly healthy product. Experts are in favor of nutrient-specific warning signs, which is known to be effective to reduce consumption of junk foods. That is the only way to send the right message to a population that has low levels of nutritional literacy. Outside of India, Canada is imposing warning label signs on high on salt and sugar foods. Mexico has already imposed black stop labels on these foods. Chile was the first country to have front of the food label warning. It remains to be seen if the food regulator's star ratings get cleared or whether the food authority eventually goes in for stricter warnings like the danger sign for processed food items. In New Delhi, Sneha Mordani for India Today. Here are food items that you should refrain from eating or be extremely wary of because they have a direct link with lifestyle ailments. Let's talk about red meats first. Extremely harmful. Saturated fats, they also boost the bad kind of cholesterol and that's the reason why you should not be consuming them. Foods rich in sugar. Sugar leads to inflammation. Salt, also sodium. These boost your blood pressure, which means they increase your blood pressure levels. That's the reason why you should not be consuming them. Soda again, which is, which is extremely rich in sugars. It has added sugars and that's the reason why you should refrain from consuming sodas. Processed meats, they're very high in salt to preserve these meats and that's the reason why you should not be consuming them. White rice, bread and pasta. Now these items will just fill you up but it's zero nutritional value. It has zero food value. So you're just consuming them and filling yourself up and doing nothing else when it comes to your health. So refrain from consuming white pasta and white bread and also white rice, canned soup, canned vegetables, whole lot of preservatives, extremely harmful. These preservatives will improve the shelf life of these canned food items, but reduce yours. 
they're extremely harmful you should not be consuming them Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. You would have heard about the concept of food miles. The lesser time your food takes to travel from the farm to your plate, the better. The lesser food miles, the better it is. Hence the concept of locally sourced foods, locally procured foods and locally grown foods. Here's why nutritionists believe these foods are the best for you. It is fresher. It has not travelled thousands of kilometres to reach your plate or waited in a cold storage facility to be made available around the year. Secondly, it retains more nutrients. Thirdly, Local foods are more flavorful. Why? Because they are not harvested early to be shipped for distribution thousands of miles away. They are in fact picked at the peak of ripeness and they store maximum flavor. This food is not just healthy, nutritious, but it's right there fresh in front of you because the farm to fork time is really less. When the food is pocket friendly with least carbon emissions, less pollutants, fresh, healthy, nutritious, I think we should make the right choice of eating local, which is also healthy. Our next report explains why and how. In a bid to lose weight, we end up losing essential nutrients by blindly following fad diets. Here's more. confessed that she developed psoriatic arthritis after following a strict diet. She lost 16 pounds in three weeks, while the recommended healthy target is one to two pounds a week. Psoriatic arthritis typically causes the affected joints to swell up, making it stiff and painful. Clearly Kim's choices have come under severe fire, but she has defended her move, claiming she had a nutritionist supervising her diet. Fat diets have always been an unfortunate part of the health and fitness industry. Every now and then a new diet emerges promising unreal results. While some may achieve temporary results, many end up with health conditions they never had. There are diet and fitness fads that people follow blindly these days. They think that these are an easy way to good health, but quick fixes can be disastrous. A fat diet has two things in it. One, it is way too restrictive and second, they may give you quick results but may affect overall health. They are only a temporary fix to a long-term eating and lifestyle problem one may have. In a recent major study, unhealthy diets are said to be responsible for over 11 million deaths per year globally, more than smoking or consuming tobacco. Eating very little fruits and vegetables and consuming too much sodium through salt or processed food is accounted for half of all deaths. Heart attacks and strokes are the main diet-related causes of death, followed by type 2 diabetes and cancer. If for an extended period of time we go very low on protein or avoid proteins, it can have a major health impact leading to weakness, fatigue, muscle loss, sarcopenias, or even a weakened immunity. Going completely off salt for a long period of time is also not healthy because that can lead to certain issues like severe weakness, convulsions, and even coma in certain cases. Though most of these fat diets do nothing except waste time, effort, and money, gullible people fall prey to its promise of instant results. Often these diets aren't well researched or the research is faulty. In a bid to find a temporary solution, you might end up with a lifelong problem. Bureau Report, India Today. Well, that report brings us to the end of this edition of Health 360. Hope you enjoyed watching the show as much as we did putting together these reports for you. Until next time, eat well, stay safe and do take very good care of yourselves.
are watching India Today. A very good evening. You're watching India Today. I'm Nabila Jamal. The headlines first. Prime Minister Modi in pole-bound Gujarat addresses massive rally in Madhera. Prime Minister's Vikas pitch to Gujarat voters. Modhera ke liye, Mahesana ke liye, aur pure North Gujarat ke liye, Vikas ki nai urja ka sanchar hua hai. Kejriwal's minister quits amid row over anti-Hindu oath. Rajendra Pal Gautam, who has called Ram Krishna as false gods, made it quit after Kejriwal faces backlash in pole-bound Gujarat. Shinde Udhav camps in huddle after EC freezes bow and arrow symbols. Sources claim the Trishul, Rising Sun and Mashal being explored by Udhav camp as new symbols. AIMIM chief Asad bin Oasi wades into Tipu showdown, claims that Tipu irks BJP because he waged wars against Britishers, says the BJP will never be able to erase Tipu's legacy. Incessant rains across Delhi and CR brings cities to a standstill. Massive traffic snarls after Delhi received second highest rainfall since 2007 in the last one day. All right, here's some big news coming in from Maharashtra. The Shinde camp are likely to object to Udav Thakre camp symbol suggestions. According to them, both factions will have to choose from the available options from the Election Commission of India, their website. New symbols can only be demanded by new parties, not the party already existed. In 1989, Sena had demanded the symbol of a tiger, but was de denied by the then Election Commission. Now, the Shinde camp says that Udav must pick from the available symbols on the Election Commission's website. In fact, here, looking at the uh, choices made by Udav Thakre's camp, they are looking for a Trishul or uh, a few other symbols like the sun, the rising sun. In fact, here, Udav Thakre camp now pushing for some of the symbols, asking for its availability. But Shinde camp opposing to it, opposing to Udav Thakre's symbol wish list saying that they, none of these symbols that they want to choose are on the Election Commission's website, so therefore it could not, it should not be allowed. In fact, uh, a Mashal, a Trishul and a Rising Sun, these are the options Udav Thakre camp has given, while Shinde camp saying none of these symbols are mentioned in the Election Commission's website. In fact, what we hear is that in 1989, back then the Shiv Sena had demanded the symbol of a tiger, but at that point they were denied by the Election Commission. And it appears that this time too, some of the symbols, at least the wish list uh, that's, dis that's expressed by Udav Thakre camp, asking for either a Trishul or a Mashal or a Rising Sun as their, as their party symbol. But the Shinde caption, it's not the election commission who's responded, the Shin Shinde faction there has responded saying none of these symbols or the wish list of Udav Thakre camp are available. None of those symbols are available in the election commission website, therefore they cannot ask or pitch for any of the symbols that they've proposed, which is the Trishul, the Mashal, or the Rising Sun. All right, now, in a big blow to Udav Thakre's legacy claim, the Election Commission has seized the party's symbol. Udav Thakre faction of the Shiv Sena has submitted a letter to the Election Commission regarding interim symbol and the party name for the upcoming bipoles. The Udav Thakre faction has picked three symbols for the party, which are the Trishul, the Rising Sun and Mashal. While three names picked for the party are Shiv Sena Bala Sahib Thakre, Shiv Sena Udav Thakre and Shiv Sena Prabodhankar Thakre. In fact, this comes after Udav Thakre chaired a key meeting at Matoshri with other senior leaders. MP Arvind Savant of the Udav faction has targeted the BJP, alleged that the Saffron Party is misusing the Election Commission, just like the other central agencies. While the Shinde faction MLAs and the MPs will be holding a key meeting at 7pm at Chief Minister's residence, which will be chaired by Eknath Shinde. Election Commission has now prohibited the use of the party's name, the bow and arrow symbol. 
for both factions. In fact, Election Commission has also asked both the factions to choose a different name altogether. The Shiv Sena name itself has been frozen. They've asked them to choose a different name, which can have links with the parent party. Election Commission of India has now directed the two factions to submit their symbols and their name preferences to the body so that it approves and then it's released. <laughs> बड़ी दुख की बात है कि एकनाथ शिंदे ये अंधेरी पूर्व में इलेक्शन ही नहीं लड़ते हैं तो इलेक्शन खाली हम शिवसेना ही लड़ रहे हैं भारतीय जनता पार्टी लड़ रही है कौन परिक दसरा मेला तो ही हो नहीं मनु ने यह खोकासुरा ने प्रयत्न किया होता मैदान शिवतीर्थ शिवसेने का मिलता काम है पण शेवटी न्याय देवता त्या देवता या शब्दाला जागली आणि तिने न्याय दिला दसरा मेळावा अभूतपूर्व असा तो झाला अद्भूत असं वातावरण तिकडे होतं दोन मेळावे त्या दिवशी झाले असं म्हणतात कारण मी तर मग आपल्या मेळाव्याला गेलो होतो एका ठिकाणी सगळं काही पंचतारांकित होतं आणि दुसऱ्या बाजूला साधा साधा शिवसैनिक आणि त्याच्यात मला खरोखर मी भारावून जातो अशा काही आठवणी आल्यानंतर कि काही दिव्यांग होते काही नेत्रहीन होते काही खूप लांबून चालत आलेले होते काय सोय होती कोणत्या गाड्या होत्या काय पंचपंक पक्वान नव्हती काही नाही स्वतःची मीठ भाकरी घेऊन ही मंडळी अर्धी भाकर खाईन उपाशी राहीन पण माझ्या शिवसेनेसाठी मी काय वाटेल ते करीन एकच ध्येय एकच जिद्द आणि एकच विचार शिवतीर्थ आणि शिवतीर्थ शिवसेना एके शिवसेना त्या सगळ्यांना मी खरंच मनापासून धन्यवाद देतो आहे तुम्ही आहात तुम्ही मानता आहात म्हणून आम्ही आहोत आणि ही जी परंपरा आहे ही काल परवाची नाही आहे मी आज सुद्धा आपल्याशी बोलतोय आपण माझं ऐकता आहात शिवाजी पार्क वरती आपण आला होता उद्धव ठाकरे कोण उद्धव ठाकरे बाळासाहेब ठाकरे म्हणून मला किंमत आहे म्हणून मला महत्व आहे आणि मग मी ज्या वेळेला या पक्षाचं पक्ष प्रमुख पद स्वीकारलं तेव्हा माझ्या मनामध्ये ज्या आठवणी दाटल्या होत्या त्या काही वेळा मी आपल्याशी बोललेलो आहे पण पुन्हा एकदा आठवण करून सांगतो एकोणीस जून एकोणीसशे मला तो सगळा काळ बोलताना सुद्धा डोळ्यासमोर येतो आहे ते आमचं शिवाजी पार्कचं घर म्हणजे आत्ताच्या भाषेमध्ये वन बी एच के एक बेडरूम हॉल आणि किचन तिथे आमचं सगळं एकत्रित कुटुंब राहायचं शिवसेना प्रमुख अर्थात तेव्हा शिवसेना नव्हती पण शिवसेना प्रमुख मराठी माणसांवरती होणाऱ्या अन्यायाला वाचा पडत होते वाचा आणि थंड बसा म्हणता म्हणता गर्दी वाढायला लागली आणि एक दिवस अचानक बाळासाहेबांनी विचारलं अरे एवढी सगळी माणसं येत आहेत गर्दी जमते पुढे काय करायचं ठरवलेस काय संघटना वगैरे काढणारच की नाही नाव काय ठरवलंस शिवसेना मराठी माणसाच्या न्याय बालकांच्या न्याय कसा की जन्म शिवसेना
आणि त्याच्यानंतर हा सगळा संघर्ष सुरू झाला हा इतिहास जो पन्नास छप्पन वर्षाचा आपण बघतो त्याला सुरुवात झाली त्यावेळी कोणी सोबत नव्हतं मोठी मोठी माणसं मी म्हणतोय पण सर्वसामान्य माणसं ही जिद्दीने आणि चिकाटीने सोबत होती आणि हे सगळं बाळासाहेबांनी स्वतः पाहिले एक दिवस दरवाजाची मेल वाजली दार उघडला तर एक कुरळ्या केसाचा चष्मा घातलेला एक तगडा माणूस उभा आणि त्यांनी सांगितलं बाळासाहेब मी दत्ता साळवी मी काल तुमच्या भाषणाला आलो होतो मी माझे राइट आप एंटी हिंदू राव हिज नाउ एक्सप्लोडेड डेली मिनिस्टर राजेंद्र पाल गौतम हिज रिजाइन फ्रॉम द कैबिनेट फॉलोइंग इज कॉन्ट्रोवर्शियल ओथ विच इज पार्ट मैसिव कॉन्ट्रोवर्सी आफ्टर टेंडरिंग हिज रेजिग्नेशन मंत्री पद से इस्तीफा दे दिया है वो हमारे साथ में बातचीत करने के लिए सबसे पहला सवाल यही है कि वजह क्या है इस्तीफा देने की और दो पन्नों की जो आपने चिट्ठी लिखी है उस चिट्ठी में तमाम आपने बातें लिखी है भाजपा पर भी आपने निशाना साधा है आम आदमी पार्टी को किस तरीके से निशाना साधा जा रहा है उसका जिक्र भी किया है क्या आपको वजह लगी कि आपको इस्तीफा देना पड़ा बस एक ही कारण है दिल बहुत दुखी है इतने दिन से रोज देख रहा हूं कहीं हमारे समाज के युवाओं की मूछ रखने पर हत्या हो रही है कहीं घोड़ी पे बारात निकालने पर हमला हो रहा है कहीं घड़े छूने पर हत्या हो रही है कहीं बहन बेटी की इज्जत लूट उनको फांसी पर लटका के हत्या की जा रही है और ऐसी हत्याओं पर कोई भी नहीं बोलता भाजपा का कोई बड़ा नेता नहीं बोलता देश के प्रधानमंत्री चुप्पी साध लेते हैं देश के गृह मंत्री चुप्पी साध लेते हैं और तो और जब ज्यादा दिल दुखता है जब हत्या करने वाले लोगों का समाज महापंचायत करता है हत्यारों के फेवर में इससे मन दुखी होता है और ऊपर से इसी तरह की जुर्म जाति छुआछूत ऊंची नीच से परेशान होकर डॉक्टर बाबा साहेब अम्बेडकर जी ने 14 अक्टूबर उन्नीस को बौद्ध धर्म की दीक्षा ली और उन्होंने लाखों न्याय के साथ दीक्षा लेते वक्त यही बाईस प्रतिज्ञाएं पूरे समाज के लोगों को दिलवाई और तभी चौदह अक्टूबर उन्नीस से आज तक हर साल देश में और विदेश में हजारों जगह पर करोड़ों लोग बौद्ध धर्म की दीक्षा लेते हैं और उसी जगह इन सारी बाईस प्रतिज्ञाओं को दोहराते हैं सवाल है राजेंद्र जी आपसे ये कि ये जो शपथ आपने ली इसके बाद ही भाजपा ने सवाल खड़े किए और ये कहा कि हिंदू देवी देवता जो हैं उनका आपने अपमान किया है। तो इस आरोप को आप किस नजरिए से मेरा, देखते मेरे पूरे भाषण में आज तक जितने भी मेरे भाषण है चाहे वो दिल्ली की विधानसभा के अंदर हो चाहे वो किसी सामाजिक समारोह में हो किसी आयोजन में हो किसी धरने प्रदर्शन में हो एक शब्द मेरा दिखा दीजिए मैंने किसी भी धर्म को मानने वाले लोगों की आस्था के खिलाफ एक शब्द बोला हो मैंने किसी के मैं सबके धर्मों की और उनकी आस्थाओं की इज्जत करता हूँ मैं मेरा मेरा ये मानना है कि अगर मुझे इज्जत चाहिए अगर मेरे आराध्य की मैं चाहता हूँ कोई अपमान ना करे तो मुझे भी कोई हक नहीं मैं किसी दूसरे के आराध्य का अपमान करूँ अपने पत्र में पढ़ पा रहा हूँ आपका पत्र आपने अपने पत्र में दुख जताया है कि आम आदमी पार्टी अरविंद केजरीवाल को निशाना साधा जा रहा है ये दुख आपको क्यों हुआ था कि बीजेपी दुष्प्रचार कर रही है अरविंद केजरीवाल जो देश की देश के लिए एक आशा की किरण है जो लोगों के लिए शिक्षा स्वास्थ्य बिजली पानी सामाजिक सुरक्षा महिला सुरक्षा इन सारे अच्छे समाज के जुड़े मुद्दों पर रात दिन काम कर रहे हैं उन मुद्दों पर काम करने वाली कि हमारे नेता जिन जिनको मेरे इस आयोजन के बारे में पता ही नहीं है अच्छा, को जानकारी नहीं, 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 नहीं है कि मिशन जय भीम या डिपुटी सोसाइटी ऑफ इंडिया ने यह आयोजन किया है क्योंकि तो जगह जगह होता रहता है पूरे देश में होता है और उनके ऊपर उनके ऊपर बीजेपी जब पूरे गुजरात में हार रही है डर गई है उस डर के कारण मतलब जान बुझ कर दुष्प्रचार कर रही है और मेरी पार्टी को बदनाम कर रही है मेरे नेता को पोस्टर भी लगाए गए भाजपा की तरफ से या फिर तो पोस्टर लगा के खुद बताए ना कि जिन प्रतिज्ञाओं को कह के वो कह रहे हैं वो भी उन्हीं प्रतिज्ञाओं का पोस्टर लगा रहे हैं बड़े बड़े पूरे गुजरात में तब अपमान नहीं हो रहा क्या और फिर उन्हीं प्रतिज्ञाओं को भारत सरकार खुद हमारे मोदी जी की सरकार के केंद्रीय मंत्री सामाजिक न्याय अधिकारिता मंत्री ने डॉक्टर अम्बेडकर लाइफ एंड स्पीचेज के अंदर वॉल्यूम सत्रह में छपवा है इसी भारत सरकार ने छपवाया दीक्षा भूमि नागपुर के अंदर इसी भारत सरकार ने वो बाईस प्रतिज्ञा शिला लेख पे लगा के वहां पे लगाई है जाके देखिए आपके ऊपर दबाव उसके अंदर उसके अंदर वहां के मुख्यमंत्री वहां के केंद्रीय मंत्री भारत सरकार के दो दो केंद्रीय मंत्री उस समारोह में शामिल हुए उसी दीक्षा समारोह में दबाव था क्योंकि लगातार भाजपा आरोप लगा रही थी मेरे कोई दबाव नहीं थी बयान दे रही थी दबाव था आपके मेरे पास सिर्फ एक दबाव है एक तो मेरे समाज के ऊपर जो लगातार जुम जाती हो रही है इसपे चुप क्यों है सब इस पर बोलते क्यों नहीं को लेकर दबाव नहीं दूसरा ये की छुआछूत मुक्त भारत कब बनेगा पिछहत्तर साल हो गए आजादी के तब भी आज भी छुआछूत ऊंच नीचे ये क्यों किसने तय की पूरी दुनिया में जाती नहीं है केवल भारत में जाती क्यों है भूमिका क्या होगी आगे आप आप क्या करेंगे मैं आम आदमी पार्टी का एक सिपाही हूँ एक विधायक के तौर पर अपने क्षेत्र की जनता का और दिल्ली का प्रतिनिधित्व दिल्ली की विधानसभा में करूंगा अपने समाज के हक अधिकार की लड़ाई को लड़ूंगा 
जो आए आए दिन जो जुन जाती होती है उसके खिलाफ लड़ूंगा और एक वकील के तौर पे कोर्ट में अपने समाज की पैरवी भी करूंगा आप कह रहे थे आप सभा करेंगे ऐसे लेकर नहीं समाज को सभा ये करने की रोज रोज अत्याचार हो रहा है केंद्र सरकार चुप्पे साधे हुए देश के प्रधानमंत्री चुप्पे साधे हुए हमें इस पे मिलके देश के प्रधानमंत्री जी से बात करनी होगी लेकिन क्या आप इस जुन जाति को रोकोगे या नहीं रोकोगे क्या भारत को छो छुत मुक्त भारत जातिवाद मुक्त भारत बनाने को तैयार हो या नहीं हो जवाब दीजिए आपका इस्तीफा ऐसे वक्त पर भी आया जब गुजरात में काफी राजनीतिक घटनाक्रम देखने के लिए मिले हैं राजनीति इससे प्रभावित होती आप ये समझ पा रहे थे क्या नहीं नहीं मुझे लगता है कि देश की जनता इतनी समझदार है कि वो बीजेपी के बरगलावे में आने वाली नहीं है वो जानते हैं कि अरविंद केजरीवाल दिल्ली के दिल्ली के नहीं पूरे देश के लोगों के भविष्य की उम्मीद है वो जानते हैं इस बात को वो तो जान बुझ को कलर दे रहे हैं उसको All right, that was Rajendra Pal's reaction. He is a Delhi minister, Aam Aadmi Party leader who has resigned after he was spotted at that huge anti-conversion rally that was held at the Ambedkar Bhavan on the 5th of October. That's got him much flack. Arvind Kejriwal himself, the Delhi chief minister, wasn't very happy with Rajendra Pal participating in this uh, conversion drive. In fact, Aam Aadmi Party now in the in a spot after Rajendra Pal has appear in that video very seemingly appears to take an oath against um, all Hindu gods saying that I will not worship Hindu gods there were mass conversion that was carried out to Buddhism Delhi Minister Rajendra Pal now resigns from the cabinet following his controversial oath that sparked huge controversy after tendering his resignation in fact, uh, we believe that his resignation was cleared by Ahmadi Party Chief Arvind Kejriwal. Uh, in fact, they have really, they, what Rajinder Pal says, that he has nothing to do with that event that he attended. He was just part of it. Remember, the former minister attended Vishal Dash, uh, Damdishka Samro event, which was organized by the Buddhist Society of India on 5th of October, where thousands of people present there took an oath not to worship Ram, uh, Lord Ram, Lord Krishna, and even other Hindu gods. They said that they will move away from Hinduism and take up and follow Buddhism. Sources have told India today that Kejriwal, who is wooing the voters in Gujarat and eyeing the upcoming elections in the home state of the Prime Minister, were very angry with Rajendra Pal's involvement in this conversion drive. The resignation comes after BJP's continuous attacks on the Ahmadmi Party. The Saffron Party called it an insult to Hindu gods and also filed a complaint against Rajendra. The party has also placed Kejriwal in the skullcap posters in many cities of Gujarat. राम और कृष्ण वडोदरा की जनता का गुस्सा गुजरात का आक्रोश और जिस प्रकार से उनको कल भागना पड़ा वडोदरा से उसका ये परिणाम है कि आज वापस आते ही दिल्ली तुरंत राजेंद्र पाल गौतम का इस्तीफा हुआ है मैं फिर से ये कहना चाहता हूँ कि ये गुजरात की जनता की जीत है ये हिंदू समाज की जीत है This was Arvind Kejriwal's project that went horribly wrong, and uh, Rajendra Pal was caught on camera violating the constitution, the oath he is under as uh, a minister. He was seen as promoting enmity between uh, communities. He was seen as uh, driving a wedge between uh, communities. His entire oath was completely loaded against a particular community. It was. In very bad taste, and clearly at this point in time, Arvind Kejriwal could not have afforded it. But the truth is that people like uh, Rajendra Pal are manifestations of what Arvind Kejriwal's politics is all about, and Arvind Kejriwal cannot um, distance himself from what Rajendra Pal has done. The बहुत ही प्रसन्नता के विषय है कि अब वो उन्होंने इस्तीफा दे दिया मंत्री ने हमें ऐसा प्रतीत होता है कि मुख्यमंत्री ने उस चीज को समझा. और उनसे इस्तीफा लिया मैं दिल्ली के सरकार और खास तौर से मुख्यमंत्री अरविंद केजरीवाल जी को मैं बहुत बहुत धनाई धन्यवाद दूंगा बधाई दूंगा और मैं आशा व्यक्त करूंगा कि फिर भविष्य में इस प्रकार की कोई भी इनके पार्टी से हिंदू सनातन धर्म के खिलाफ आपत्तिजनक शब्द या आपत्तिजनक बयान न देंगे
All right, let me quickly cut across to Akshay Dongre, who is joining us, our India Today correspondent. Akshay, a quick word from you. Here, Rajinder Pal, he's basically tendered his resignation. And do you think this will really salvage the situation at this moment for the Abadi Party, who seem to have lost face in a state like Gujarat, where, where, where the BJP has been uh, coming down heavy, saying the Abadi Party is against Hindus and this anti-Hindu oath speaks for itself. Rajinder Pal resigns. Will that do good to the Abadi Party now? Well, certainly there will be some uh, steam uh, that the Ahmadni Party will now lose to hope as far as this particular resignation is concerned. The Ahmadni Party, especially the top leadership of the Ahmadni Party, uh, Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal, according to sources, was not very happy that he was furious uh, as far as that particular participation of Rajendra Pal Gautam in that uh, meeting is concerned, in that event is concerned. And after that, uh, it gave uh, the Bharti Janta Party fresh ammunition to target the Ahmadni Party, to target uh, and tarnish its image as far as the upcoming polls in Gujarat is concerned. Now the fear in the Ahmadni party is also that whether the damage has already been done as far as the ground is concerned because while the Bharti Janta Party was initially demanding the resignation, in fact, sacking off uh, Rajendra Pal Gautam, now that he has tendered resignation, the BJP, in fact, has taken a U-turn and is saying that now the, uh, the, the Ahmadni Party chief, Arvind Kejriwal, should also resign as far as uh, that particular incident is concerned, that event is concerned, because now the Bharti Janta Party is stating that whatever Rajendra Pal Gautam was just a manifestation of what Arvind Kejriwal has been teaching as far as the politics, uh, the brand politics is concerned of the Ahmadni Party. Now this resignation certainly will give some hope to the Ahmadni Party to go to the ground and say that uh, the person who was involved in that particular incident uh, has in fact left the party. However, uh, the Bharti Janta Party is not likely to lose this, uh, this opportunity to attack the Ahmadni Party on the grounds that it is anti-Hindu. A claim that the BJP right. has been making, despite uh, the claims by Rajendra Pal Gautam, uh, despite his statement that the the, the speech uh, or rather the pledges that he right. uh, took there or the, the pledges that people took there uh, during the conversion drive, uh, those were the 22 pledges that have been historically taken uh, as far as the conversion to Buddhism right. is concerned. You know, of course his justification, uh, but at the end of it he is now tenders his resignation. Will that really help Abadi Party in a state like Gujarat where we see posters like that? Arvind Kejriwal seen in a skull cap, many of those posters there are dawning areas in Gujarat where Arun Kejriwal has been campaigning hectically for his party. Thank you very much, Akshay, for joining us. Big breaking coming in. BJP and the Congress attack Kejriwal's chartered flight. A row over Ahmadmi Party's chartered flight has erupted. His chopper journey has come down uh, heavy on himself where the BJP saying Ahmadi Party's luxury rides using taxpayers' money. Congress saying this is Kejriwal's idea of Aam Admi. Arvind Kejriwal taking a chopper ride. Now the BJP tweeting this video here showing Kejriwal in, a, uh, in fact exiting a chopper and says that these are luxury rides of the Ahmadi Party chief all using taxpayers' money. While Congress says this is Kejriwal's idea of Aam Admi. We're going to continue tracking this news for now. A short break. Stay with us. You are watching India Today. Armed with facts, she takes the news by its horn. Do you think the future of these students are not hampered? Fierce, bold, and direct, setting the tone for the biggest stories from every corner and every angle. Expect nothing but the unfiltered truth. News first, niceties later. Watch me, Nabila Jamal, on India Today.
Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at arjtag.com. Justice, liberty, equality, the pillars that built India. A nation where everyone has dignity and opportunities to prosper. But today, over 75 years after independence, Dalits remain a community trapped for centuries by the caste system, languishing in a dismal state. Nearly 20% of India's population is Dalit. Dalits still live in abject poverty, excluded on the margins, facing atrocities, toxic untouchability, and no opportunities for economic upliftment. The father of India's constitution, Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar, fought all his life for the upliftment of Dalits. In the past, many state and central governments have made big promises, but it has been nothing more than lip service. Basic human rights have still not been delivered. Dalits remain downtrodden and discriminated against. This shocking reality is a national shame. Few have dared to break the cage of caste discrimination until now. Friend to the downtrodden, upholding human rights and dignity, Championing a baker's India, KCR is showing India and the world how a revolution is sparked in Telangana through his path-breaking scheme, Telangana Dalit Bandhu. Approximately 17,50,000 Dalit families call Telangana home and now they are calling Telangana the land of opportunity. Thanks to Dalit Bandhu, launched in 2021 by the TRS government, a world-first scheme which will give each Dalit family an astounding financial boost of 10 lakh rupees. There are many more schemes along with this which are under implementation all over the state. But Dalit Bandhu is a specially designed program for the upliftment of the Dalit community. It has an unprecedented objective to uplift 17,50,000 Dalit households with a one-time capital grant of 10 lakh rupees per household, 100% subsidy with zero repayment, delivered via direct to beneficiary transfer with a dedicated Dalit Bandhu scheme help desk and monitoring committee at village, mandal, district and state level and a 10% reservation for Dalits in profit generating schemes, government contracts and licenses. In addition to this, Telangana has another visionary program for Dalit students, residential schools and colleges, and Ambedkar Overseas Vidya Nidhi, a 20 lakh rupees overseas scholarship, giving them the most powerful tool for success, education. Huzurabad, 2021. The Telangana Dalit Bandhu pilot was launched. Telangana's Dalit Bandhu is a path-breaking scheme that places absolute trust in the beneficiary. Each household has complete freedom and flexibility to decide its business and how to grow their dreams. I am a pharmacist, sir. I am a pharmacist in a lot of places. I am a pharmacist in a lot of places. I am a pharmacist in a lot of places. I am a pharmacist in a lot of places. I am a TRS government. Dalabandu scheme of the Petti, Mana Unga, now Unga Nino, settle out on a opportunity creation. Households were identified as beneficiaries, and the direct benefit transfer of 10 lakh rupees was made. Each family unit was free to decide how they wished to invest this 100% subsidy. It could be a single or multiple businesses. Multiple beneficiaries could pool their resources to build a bigger business. It could be in any sector of their choice. The sky was the limit. In no time, the stories of transformation began rolling in. 
These are just a small fraction of the 40,000 success stories that Telangana has empowered through the Dalit Bandhu scheme. In just one year, it has smashed records for any Dalit upliftment scheme in the country. Till date, the Dalit Bandhu scheme has been implemented in all 119 assembly constituencies in Telangana. Beneficiaries have achieved prosperity for their families. They have also created opportunity for their community by providing employment and revenue. The resounding success of the Dalit Bandhu scheme has energized the TRS government to accelerate its efforts. From 40,000 beneficiaries with an outlay of 4,441.8 crore rupees, now Telangana government has raised the Dalit Bandhu budget to reach about 2 lakh beneficiaries with an outlay of 17,700 crore rupees, making this the world's largest direct benefit scheme. Delta Bandhu achieved that. That is, for the election, only the normal under the opportunity. Radu, we report to the government. We have to for the election. It is. We system now. We are going to be able to do it. We are going to be able to do it. We are going to be able to do it. We are going Never before has such a revolutionary scheme been designed to end caste discrimination where Dalits receive 100% opportunity along with 100% dignity. Dalitabandha Padakam Raka Mundu. We have a lot of struggles faced. We have a lot of Dalitabandha Padakam Kinda. We have an embroidery mission. We have a lot of pet. We have a lot of work. We have a lot of embroidery start. We have a lot of money. 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 Thank <laughs> For Telangana's leadership, it's not about breaking records, but about ensuring financial freedom for all. Each Dalit Bandhu grant of 10 lakh rupees has an inbuilt 10,000 rupees safety net, Dalita Rakshana Nidhi, to ensure that all Dalit families get financial assistance from the fund at times of distress. To further strengthen this, Telangana government contributes additional 10,000 rupees, which is over and above each grant. A great safety net that has no parallel anywhere in the world. For the KCR government, this is more than just a financial benefit. If any beneficiary of Dalit Bandhu meets with fatal disease or accident, the family should not go through additional depression and hard times. They should remain protected. That is the true purpose of the special safety net designed as Dalita Rakshana Nithi. KCR sir, in the scheme this crowd of money, Chala Gopavisham sir, Malandi Valaki, Onga settle, Onga company with the established Gaul and Kunevala Kosum, in the golden opportunities. Adega Kunda Dalitulu and Samajam under Kitchenachupane on Tari, if you do the Vadamala. Delta Bandichi Mamalinto, Adukuna Saru, Maku, Maro Ambedkar Garu, Saru Maku. Makaite, Matala Chapel and Vainak Maku, Into Batukunich in Ruasalu. Under the fearless leadership of KCR, Dalits finally have a government that protects and defends them. Telangana inspires them to overcome oppression and empowers them to be bold so that each Dalit can move up in the world with head held high, creating their own success story, making Telangana shine, and in turn, India.
watching India Today. Sunrise comes a new beginning. The Milan Fashion Week wound up in Italy. Right from Bottega Veneta to Fendi, Alberta Ferretti, Prada. Hello and welcome to Amazon Sambhav in association with India Today Television. Our series has been focusing on the digitization of small and medium businesses and the varied online tools to enable their business expansion. However, the success and growth of any business always dwells on customer satisfaction and this holds true for e-commerce marketplaces as well. But the new dimension that gets added in in an online business is the timely delivery of products to achieve a higher customer approval. In fact, customers today are willing to even pay extra for faster delivery. Logistics services are therefore pivotal for e-commerce sustenance and growth. And this is where Amazon's delivery service partner program steps in. Chirag Roadlines is one such third-party logistics delivery service partner, which has been a big support for online retail. Owned by three brothers, this transport company not only facilitates deliveries, but also generates employment as a result of growth in its own income due to more and more more customers choosing to shop online. मेरा नाम मनीष कुमार है मेरा नाम कृपाल शर्मा है और चिराग रोड लाइन के नाम से हम ट्रांसपोर्ट का बिजनेस चलाते हैं हमारे हेड ऑफिस दिल्ली में और ब्रांच है हमारी ऑल ओवर इंडिया बेस के करीब है ट्रांसपोर्ट कंपनी हमने 2010 में दो गाड़ी से शुरू की थी फिर दो से हमारे पास चार आई फिर आठ आई फिर आठ से चालीस हुई आज हमारी पाँच सौ की फ्लीट है अमेजोन के साथ हम 2016 से जुड़ गए दो साल हमने थ्री पी कंपनी के साथ होकर अमेजोन का हमने सर्विस दी सर्विस हमारी अच्छी देख के अच्छी सर्विस देख के फ्लीट हमारे पास काफ़ी हो गई थी तो ये सब देख कर अमेजोन ने दो में डायरेक्ट हमें सेवा का मौका दिया हम दो 18 से डायरेक्ट अमेजोन से जुड़ के हमने काफ़ी बिजनेस बढ़ाया साथ साथ हमने स्टाफ भी बढ़ाया हमारा 20-25 परसेंट स्टाफ भी बढ़ गया था अमेजोन का जो स्टाफ है काफ़ी कोऑपरेटिव है हमें हर जगह से उन्होंने सहयोग दिया और उससे मतलब गाड़ियों को साफ़ सुथरा रखना टाइम से गाड़ी पहुँचाना ये अमेजोन के साथ काम करने के बाद में हमें एक अच्छा एक्सपीरियंस मिला हमारी पेमेंट टाइम्स आ जाती थी और पेमेंट टाइम से आने से हमारा बिजनेस अप टू अप करता रहा कम से कम थर्टी परसेंट बिजनेस हमारा लगभग बढ़ा बिजनेस मैं पहले भी करता था लेकिन जब से मैं अमेजोन के साथ में जब मैं जुड़ा हूँ तो मेरा कॉन्फिडेंस लेवल अप हुआ है तो जब कॉन्फिडेंस लेवल बढ़ा तो बेसिकली जब बिजनेस भी थोड़ा ग्रोथ तो करेगा अप करेगा कोरोना काल में अमेजोन ने हमें काफ़ी सपोर्ट कर हमारी गाड़ियाँ खड़ी नहीं हुई बिजनेस मिलता रहा लोग ऑनलाइन शॉपिंग करे ऑनलाइन शॉपिंग करे तो गाड़ी हमारी चलती थी रोड के ऊपर अमेजोन के साथ काम करने का हमारा एक सपना था और वो हमारा पूरा हुआ
digitally transformed businesses are defined by their customer-centric approach. They gain a vital edge by meeting the customers where they are. So besides product innovations and technological advancements, it's responsive operations and an efficient supply chain which is critical for e-commerce and for MSMEs to flourish. To talk about logistical challenges, delivering to the last mile and the overall e-commerce landscape, we have a special guest on our show today. Vinod Kumar, President of India SME Forum. A very warm welcome to you, sir. A strong and efficient e-commerce supply chain management can be the difference really between a struggling and a thriving online business. How do you suggest MSMEs can actually fix their supply chain challenges and accelerate growth? Well, supply chain is basically at the epicenter of any business. Whether it is raw materials, whether it's manufacturing, whether it's production, transportation or delivery to customers. Now, if you look at the pandemic, what has the pandemic done to MSMEs or enterprises in general? There has been a cascading effect wherein it has brought certain issues to the fore where uh, we're talking about vulnerabilities, where we don't know what is going to happen next. And due to those vulnerabilities, supply chain inefficiencies have been brought to the fore. And the only way uh, we can handle them is through digitizing our supply chain. MSMEs or entrepreneurs in general can no longer uh, you know, take the excuse of not having scale or not having enough investments available because if you are not digitizing your supply chain, uh, there is going bound to be a problem. You will not grow in business. So what is the role of supply chain finance in fueling MSME growth in India? MSMEs traditionally have had a lack of access to funds, whether it is in the form of working capital or it is in terms of capital investment. When it comes to working capital, supply chain financing primarily offers a resolution of sorts in your, on the basis of your monthly invoicing. So whether you need short term funds, whether you need monthly funds, whether it is for raw material, whether it is for your transportation, whether it is for uh, buying out material from someone else and selling it, all of these uh, areas, supply chain financing has come in and is playing a very pivotal role when it comes to uh, empowering a business uh, in terms of lack of finance. MSME exports have also helped put the Indian economy in the forefront. So what's the role uh, of technology, according to you, sir, in boosting the ability of MSMEs to handle supply chain volatilities and disruptions uh, in the wake of fluid international scenarios? Technology has a pivotal role in automating processes, easing the flow of data, enabling the enterprise to have real-time visibility of overall operations. What do we need? Data relevant to production, transportation, consumption patterns will help us or business leaders to make split second decisions when it comes to market fluctuations or when it comes to disruptions. This is the key to building a sustainable business and more so when we are talking about using technological advancements uh, to create a resilient business and overcome volatilities. So how can the MSME industry benefit from a futuristic mindset and the effective use of digital technologies? While MSMEs are using technology to understand data that's coming in from various sources of their business to streamline their own operations, most MSMEs that have a futuristic mindset are primarily looking at data from the point of converting or using that data to take timely decisions looking at the future whether it is in terms of uh, you know, increasing your operational efficiency, whether it is in, uh, in terms of increasing your productivity, or creating a sustainable business plan which can you know, help you sustain as well as grow over a longer period of time, maybe somewhere in the future. And those that are not able to you know, take those decisions or have that data available with them are going to see a problem. So for any MSME, when we talk about uh, you know, how sustainable are you? It is very important to have technology as the base of your op operation. Thank you for sharing such informative insights. Uh, accustomed to the convenience of online commerce, customers are surely becoming more demanding than ever. 
and so it becomes even more critical for digitally connected businesses to ensure seamless execution and delivery. It's transporters like Kuldeep across India who are the backbone of the e-commerce industry. Kuldeep's SK Transport has been an integral delivery service partner, enabling e-commerce and empowering customers. Here's his story. मेरा नाम कुलदीप है और मैं इसार डिस्ट्रिक्ट के एक छोटे से गांव नाडा से बिलोंग करता हूं और मेरी पढ़ाई दसवीं क्लास तक गांव के सरकारी स्कूल में ही मैंने की और पढ़ाई में मन न होने के कारण मैं ट्रक चलाने का कार्य सीखने के लिए गाजियाबाद चला गया 2016 में मैंने अपनी एक एसके ट्रांसपोर्ट के नाम से एक कंपनी बनाई हम 2020 में एज ए कैरियर हम अमेजोन के साथ जुड़ गए और हमने अपनी सर्विस कंपनी को ऑल ओवर इंडिया दी एज ए थर्ड पार्टी कैरियर अमेजोन से हम जुड़े हुए हैं और अमेजोन अपना सामान को भेजने के लिए हमसे गाड़ियां लेती हैं और पूरे पैन इंडिया हम अमेजोन को अपनी गाड़िया अपनी सर्विस देते 2020 में अमेजोन के साथ जुड़ने के बाद मैंने 130 ट्रक खरीदे और 150 लोगों को मैंने एज ए ड्राइवर एज ए स्टाफ रोजगार दिया 2020 के बाद मेरे चंडीगढ़ लुधियाना और जयपुर में मैंने अपने ऑफिस खोल दी मैं ज़्यादा पढ़ा नहीं हूँ लेकिन मैं ये जान चुका हूँ मैं अपनी मेहनत से अपने मलबूते पे काम करके बहुत कुछ आगे जाया जा सकता है और इसी मेहनत करके हम कंपनी को और ऊंचाइयों पर लेके जा सकते हैं Delivery service providers are not just adding to consumer satisfaction but are in turn adding to the overall economic growth and employment opportunities. With that, it's time now for a short break. See you on the other side. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Welcome back to Amazon Sambhav in association with India Today Television. With changing times, the innovative use of the supply chain to benefit local shops and delight customers is the need of the hour in the e-commerce sector. From partnering with delivery service providers to reach the remotest corners of India to providing business opportunities for additional sources of income, Amazon has been doing its bit to boost the MSME network. To talk about this and more, I now have the pleasure of welcoming Abhinav Singh, Director of Customer Fulfillment Supply Chain and Amazon Transportation Services at Amazon India. So Mr. Abhinav Singh, how is Amazon ensuring quick and efficient delivery promise during particularly the busy festive season? At Amazon India, we are committed to enhance the shopping experience for customers and enabling sellers to extend their reach to all parts of the country. We continue to invest in expanding our infrastructure, the network to ensure faster fulfillment of orders and have more than 43 million cubic feet of storage across our fulfillment centers in 15 states. 
This enables us to meet our customer promises across the country every single day super fast. This is complemented with a, by a strong network of sortation centers that are spread across 19 states in India. From the time a package is ordered, picked and packed at a fulfillment center, transported to a delivery station and further connected to the customer, we track the movement of the package at every single step using seamless technology integration across the miles. We have built a robust last mile delivery network with over 1,950 Amazon operated and partner delivery stations with a direct reach in many remote locations such as the northeastern towns of Morgaon, Deepu, Bipuria and Karim Ganj. Over the years, Amazon has continued to invest in our flagship program, I Have Space. This has more than 28,000 neighborhood and Kirana partners today across 420 cities. Under this program, we partner with local store owners to deliver products to customers within a two to four kilometer radius of their store during their free time. Additionally, we work with thousands of delivery partners in 70 cities as part of the Amazon Flex program, providing flexible work opportunities to those who are interested. This is an addition to our existing partnership with third party delivery providers such as the Indian Postal Service. The continued expansion of our last mile delivery network has enabled Amazon to service 100% of the serviceable PIN codes in India. We also continue to invest in speed with expansion of our next day and same day delivery. We recently announced the expansion of the same day delivery network to 50 major cities and towns in India. This ensures reliable and timely deliveries and we are constantly investing in technology, logistics, infrastructure and most importantly our people uh, to make this happen. Over the years, we have built a strong network of partners and associates and invested in their training and upskilling. We are focused on building interface tools and technology that enhance driver and customer experience. We leverage our technology resources to optimize processes and functions across the supply chain and more specifically in the last mile so that we can enhance both customer and driver experience. How does uh, Amazon work towards enhancing the experience for its trucking partners uh, in Middle Mile Network? We have partnered with more than 500 partners to provide on-time deliveries in a reliable and safe manner across the country. We are focusing on a few key areas to enhance the driver experience. Driver health. We believe that a safe working environment is the foundation for our partners and their teams to run the business and deliver enhanced customer experience. We are enabling eligible transportation partners to secure health and accident insurance benefits to help drivers and driver supervisors cover accidents or medical expenses in the case of hospitalization. The second area is driver safety training. We believe that the focus on road safety is critical to improve driver experience. We conducted driver safety training campaigns during all of our sale events. Drivers have expressed their happiness because of the focus on safe driving practices and continued training provided during COVID. The third area is driver communication. Amazon has launched a technology suite called Relay, which is launched in India in 2020. The app enables drivers to view, track and execute trips which are assigned to them. Mr. Singh, how is Amazon supporting entrepreneurs in building their logistics business? In 2021, Amazon expanded the delivery service partner program in India to support aspiring entrepreneurs to develop and launch their delivery business, even if they had no prior delivery expertise. Amazon India has more than 300 entrepreneurs who are part of the delivery service partner program and supporting aspiring entrepreneurs to develop and launch their delivery services is something which is very close to our heart. In the DSP program, Amazon assists interested entrepreneurs and SMBs in starting their own delivery business by providing them access to Amazon sophisticated delivery technology, hands-on training, and exclusively negotiated deals on services such as payroll management, insurance, and recruitment technology among a whole host of other services. Also, how is Amazon's delivery network ensuring job opportunities and creating livelihoods across the country? 
Amazon India has created tens of thousands of work opportunities through partnerships with several staffing agencies and delivery service partners across the country. In our Last Mile network, Amazon India offers individuals a combination of roles across different programs through which we deliver packages to customers. These programs include delivery service partners or the DSP program, I Have Space program and the Amazon Flex program. These enable the company to fulfill delivery promises, thereby improving the delivery experience for customers and at the same time create opportunities for individuals and entrepreneurs across the country. This is in addition to the existing partnership with third-party delivery partners such as the Indian Postal Service. While the DSP program provides delivery associates full-time roles, the I Have Space program and the Amazon Flex program offer flexibility and opportunities to earn a supplemental and part-time income. All our Last Mile programs are helping us take forward our commitment to create a million new job opportunities in India by 2025. Thank you for those wonderful insights, Mr. Abhinav Singh. We wish continued success to such innovative programs that are essentially strengthening the core of online businesses and facilitating customer centricity. It's time now for the story of Aparna Deka from Hathi Gaon in Assam. Aparna enrolled in Amazon's I Have Space program, which is an innovative business collaboration with local store owners uh, to help them add extra earnings to their regular income while also increasing footfall to their local shops. Here's her story. मैं हाथीगांव में रहती हूँ मेरा हस्बैंड है और मेरा एक दातार है मेरा हस्बैंड का पहले एक छोटा सा पान शॉप था हस्बैंड का इतना इनकम से मेरा परिवार नहीं चलता इसलिए मैंने पहले उसकी पान दुकान में हेल्प किया था उसके बाद उन्होंने अमेज़न डेलीवरी में ज्वाइन किया मैंने भी सोचा कि मैं भी आईएसएस पार्टनर में ज्वाइन करूँ क्योंकि हमारा इनकम डबल हो जाएगा Amazon मेरा कुछ स्टोर का डॉक्यूमेंट्स लिया और मेरे मोबाइल पे एप्स डाल दिया उसके बाद उसके लिए मेरे को ट्रेनिंग दिया हम लोग वो पार्सल रिसीव करने के लिए एक्सपीडी पॉइंट जाना पड़ते हैं सिर्फ मैं ही एक ओमेन हूँ जो डेलीवरी करती हूँ ऐसे मेरे को गर्व होते हैं मेरा ऐसे करके तीन साल हो गया डेलीवरी में मेरा हस्बैंड जॉब आते हैं तब मैं दुकान में जाकर दुकान संभालती हूँ अमेज़न में ज्वाइन करने से बात हमारा दुकान थोड़ा डेवलप हो गया पहले हमारे पास स्कूटर नहीं था वो साइकिल से बहुत टाइम लगते हैं डिलीवरी करने से इसलिए स्कूटर लिया अमेज़न मेरे को बहुत सपोर्ट करते थे अभी भी कुछ प्रॉब्लम होता तो वो लोग सपोर्ट करते हैं मेरे को धूप हो या बारिश का मौसम हो जहाँ तक मैं दो टू दो जाकर डिलीवरी करती हूँ क्योंकि मेरे बेटी को मैं आगे बढ़ाना चाहती हूँ पढ़ा लिखा कर और मेरा फैमिली को मैं पूरा सपोर्ट देना चाहती हूँ मैं अपने लिए खुद का घर बना रही हूँ अभी उसके लिए मेरे को बहुत चूक मिलते हैं An additional income source which in turn boosts sales for local stores and enhances customer satisfaction is a kind of innovation supply chains that can benefit and give an impetus to digitization of businesses and amplify India's growth story. With that, it's a wrap on this episode of Amazon Sambhav. Stay tuned for many more stories of digital growth and transformation that are keeping India first. Bye for now. Everyone's busy finding what's trending. You're busy finding out why. 
India Today for those who research before reacting. Download the India Today app now. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at arjthug.com. You are watching India Today. Hey, good evening, you're watching India Today. I'm Nabila Jamal. The headlines first. Prime Minister Modi in pole-bound state of Gujarat addresses a massive rally in Modera. Prime Minister's Vikas pitch to Gujarat voters. Modera ke liye, Mahesana ke liye, aur pure North Gujarat ke liye, Vikas ki nai urja ka sanchar hua. Kejriwal's minister quits amid row over anti-Hindu oath. Rajendra Pal Gautam, who called Ram Krishna as false gods, made it, in fact, he's called it quits after Kejriwal faces backlash in pole-bound Gujarat over this mass conversion. BJP Congress slam Kejriwal, Man's chartered flight and shopper journey has now come under scanner. Congress claims this is Kejriwal's idea of Aam Admi, while BJP slams this joyride on taxpayers' money. Jinde Udhav camp in huddle after election commission freezes bow and arrow symbol. Sources claim Trishul, Rising Sun and Mashal being explored by the Udhav camp as new symbols. And AI Mime Chief Osaduddin Owesi wades into the Tipu showdown, claims that Tipu irks the BJP because Tipu waged wars against Britishers, says BJP will never be able to erase Tipu's legacy. Here's some big news coming in. OAC has slammed Mohan Bhagwat's population comment. OAC says Muslim population on the decline. OAC says Bhagwat speaks on Muslim population, remains silent on female feticide among Hindus. This is OAC's comment. OAC saying that Muslim population on the decline. So basically trying to bust the comments and statements made by Mohan Bhagwat, who claimed that one community's population seems to be on a steady rise. OAC countering that, saying that Muslim population in the last consensus has been on a decline. And says that Bhagwat speaks on Muslim population but remains silent on female feticide among Hindus. Let's take a listen. Abdul Bashir, our reporter joining us on the phone line. Abdul Bashir, Give us a quick understanding on OAC's comment where he's uh, still at it. In fact, days after Mohan Bhagwat spoke about how a population control policy must be rolled out and also raised concerns how a certain community's population could be on the rise. OAC saying that Muslim population per se is on decline. And also hits out at Bhagwat saying Bhagwat is speaking on Muslim population but remains silent on female feticide among Hindus. Tell us a little more where is he said this. We, uh, were with on the occasion of uh, Miladur Nabi uh, celebration, the public meeting was held at uh, Darussalam, the AIMIM headquarters, uh, where uh, Asaduddin Ovesi, while addressing a huge public gathering, had stated, uh, had uh, reacted to the comments of uh, uh, RSS chief Mohan Bhagwat on population imbalance, where Asaduddin Ovesi had uh, stated that the total fertility rate has declined to 2%, and uh, the total fertility rate of Muslims has fallen the most among which uh, this is stated by the National Family Health Survey, so that is what Asaduddin Ovesi has stated. And he also uh, lashed out at Mohan Bhagwat saying that uh, Mohan Bhagwat Saab, if you are uh, misrepresenting the history, then it is uh, your mistake. And citing the Kosovo uh, 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 controversy, uh, which Mohan Bhagwat had stated, uh, Asaduddin Ovesi said that uh, Kosovo emerged after a genocide of Muslim by the Serb. Uh, that is what he had uh, lashed out, uh, uh, stating that the, the uh, RSS chief is uh, misrepresenting uh, the facts. 
and also uh, when we talk about uh, the uh, female fetishide uh, which is uh, stated where Asadin Ovesi has said that uh, 90 lakh Hindu sisters are missing uh, which is called the female fetishide uh, which is 86.7 percent so uh, he asked uh, Mohan Bhagwat why does he why doesn't he speak on this and also spacing the gap between two children or two pregnancies uh, among a couple a married couple is uh, done by Muslims and also uh, condoms are mostly uh, used by Muslims. This is what he has stated. So uh, several statements uh, had been given by uh, AIMIM chief. So when it comes out to uh, reply to the uh, uh, RSS chief Mohan Bhagwat's uh, uh, address in Nagpur, uh, which was held on the occasion of Dasara, uh, where uh, yesterday Atadun Ovesi had uh, lashed out on several issues, uh, including uh, the population imbalance and also on Madarsa's survey on UP, he has lashed out at the UP government, uh, stating that uh, uh, Madarsa's are being uh, targeted and condemned uh, the UP government survey of Madarsa. And also, uh, he asked that uh, he asked the opposition in the Uttar Pradesh why are they not speaking? That is mainly the Akhilesh Yadav and the others who are uh, uh, who the other yeah. Muslim leaders uh, in the party of Akhilesh Yadav are not speaking on this. He has questioned them. There are several uh, other uh, issues on stone pelting issue in Navratri event in Gujarat where the police was seen uh, 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 hitting or uh, assaulting the uh, uh, stone pelter. In that he has stated that uh, uh, is this the respect uh, or right. value that the Muslim right. have in the society. And also... Abdul uh, Bashir, in... thank you very much for joining us with those details. Uh, let me quickly cut across to some live visuals coming in from Gujarat. Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who's right there uh, as he's part of some of the cultural events. Remember, it's a pole-bound state of Gujarat. We're getting live visuals of Prime Minister Modi in attendance. Prime Minister Narendra Modi in Madhera, Gujarat. He is there, the pole bound state of Gujarat, where Prime Minister Modi making a huge pole pitch. He's visited a couple of cities now in Madhera. In fact, uh, the Prime Minister, who's right now in attendance, part of a cultural event. And this is where Prime Minister Modi, just a little while earlier, had spoken extensively praising Modera and said that Modera is known for the Sun Temple. Now it will be known as a solar-powered village. This is Prime Minister Modi's push ahead of elections in Gujarat, declaring that Modera is Gujarat's Mehsana district, India's first 24-7 solar-powered village. Prime Minister Modi on a three-day visit to Gujarat starting today. Prime Minister Modi has arrived into Madhera 
laid the foundation stone of several developmental projects worth 3,900 crores. Also declared Village Modera as, a, as India's first 24-7 solar-powered village. Let's take a quick look at what the Prime Minister said a little earlier. Vishwana Sarvadi Lopriya Neta Bharatna Yasasvi Vada Pradhan and Uttar Gujaratni Adhardina Sapur Adhanis Narendra Vai Modi Aje Ekatri Sat Koro Rupiana Bau Vid Vikas Kamoni Bed Adharane Apwa Padharach Aje Sarat Punimana Utsauche and a Gujarat Mato Adhanis Narendra Vai Modina Disadar Sanma Modera Kelly मैसाना के लिए और पूरे नॉर्थ गुजरात के लिए विकास की नई ऊर्जा का संचार हुआ है हजारों करोड़ रुपए से अधिक के ये प्रोजेक्ट्स रोजगार के नए अवसर पैदा करेंगे किसानों और पशुपालकों की आय बढ़ाने में मदद करेंगे और इस पूरे क्षेत्र में हेरिटेज टूरिज्म से जुड़ी सुविधाओं को भी विस्तार देंगे जरूरत की बिजली उपयोग करो और अतिरिक्त बिजली सरकार को बेच दो और इससे बिजली के बिल से भी छुटकारा मिलेगा इतना ही नहीं अब हम बिजली बेच करके कमाई करेंगे अब तक यह होता था कि सरकार बिजली पैदा करती थी और जनता खरीदती थी लेकिन मैं उस रास्ते पर चलने के लिए प्रतिबद्ध हूं Meanwhile, Aam Aadmi Party's anti-Hindu row has exploded. Delhi Minister Rajendra Pal Gautam has resigned from the cabinet following his controversial oath, which has sparked massive controversy. After tendering his resignation, Rajendra has cleared that Aam Aadmi Party chief Arvind Kejriwal nor his party has really anything to do with this event that he's attended. Remember, the former minister attended Vishal Dhamdiksha Samroh event, which was organized by the Buddhist Society of India on 5th of October, where he and thousands of others present at that event took an oath to convert to Buddhism and never to worship Ram, Krishna and other Hindu gods. Sources have told India today that Kejriwal, who is wooing the voters in Gujarat and eyeing this upcoming elections in the state, home state of Prime Minister Modi, have been quite upset with Avadni Party's involvement in this conversion drive in Delhi. राजेंद्र पाल गौतम हमारे साथ हैं बातचीत करने के लिए दो पन्नों की चिट्ठी लिखकर उन्होंने अपने मंत्री पद से इस्तीफा दे दिया है क्या वजह है ये हम सीधे आपसे जानना चाहेंगे क्यों आपको इस्तीफा देना पड़ा मैंने इस्तीफा इसलिए दिया कि मैं आए दिन लगातार देख रहा हूं और उससे हृदय छलनी हो जाता है हमारे समाज के लोगों की मूंछ रखने पर हत्या की जा रही है मंदिर में चले गए मूर्ति छू दी उस पर हत्या की जा रही है घड़ा छू दिया उसमें निर्ममता से हत्या की जा रही है और कोई ना प्रधानमंत्री जी बोलते हैं ना गृहमंत्री जी बोलते हैं ना देश का कोई बड़ा नेता बोलता है आए दिन उत्पीड़न और ऊपर से जो हर साल अशोक विजय दशमी पर 14 अक्टूबर 1956 को जब डॉक्टर बाबा साहेब अम्बेडकर जी ने बुद्ध के धम की दीक्षा ली इसी जाति का तो उत्पीड़न भेदभाव ऊंचनी छुआछूत से मुक्त होने के लिए और पूरे समाज के लाखों न्यायियों को दीक्षा दिलाई तो उन्होंने बाईस प्रतिज्ञाएं दिलवाई थी ये लेकिन उन बाईस प्रतिज्ञाओं को भारत सरकार ने खुद मोदी जी की सरकार के मंत्री थावरचंद गहलोत जब सामाजिक न्याय एवं अधिकारिता मंत्री थे उन्होंने डॉक्टर अंबेडकर लाइफ एंड स्पीचेस के अंदर वॉल्यूम सत्रह में कुछ छपाया अपने साइन से अपने सिग्नेचर से लेकिन आपने अपनी चिट्ठी में रजत जी को आपने अपनी चिट्ठी में जिक्र किया है कि निशाना बनाया जा रहा है आम आदमी पार्टी को और आपके नेता को निश्चित इससे मुझे दुख पहुँचा है बहुत कि मेरे नेता का मेरी पार्टी का इससे कोई लेना देना नहीं है ये सामाजिक प्रोग्राम है बुद्धि बुद्धि सोसाइटी ऑफ इंडिया का और मिशन जय भीम का एक संयुक्त प्रोग्राम है और हजारों जगह पूरे देश में रोज हो रहा है आज भी हो रहा है लेकिन भाजपा आरोप लगा रही है कि हिंदुओं की जो भावनाएं हैं उनको ठेस पहुंचा नहीं नहीं कहा एक शब्द बता दो उनकी ठेस पहुंचाने के लिए बोलाओ भाई मेरी कहाँ आस्था है मैं किसको मानूंगा किसको नहीं मानूंगा ये मेरा मतलब है मेरा मेरा मसला है मैं जाके किसी और को तो नहीं कह रहा मैं किसी के किसी के आस्था के ऊपर ठेस नहीं पहुँचा रहा किसी के खिलाफ एक शब्द नहीं बोल ब्रह्मा विष्णु और महेश को नहीं मानूंगा और ना ही उनकी पूजा करूंगा मैं राम और कृष्ण को 
ईश्वर नहीं मानूंगा और ना ही उनकी कभी पूजा करूंगा मैं गौरी गणपति आदि हिंदू धर्म के किसी भी देवी देवताओं को नहीं मानूंगा और ना ही उनकी पूजा करूंगा ईश्वर ने All right, on that note, I'm going to slip into a short break. We'll be right back with news and updates on the other side. Stay with us. You are watching India Today. I don't read the news. I read between the lines to tell you the true version of events, the true story of our times. To document grief, the toughest assignment for any journalist to be. From those who matter. Women politicians are going to stick up for each other. Of those who should matter, I document the truth. I don't distort the truth. I don't glamorize the truth. I don't gloss over the truth. The ghosts of India's contentious medieval history have come knocking again. I hustle for the truth on the ground, in the newsroom, in the I studio. I don't try to grab eyeballs. I inform you to make you see the point. To the point with Preeti Chaudhary at these times only on India Today. sunrise comes new beginnings, new opportunities and new stories. And that's why we're first up. While you're sleeping, we're hard at work to ensure you get the perfect news shot every morning. Our morning mission to get you news that's fresh and packed with flavor. Watch first up every weekday morning with me, Akshita Anandagopal, right here on India Today. India today. Justice, liberty, equality, the pillars that built India. A nation where everyone has dignity and opportunities to prosper. But today, over 75 years after independence, Dalits remain a community trapped for centuries by the caste system, languishing in a dismal state. Nearly 20% of India's population is Dalit. Dalits still live in abject poverty, excluded on the margins, facing atrocities, toxic untouchability, and no opportunities for economic upliftment. The father of India's constitution, Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar, fought all his life for the upliftment of Dalits. In the past, many state and central governments have made big promises, but it has been nothing more than lip service. Basic human rights have still not been delivered. Dalits remain downtrodden and discriminated against. This shocking reality is a national shame. Few have dared to break the cage of caste discrimination until now. Friend to the downtrodden, upholding human rights and dignity, championing a baker's India, KCR is showing India and the world 
how a revolution is sparked in Telangana through his path breaking scheme Telangana Dalit Bandhu Approximately 17 lakh 50000 Dalit families call Telangana home and now they are calling Telangana the land of opportunity thanks to Dalit Bandhu launched in 2021 by the TRS government a world first scheme which will give each dalit family an astounding financial boost of 10 lakh rupees there are many more schemes along with this which are under implementation all over the state but dalit bandhu is a specially designed program for the upliftment of the dalit community it has an unprecedented objective to uplift 17 lakh 50000 dalit households with a one time capital grant of 10 lakh rupees per household 100% subsidy with zero repayment delivered via direct to beneficiary transfer with a dedicated dalit bandhu scheme help desk and monitoring committee at village mandal district and state level and a 10% reservation for dalits in profit generating schemes government contracts and licenses in addition to this telangana has another visionary program for dalit students residential schools and colleges and Ambedkar Overseas Vidya Nidhi a 20 lakh rupees overseas scholarship giving them the most powerful tool for success education Huzurabad 2021 The Telangana Dalit Bandhu pilot was launched Telangana's Dalit Bandhu is a path breaking scheme that places absolute trust in the beneficiary Each household has complete freedom and flexibility to decide its business and how to grow their dreams. నేను వచ్చేసి ఫార్మసీ చదివాను సార్ దాని తర్వాత యాజ్ ఏ ఫార్మసిస్ట్ గా చాలా ప్లేస్ లో చేశాను సార్ ఎప్పుడైతే మన తెలంగాణ గవర్నమెంట్ ఈ దళిత బంధు పెట్టిందో అప్పుడు ఇంకా నేను నాకు ఎప్పటి నుంచో నా ఓన్ బిజినెస్ నా ఓన్ గా బిజినెస్ పెట్టుకున్నామని నాకు అంతకు ముందే ఉండే సార్ మన టిఆర్ఎస్ గవర్నమెంట్ దళిత బంధు స్కీమ్ ఒకటి పెట్టి మన ఓన్ గా నా ఓన్ గా నేను సెటిల్ కావడానికి ఒక ఆపర్చునిటీ క్రియేట్ చేశాను సార్ హౌస్ హోల్డ్స్ వర్ ఐడెంటిఫైడ్ యాస్ బెనిఫిషియరీస్ అండ్ ది డైరెక్ట్ బెనిఫిట్ ట్రాన్స్ఫర్ ఆఫ్ 10 లక్ష రూపీస్ వాస్ మేడ్ ఈచ్ ఫ్యామిలీ యూనిట్ వాస్ ఫ్రీ టు డిసైడ్ హౌ దే విష్ టు ఇన్వెస్ట్ దిస్ 100% సబ్సిడీ ఇట్ కుడ్ బి ఎ సింగిల్ ఆర్ మల్టిపుల్ బిజినెసెస్ మల్టిపుల్ బెనిఫిషియరీస్ కుడ్ పూల్ దేర్ రిసోర్సెస్ టు బిల్డ్ అ బిగర్ బిజినెస్ it could be in any sector of their choice the sky was the limit in no time the stories of transformation began rolling in these are just a small fraction of the 40000 success stories that telangana has empowered through the dalit bandhu scheme in just one year it has smashed records for any dalit upliftment scheme in the country till date The Dalit Bandhu scheme has been implemented in all 119 assembly constituencies in Telangana. Beneficiaries have achieved prosperity for their families. They have also created opportunity for their community by providing employment and revenue. The resounding success of the Dalit Bandhu scheme has energized the TRS government to accelerate its efforts. from 40000 beneficiaries with an outlay of 4441.8 crore rupees now telangana government has raised the dalit bandhu budget to reach about 2 lakh beneficiaries with an outlay of 17700 crore rupees making this the world's largest direct benefit scheme దళిత బంధు వచ్చిన తర్వాత ఈ పది లక్షలు అనేది మామూలుగా అందరికి ఆపర్చునిటీ రాదు వీరి పూర్తిగా గవర్నమెంట్ వాళ్ళు మాకు పది లక్షలు ఇచ్చేసి మీ ఇష్టం ఉన్న వ్యాపారాన్ని పెట్టుకో అని చెప్పేసి అనడం అనడం వల్ల మాకు ఇంత ఆర్థిక పురోగతి కలిగింది అదే కాకుండా మేము ఇంతకుముందు ఒక దగ్గర వర్కర్ గా పనిచేసిన వాళ్ళం ఇప్పుడు ఓనర్ గా ఉండగలుగుతున్నాం where dalits receive 100% opportunity along with 100% dignity 
దళిత బంధు పథకం రాకముందు మేమైతే చాలా స్ట్రగుల్స్ ఫేస్ చేసాము దళిత బంధు పథకం కింద మేము ఈ ఎంబ్రాయిడరీ మిషన్ ఎంచుకొని పెట్టుకున్నాము నేర్చుకున్న వరకునే నేను ఫుల్ఫిల్ చేయాలనుకొని ఈ ఎంబ్రాయిడరీ స్టార్ట్ చేశాను సార్ ఇచ్చినందుకు చాలా చాలా ధన్యవాదాలు కేసీఆర్ గారికి తెలంగాణ ప్రభుత్వానికి కూడా మేము ఎంతో రుణపడి ఉన్నాము ముగ్గురం కలిసి ఒక యూనిట్ పెట్టాము అంటే థర్టీ ల్యాక్స్ పెట్టి ఒక వెహికల్ ను ఇప్పుడు అమెరికన్ టూరిస్ట్ షాప్ పెట్టాము బాగానే నడుస్తుంది ఇప్పుడైతే అంటే నేను జాబ్ చేసేవాడిని ఇప్పుడు ఓనర్ గా అంటే ఒక కంపెనీ ఓనర్ గా ఇప్పుడు ఫీల్ అవుతున్నా చాలా హ్యాపీగా ఉంది జీవనోపాధిగా మిషన్ కొట్టుకుంటూ బ్రతికేదాన్ని సార్ నేను మాకు ముగ్గురు పిల్లలు వాళ్ళని చదివించుకుంటూ మేము బ్రతకాలంటే చాలా కష్టమైంది సార్ ఇప్పుడు దళిత బంధు ద్వారా కేసీఆర్ గారు లాదుకున్నారు సార్ వాళ్ళు ఇద్దరం కలిసి పెట్టుకున్నాం సార్ మిషన్ కోయంబత్తూరు నుంచి వెళ్ళి తెప్పించుకున్నాం సార్ మిషన్ నాన్ ఓవెన్ ఓవెన్ బా బ్యాగ్స్ సార్ మేము మాకు నెలకు యాభై వేల వరకు వస్తాయి సార్ ముగ్గురు జీతాలు యాభై వేల వరకు వస్తాయి సార్ For Telangana's leadership it's not about breaking records but about ensuring financial freedom for all Each Dalit Bandhu grant of 10 lakh rupees has an inbuilt 10000 rupees safety net Dalita Rakshana Nidhi to ensure that all Dalit families get financial assistance from the fund at times of distress to further strengthen this Telangana government contributes additional 10000 rupees which is over and above each grant a great safety net that has no parallel anywhere in the world for the KCR government this is more than just a financial benefit if any beneficiary of dalit bandhu meets with fatal disease or accident the family should not go through additional depression and hard times they should remain protected that is the true purpose of the special safety net designed as dalita rakshana nithi kesar sir inta pedda scheme tisukoradam anedi chaala goppa visham sir maa laanti vallaki own ga settle own ga oka company vetti establish ga avalanu kune vallaki kosam idi golden opportunity sir adhe gaakunda dalitulu ante samajamlo andarki chinna chupu gaane untadi ippudu idi ivadam valla దళిత బంధు ఇచ్చి మమ్మల్ని ఎంతో ఆదుకున్నారు సార్ మాకు మరో అంబేద్కర్ గారు సార్ మాకు మాకైతే మాటల్లో చెప్పలేము ఆయన మాకు ఎంతో బతుకుని ఇచ్చారు అసలు అండర్ ద ఫియర్లెస్ లీడర్షిప్ ఆఫ్ కేసీఆర్ దళిత్స్ ఫైనల్లీ హావ్ అ గవర్నమెంట్ దట్ ప్రొటెక్ట్స్ అండ్ డిఫెండ్స్ देम తెలంగాణ ఇన్స్పైర్స్ देम టు ఓవర్‌కమ్ ఆప్రెషన్ అండ్ ఎంపవర్స్ देम టు బీ బోల్డ్ so that each dalit can move up in the world with head held high creating their own success story making telangana shine and in turn india you are watching india today La sobriété et la solidarité européenne nous permettront d'éviter des coupures et des rationnements dans les cas de figure les plus pessimistes comme un hiver particulièrement froid cumulé à des difficultés d'approvisionnement. Ces scénarios nous incitent à poursuivre notre stratégie, une sobriété choisie plutôt que des coupures subies, une solidarité européenne pour mieux résister à l'hiver.
Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Battle Cry, the only show on Indian television where we get you up close with India's weapons, war fighters and how this country defends itself. This is a special episode by popular demand on one of India's biggest ever military contests. Big alarm over India's fighter fleet. Numbers dropping. New jets far away. Is Air Force headed to historic low? What fighters is India looking at? Who's competing for the big prize? Will imports dominate India's airspace? The big fighter alarm is this week's top story on Battle Cry. It's a week when experts have been sounding the code red alarm on that familiar predicament of the Indian Air Force, its squadron strength. Literally, how many aircraft it has versus how many aircraft it is supposed to have in terms of fighting a war. Well, the picture isn't pretty and the Indian Air Force chief himself acknowledged that. Indian Air Force fighter fleet required strength 42 squadrons current strength 31 squadrons squadron shortfall 11 fighter shortfall 200 the Indian Air Force one of the finest air forces in the world is flying through historic turbulence a record low in fighter aircraft numbers coinciding with the time when India needs its maximum military strength with four MiG-21 squadrons very close to retirement and other fighter types in the winter of their operational life new fighters simply aren't arriving fast enough to stem the declining numbers. With the given numbers, it may not be impossible to maintain a 24-7 um, combat air patrol or an air defense watch right across from you know, Sir Creek to Siachen and further to the east. So the numbers definitely are essential. So 42 will remain. 42 will remain. We, like I said, I, I know that it is a difficult uh, goal to achieve in the next uh, few years or maybe in the next decade or so, but we will review it only based on the um, situation that arises in our neighborhood, based on the current situation, based on the mandate given to the Indian Air Force, I think it is essential that we need to build up the numbers. The Air Force's predicament intensifies with each passing year. The six Jaguar squadrons will begin their retirement run starting 2025. By the end of this decade, the Air Force's Mirage 2000 and MiG-29 fighters will also have a finish line in sight. The fighter aircraft that the Air Force operates in maximum numbers, the Su-30 MKI, will be upgraded. But the oldest airframes that were delivered at the turn of the millennium will also begin dropping out of service starting from the next decade. This matrix of retirements means the Air Force has a constant internal war to fight. For starters, plans to order a dozen more Su-30s and 21 more MiG-29s from Russia have been deferred for the moment. On the other hand, 
the Indian Air Force's order for 83 indigenous light combat aircraft Tejas will hopefully begin deliveries within the next two years. But perhaps the most ambitious plan to stop the decline in numbers is a grand international contest where a number of fighters will compete for a contract for 114 fighters amounting to about six fighter squadrons. We are also committed to um, acquiring the LCA Mark IIs and the AMCA in future. The um, quest for getting a 4.5 or 5th generation MRFA aircraft continues. The, uh, we have analyzed all the RFA responses. The ASQRs are being finalized. We were seeking more commitments from all the OEMs for uh, ensuring the indigenous content and the Make in India uh, provisions are adhered to by all the OEMs. So that is work in progress. So with all these inductions of probably six squadrons of the Mark II, the AMCA and the MRFA, I, I would still think that we will be at a uh, state of about 35 to 36 squadrons by middle of next decade. The Indian Air Force's newest fighter jets, 36 French Rafales, have provided a solid boost to an advanced frontline offensive capability. Usefully arriving just when the India-China standoff in Ladakh was escalating. But just 36 aircraft, even of such an advanced type, can be no replacement for the sheer numbers required to fight from the air. The Air Force has a plan, but will it move fast enough? Or could the Vayu Sena be on the threshold of a historic low in its fighter strength? Bureau Report, India Today. But the Indian Air Force does have a plan in place. And part of that plan that the Indian Air Force has in place includes trying to identify and purchase a whopping 114 of a foreign aircraft type. There are seven aircraft contenders. These are just four of them. And it stands to be one of the biggest ever military procurements in history. Take a look at the multi-role fighter aircraft contest that the Indian Air Force is pushing very, very hard for right now. We are very thankful today for this blessed occasion that has granted to us for the induction of this aircraft to our country. Images from three years ago of India's Defence Minister welcoming India's first Rafale fighters. The Air Force remembers this as a day of great relief and delight. But it also remembers that it has received only 36 fighters. A fraction of the 126 fighters it had originally said it needed. Something is better than nothing. Yes. But what next? What about the remaining hundred odd fighters that the Air Force had planned for? Well, here's what's happening on that front. Program name, multi-role fighter aircraft. Numbers required, 114. Squadrons, 6. Status, Ongoing. Officially kicking off in April 2018, as many as seven foreign fighters are prospective contenders for one of the biggest fighter purchases in the world. 
one of these fighters from the US, Europe and Russia will win a contract to supply a handful of aircraft from their foreign factory and build the remaining 100 odd jets in India in a joint venture with an Indian strategic production partner. Let's go through the contender lineup one by one. Contender 1, Rafale from France. Perhaps the most familiar contender is the French Rafale. The fighter that already populates two Indian Air Force squadrons. The fighter is hoping that this by itself gives it the biggest possible advantage in the contest. Since the Indian Air Force has already invested large sums of money building infrastructure to support the Rafale fleet. Additionally, the Rafale is in contention for an Indian Navy deck-based fighter order. So its French maker Dassault is pushing the Rafale as a low-risk win-win option for the Indian Air Force. Contender 2, F-15 Eagle from USA. A surprise contender that dropped into the race was Boeing's new F-15 Eagle II, the newest and most advanced avatar of the iconic and battle-tested F-15 fighter. Boeing is hoping that the aircraft's new technologies that draw from the very latest in the US Air Force's requirements could make it a formidable contender in the sweepstakes. Other than, of course, the political clout that an American jet brings with it. Contender 3, Gripen from Sweden. Seen as an underdog, the latest version of Sweden's Gripen fighter is also in the contest. Manufacturer Saab believes it has the most cost-effective package on offer to the Indian Air Force. One that will provide India with a robust combat aircraft that does not burn a hole in Vayu Bhavan's pocket. Contender 4, Sukhoi Su-35 from Russia. Another contender that plonked itself in the race was Russia's Sukhoi Su-35, the latest avatar in the family of fighters that spawned the Indian Air Force's existing Su-30 MKI. Russia is pitching the Su-35 as a logical next step purchase for the Indian Air Force since it already operates so many Sukhoi fighters and therefore commonality could be a massive benefit. Contender 5 Lockheed Martin F-21 from USA The Lockheed Martin F-21 the latest and most advanced version of the legacy F-16 fighter remains in the Indian Air Force contest. After several twists and turns in the earlier tender, America's latest defense firm rebranded the aircraft as F-21 to suggest it was a totally different fighter with none of the vintage associations that clung to the F-16 name. The fact that Pakistan continues to operate and receive support for its own fleet of F-16 jets has been seen as a major roadblock for this fighter in the Indian Air Force contest. But with enormous political backing from the US government, it doggedly believes it has a fighting chance. Contender 6, Eurofighter Typhoon from EU. The Eurofighter Typhoon, built by a consortium of European companies led by Airbus, was a co-frontrunner for the Indian Air Force's earlier deal. Losing out to the Rafale, the makers believed they were rejected unfairly and have since stayed under the radar, yet remained firm that they are ready to supply the Indian Air Force with their jets. As things stand, the Typhoon is an official contender for the new multi-role fighter aircraft contest. Contender 7, Boeing F-18 Super Hornet from USA. 
the Boeing F-18 Super Hornet, most recently in the limelight in the big Top Gun sequel, has been in contention for an Indian Air Force contract for well over 15 years now. Boeing believes that the US Navy's decision to purchase many more Super Hornets even today, coupled with Indian Navy's consideration of this jet for tech-based operations, gives Boeing a living, breathing chance in the new contest. Contender 8 MiG-35 from Russia And finally, a fighter with perhaps the least chance of success in the sweepstakes. Russia's MiG-35, basically a souped-up and technologically advanced avatar of the legendary MiG-29. Russia believes the Indian Air Force's big existing fleet of upgraded MiG-29 fighters makes a logic case for a similar but more advanced version of the same aircraft type, since it would perhaps save costs on infrastructure and training. Once considered a viable option, the Air Force has made it all but clear that its next choice is unlikely to be a MiG type. While the process to identify one of these fighters began in 2018, the Indian Air Force has signaled that it will be putting this program on the fast track. But how fast is that fast track remains the multi-billion dollar question. Bureau Report, India Today. So India is trying to get some imported fighters. It's going to build some fighters as well. And the reason for that is even though the Indian Air Force does have a vast fleet of aircraft, it isn't anywhere close to what it's supposed to have. And what is already in service, it won't be long before they start retiring as well. Here's a look at the Indian Air Force's current fleet. The Indian Air Force is one of the most unique air forces in the world. Its active fleet includes everything from one of the oldest combat jets, the MiG-21, all the way to some of the most modern jets, like the Rafale. In terms of different aircraft types, the Indian Air Force is every aviation aficionado's dream. It is a veritable buffet of aircraft types, drawn across the years from different parts of the world. Let's now walk you through the Indian Air Force's fleet of fighter aircraft. The dominant Indian Air Force jet is the Russian origin Sukhoi Su-30 MKI, a big heavy air dominance fighter that populates squadrons across the country. With over 270 aircraft currently in service and at least a dozen more in the pipeline. These big jets are also in line for a major upgrade of electronics and weapons. These jets are built under license by Hindustan Aeronautics Limited in Nashik, Maharashtra. In second place, in terms of numbers, are the Indian Air Force's Anglo-French Jaguar attack aircraft. About six squadrons of these jets, or about 130 aircraft, are currently active in Indian service. With some configured for the anti-ship role out at sea. Like the Su-30, Jaguars have been built under license from the British by Hindustan Aeronautics Limited.
In the third place is the legendary Russian origin MiG-29 multi-role fighter, 65 of which currently fly in Indian Air Force squadrons. The MiG-29s have been through a major upgrade in their weaponry and sensors, transforming them into much more modern air assets. In fourth place is the Soviet-era MiG-21, an aircraft well past its prime and with a notorious reputation for fatal accidents. But that doesn't mean the jet hasn't been modernized and proven its worth in conflict. Nevertheless, the age of the MiG-21 has long passed. And the last 54 of these vintage jets will be gone from Indian services in the next two years. In the fifth place is the French origin Mirage 2000. One of the most beloved and trusted combat aircraft in Indian service. It is these jets that India's air power planners have always turned to for offensive action. From the bombing of Tiger Hill in the Kargil War to the air strikes on Balakot in 2019. Mirages have proven their reliability and worth over and over again in a long stint with the Indian Air Force. An expensive but robust upgrade program continues to keep them pretty close to the cutting edge. In sixth place is the Indian Air Force's newest jet the younger cousin of the Mirage, the French Rafale. 36 of these jets currently populate two Indian Air Force squadrons in the north and east. Their arrival coincided with the India-China standoff in Ladakh, allowing the Air Force to keep them flying in a live conflict scenario from the get-go. France has hoped for years that India will at least double its order for these formidable jets. But for now, as we showed you earlier, India wants options to pick from. And finally, in seventh place, in terms of numbers, is India's very own homegrown fighter, the Tejas. Formerly designated the LCA or Light Combat Aircraft, just over 30 of these fighters currently operate from two squadrons in Tamil Nadu, with nearly 100 more of improved varieties in the pipeline. The Indian Air Force is contemplating more orders and has put its weight behind a much more capable MK2 avatar of the Tejas. Very well worth noting is the futuristic program that looms in the distance for Indian Air Force. India's indigenous fifth generation fighter, designated AMCA for advanced medium combat aircraft, should see progress and testing this decade. With induction, likely in the next decade if things go smoothly. As the Indian Air Force enters its 91st year of existence, the future of its air power is at a historic crossroad. Bureau Report, India Today. I very much hope you enjoyed this special episode of Battle Cry. I'll see you at the same time next week. Remember, as we always say here on the show, India's true potential and security will only truly be attained when no human needs to be sent into battle and no weapon fired. Thanks for watching.
political party traveling from different parts armed with facts looking at political back she takes the news by its horn do you think the future of these students are not hampered fierce bold and direct setting the tone for the bigger stories from every corner and every angle expect nothing but the unfiltered truth news first niceties later watch me nabila jamal on india today you are watching india today Hey good evening you're watching India today I'm Nabila Jamal taking you through the top news the headlines first Prime Minister Modi in poll bound state of Gujarat addresses a massive rally in Modera Prime Minister's Vikas speech to Gujarat voters Mehsana ke liye aur pure North Gujarat ke liye Vikas ki nayi urja ka sanchar hua hai Kejriwal's minister quits amid row over empty Hindu oath. Rajendra Pal Gautam, who's called Ram Krishna as false gods, made it now has uh, in fact resigned from the Kejriwal government, from the cabinet, and this comes right ahead of the poll-bound state Gujarat. Aam Aadmi Party trying to intensify its campaign. BJP Congress slam Kejriwal man's chartered flight and stopper journey. Congress claims. This is Kejriwal's idea of Aam Aadmi while BJP says joyride on taxpayers money. Ekta Chinde of the Thakre camps now in a huddle after election commission freezes the bow and arrow symbol sources claim that Trishul Rising Sun and Mashal being explored by Udhav camp as new symbols. AI man chief Asad Din Oisi wades into the Tipu showdown claims that Tipu irks BJP because he waged wars against britishers says the bjp will never be able to erase tipu's legacy from india all right now in a big blow to udav thakre's legacy claim the election commission has seized the party's symbol udav thakre's faction of the shiv sena has now submitted a letter to the election commission regarding interim symbol and the party's name for upcoming by polls udav thakre's faction has picked three symbols for the party which involve the trishul or the rising sun or mashal they want one of the three while These three names that they've picked for the party include Shiv Sena Bala Saheb Thakre, Shiv Sena Udav Thakre, and Shiv Sena Prabodhankar Thakre. Now, Udav Thakre has come down heavily on the Shinde camp and asked him not to use Bala Saheb's name in his party. Meanwhile, Shinde camp likely to object to Udav camp's symbol suggestions. According to both these factions, they will have to choose from available options of the Election Commission of India's website. In 18, if in 1989. Sena had in fact demanded the tiger symbol at that point and the election commission had denied it because it was not part of their website uh, options that were available the camp now both the camps yet to decide on the party symbol as well as the name the faction led by chief minister eknath shinde will be submitting their letter to the election commission by 1 pm monday morning ma- monday afternoon me aple sarvan he sangto hai ki kal nivadnuk ayogani to aadesh aplyala dile nantar अपन तत्का तीन चिन्ह आदेशानुसार तीन चिन्ह दिल्ली है आता हि चिन्ह मैं अपने समझ दाखो तो एक है त्रिशूल दुसर है उगवता सूर्य तीसरा है ढगधगती मशाल तीन नाव सुधा अपन तत्पुर वेड़ा का होना पे निवूक आयोग दिल्ली है तथल पैल नाव है शिवसेना बालासाहब ठाकरे दुसर नाव है शिवसेना बालासाहब प्रबोधनकार ठाकरे तीसर है शिवसेना उद्धव बालासाहब ठाकरे तुम्हारा वाटल तो धनुष्यवान तुम्हारा मिले नहीं मिला गोठन टाकले आता जर तुम्हारी बुद्धि गोठले न सेल तो मज आज ही तुम्हारा आवान है बालासाहब नाव न वरता जनते हल्दी 
जिस ढंग से इन्होंने हमारी चुनाव चिन्ह को फ्रीज कर दिया है वो क्या था सुधा सुनवाई तो होनी चाहिए कि नहीं बिना सुनवाई बिना जांच बिना छानबीन तो क्या चल रहा है देश में तो कहा देखे आशा से एक ही तो बचा है सर्वोच्च न्यायालय आश्चर्यजनक निर्णय है इंटेरियम है फाइनल नहीं है पर इंटेरियम में एक अंधेरी इसका जो बाय इलेक्शन है उसको लेकर आया है पर सरप्राइजिंग इसलिए है आश्चर्यजनक इसलिए है कि कहीं भी दोनों पक्ष के कैंडिडेट्स नहीं थे हमारे ही पक्ष के कैंडिडेट थे तो कॉन्फ्लिक्ट था ही नहीं हड़बड़ी में ये निर्णय लिया गया है और आप इलेक्शन कमीशन का इतिहास देख लीजिए पोल सिंबल फ्रीज हो जाता है पार्टी सिंबल फ्रीज हो जाता है डिस्प्यूट के चलते पर पार्टी का नाम ही आप फ्रीज कर देंगे ये पहली बार सुना है मैंने तो आ, पर हम लोग सब शिवसैनिक इस निर्णय के बाद हम लोग और भी ज़्यादा हमने निर्णय लिया है कि ऐसे लोगों को जो सेंट्रल एजेंसीज का इस्तेमाल कर कर सेंट्रल पावर का इस्तेमाल कर कर धनबल का इस्तेमाल कर कर इस तरीके का काम कर रहे हैं कृत कर रहे हैं पाप कर रहे हैं उद्धव ठाकरे जी के शिवसेना ने सब खो दिया पहले हिंदुत्व फिर सरकार उसके बाद में सिंबल अब नाम भी गया और सबसे महत्व की बात कि महाराष्ट्र की जनता का विश्वास भी उद्धव ठाकरे की शिवसेना ने खो दिया All right, let me quickly cut across to Paris Zaba, joining us live from Mumbai. Paris, a quick word from you as we say that the Sera factions on both sides are trying hard to finalize a party name and a party symbol ahead of uh, the bipoles in uh, in Maharashtra. We see that this has come as a big blow that Udav Thakre is not being able to use his own party name, which he has been for decades now. Uh, in fact, the three symbols that they've opted for also is something that they, that hasn't been found in the Election Commission of India's. website so one setback after the other it, it appears that ekna shinde here more or less is having the last laugh uh nabila this is a very crucial moment for both the faction as uh, election commission has already freeze the name of the party and the symbol of the party already uh, the faction has decided some of the symbols and some of the name uh, for the party but right now situation is very difficult for uh, udav camp as uh, this is a very big set uh, back uh, for udav camp on the other hand eknath shinde the chief minister of maharashtra and his party are finalizing some of the symbols which are in on the website of election commission of india the meeting is underway uh, in some time the, the meeting will start in some time all the mlas all the 40 rebel mlas all the mlcs which are the part of uh, shinde camp will be uh, coming here and meeting will be start with the legal team where they will decide how to plan this because election commission has asked both the parties both the uh, camp to uh, file their entries as soon as possible as the uh, andheri elections are uh, nearby so uh, this is the major thing which is happening in mumbai and maharashtra today uh, the major setback for udav thakre is that the name of the party which has been a legacy for shushena and uh, thakre family has been uh, freeze by the election commission and the symbol uh, which was a uh, legacy has been freeze by uh, election commission as addressing the uh, uh, mumbaikers and the maharashtrian people uh, also uh, he has ag uh, not agreed with what has happened and what is happening in maharashtra plus he has also alleged uh, 
Bharatiya Janata Party has said he addressing the people of Maharashtra. He said that Bharatiya Janata Party will be happy seeing this type of chaos which is happening in Maharashtra. So the time is very critical for both the factions, Sindh faction also, and Uddhav faction also. They have to decide the symbol also. Right. There are three symbols which has been just uh, shown to Maharashtra, uh, all Maharashtra people by uh, Uddhav Thakre. Uh, uh, a meeting is underway at CM's uh, residence, official residence in okay. Malabar Hill. So this will be very, very interesting to see. We're going to continue uh, what, tracking that. Yeah, we'll see do. what symbols they decide on. They've got to give their options to the election commission and only after an approval will they be allowed to use it. But what are the symbols that will be approved remains to be seen. Let me cut across to board news coming in from the national capital, Delhi. Abadvi Party anti-Hindu Rao exploding with the Delhi minister Rajendra Pal Gautam has now resigned from the cabinet following his controversial oath which has sparked massive controversy. After tendering his resignation, Rajendra has cleared that Abadmi Party chief Arvind Kejriwal nor his party has anything to do with the event that he's attended. In fact, the former minister attended Vishal Dhamdiksha Samroh event which was organized by the Buddhist Society of India on October 5th where he and thousands of others who were present at that event took an oath not to worship Lord Ram, Lord Krishna and other Hindu gods. Sources have told India today that Kejriwal who is wooing the voters in Gujarat and eyeing the upcoming elections in the home state of Prime Minister Narendra Modi now is facing angry, angry uh, citizens of Gujarat who are not very happy with this Ahmadi Party's involvement in this mass conversion drive Delhi. Resignation of Rajendra Pal comes after BJP's continuous attacks on the Ahmadi Party. The Saffron Party has called it an insult of Hindu gods and also filed a complaint against Rajendra. The party has also placed Kejriwal in a skull cap. Several posters there that's uh, donning the city where Kejriwal is shown in a skull cap, basically trying to project him as anti-Hindu. राजेंद्र पाल गौतम हमारे साथ हैं बातचीत करने के लिए दो पन्नों की चिट्ठी लिखकर उन्होंने अपने मंत्री पद से इस्तीफा दे दिया है क्या वजह है ये हम सीधे आपसे जानना चाहेंगे क्यों आपको इस्तीफा देना पड़ा मैंने इस्तीफा इसलिए दिया कि मैं आए दिन लगातार देख रहा हूँ और उससे हृदय छलनी हो जाता है हमारे समाज के लोगों की मूँच रखने पर हत्या की जा रही है मंदिर में चले गए मूर्ति छू दी उस पर हत्या की जा रही है घड़ा छू दिया उसमें निर्ममता से हत्या की जा रही है और कोई ना प्रधानमंत्री जी बोलते हैं ना गृहमंत्री जी बोलते हैं ना देश का कोई बड़ा नेता बोलता है आए दिन उत्पीड़न और ऊपर से जो हर साल अशोक विजय दशमी पर 14 अक्टूबर 1956 को जब डॉक्टर बाबा साहेब अम्बेडकर जी ने बुद्ध के धम की दीक्षा ली इसी जाति का तो उत्पीड़न भेदभाव ऊंचनी छुआछूत से मुक्त होने के लिए और पूरे समाज के लाखों न्यायों को दीक्षा दिलाई तो उन्होंने बाईस प्रतिज्ञाएं दिलवाई थी लेकिन बाईस प्रतिज्ञाओं को भारत सरकार ने खुद मोदी जी की सरकार के मंत्री थावरचंद गहलोत जब सामाजिक न्याय एवं अधिकारिता मंत्री थे उन्होंने डॉक्टर अंबेडकर लाइफ एंड स्पीचेस के अंदर वॉल्यूम सत्रह में कुछ छपाया अपने साइन से अपने सिग्नेचर से लेकिन आपने अपनी चिट्ठी में राजेंद्र जी को आपने अपनी चिट्ठी में जिक्र किया है कि निशाना बनाया जा रहा है आम आदमी पार्टी को और आपके नेता को निश्चित इससे मुझे दुख पहुँचाया बहुत कि मेरे नेता का मेरी पार्टी का इससे कोई लेना देना नहीं है ये सामाजिक प्रोग्राम है बुद्धि बुद्धि सोसाइटी ऑफ इंडिया का और मिशन जय भीम का एक संयुक्त प्रोग्राम है और हजारों जगह पूरे देश में रोज हो रहा है आज भी हो रहा है लेकिन भाजपा आरोप लगा रही है कि हिंदुओं की जो भावनाएं हैं उनको ठेस पहुंचा नहीं नहीं कहाँ एक शब्द बता दो उनकी ठेस पहुंचाने के लिए बोलाओ भाई मेरी कहाँ आस्था है मैं किसको मानूंगा किसको नहीं मानूंगा ये मेरा मतलब है मेरा मेरा मसला है मैं जाके किसी और को तो नहीं कह रहा मैं किसी के किसी के आस्था के ऊपर ठेस नहीं पहुँचा रहा किसी के खिलाफ एक शब्द नहीं बोल रहा वडोदरा की जनता का गुस्सा गुजरात का आक्रोश और जिस प्रकार से उनको कल भागना पड़ा बड़ोदरा से उसका ये परिणाम है कि आज वापस आते ही दिल्ली तुरंत राजेंद्र पाल गौतम का इस्तीफा हुआ है मैं फिर से ये कहना चाहता हूँ कि ये गुजरात की जनता की जीत है ये हिंदू समाज की जीत है दिस इज नथिंग बट लास्ट मिनट अटेम टू सेल्वेज द सिचुएशन इन व्यू ऑफ द गुजरात इलेक्शन दिस वॉज अरविंद केजरीवाल प्रोजेक्ट दैट वेंट हॉरेबली रॉन्ग एंड राजेंद्र पाल वो स्कॉट ऑन कैमरा वायोलेटिंग द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन द ओथ he is under as uh, a minister he was seen as promoting enmity between uh, communities he was seen as uh, driving a wedge between uh, communities his entire oath was completely loaded against a particular community it was in very bad taste and clearly at this point in time arvind kejriwal could not have afforded it but the truth is that people like uh, rajendra pal are manifestations of what arvind kejriwal politics was all about and arvind kejriwal cannot um, distance himself from what rajendra pal has done
तो बहुत ही प्रसन्नता के विषय है कि अब वो उन्होंने इस्तीफा दे दिया मंत्री ने हमें ऐसा प्रतीत होता है कि मुख्यमंत्री ने उस चीज़ को समझा और उनसे इस्तीफा लिया मैं दिल्ली के सरकार और ख़ास तौर से मुख्यमंत्री अरविंद केजरीवाल जी को मैं बहुत बहुत धनाई धन्यवाद दूंगा, बधाई दूंगा और मैं आशा व्यक्त करूंगा कि फिर भविष्य में इस प्रकार की कोई भी इनके पार्टी से हिंदू सनातन धर्म के खिलाफ आपत्तिजनक शब्द या आपत्तिजनक बयान न देंगे और ना ही उनकी पूजा करूंगा ईश्वर नहीं मानूंगा और ना ही उनकी कभी पूजा करूंगा मैं गौरी गणपति आदि हिंदू धर्म के हिंदू धर्म के किसी भी देवी देवताओं मीन वाइल बिग पॉलिटिकल कॉन्ट्रोवर्सी एज इराप्टेड इन द सदर्न स्टेट ऑफ कर्नाटका ओवर रीनेमिंग ऑफ तिप्पू एक्सप्रेस एज वडेयर एक्सप्रेस वाल बीजेपी हेल्स द मूव citing developmental works carried out by Wadeer dynasty in the former Mysore kingdom the opposition now calling this a polarizing move just months ahead of the assembly elections in Karnataka let's take a quick look at this detailed report <laughs> Express is now Wadeyar Express. The railways has renamed the train that plies between Mysuru and Bengaluru as a tribute to the Mysuru royal family. The popular intercity express that connects the two cities in just two and a half hours was renamed after a request by BJP MP Pratap Simha. The Mysuru MP had written a letter to Railways Minister Ashwini Vaishnav a few months ago making the demand. The Wadiyas were incidentally dethroned by Tipu's father Heather Ali. The renaming of the Tipu Express has snowballed into a political controversy in Karnataka. The BJP claims that the Wadiyar dynasty has contributed to the development of a vast network of railways in the former Mysore kingdom, transforming Mysuru into the modern state of Karnataka. See this is a very good decision. Uh, which has really uh, been very well appreciated by people of Karnataka. It is really a pride and a honor to name uh, Wadair Express as well as Kuempe Express. It is our pride. Tipu is uh, converted more than lakh of people in Kurg, and he killed uh, many Hindus. So that's why he is not a great man in the name of Wadair. That he is a Kannadiga. Tipu is not a Kannadiga. He is a uh, some Persian uh, language. Thank you so much. Then, our Chamra Chodiyar Kal in that day, Illi Mysore ke railway line tan didu anta itihas le daakle aage the. So, an end nali Chodiyar Express naam karna aage the. Sat Santosh to wish. However, opposition leaders have called the Narendra Modi government decision a polarizing move. जब संविधान बनाने वालों ने कॉन्स्टेट असेंबली के जिम्मेदारों ने उस पहली संविधान की किताब में टीपू सुल्तान की फोटो डाली तो भाजपा को से नफरत क्यों है जब तक टीपू जिंदा था अंग्रेज डरते थे आज बीजेपी टीपू से डर रही है क्यों डर रही है आप टीपू अगर आपको ट्रेन निकालना था एक और ट्रेन किसी और नाम से निकालते रीनेमिंग ऑफ टीपू एक्सप्रेस टू अडियर एक्सप्रेस इट रियली शोज अल heart and mind of this government who wants to create controversy the entire people of karnataka i'm sure they understand the value of what tipu sultan has created tipu's descendants also slammed the decision if the new train whichever would have been given there are lot of trains would have been given in the name of wadaya i am not objecting it is they they are given in the name of wadaya but my objection and my sentiment which has been hurted removing tipu sultan and renaming to wadair is really hurted my sentiments renaming tipu express is just the tip of the iceberg as tipu sultan has always been a political flashpoint in karnataka 
from protesting against Tipu Jayanti celebrations to removing Tipu's lessons from the curriculum and replacing Sabarkar posters with Tipu Sultan. BJP and Congress have had several tussles in the recent past. I have got all the respects for the Wadiyas Prime Minister, the Maharajas of uh, Baishul province. But they should not have changed the name of Tipu Express, which has been given to the train. Instead of giving the name of Wadiyas to some other train. With elections approaching fast in Karnataka, Tipu Sultan will certainly be a poll agenda. Bureau Report, India Today. All right, now, meanwhile, Veer Savarkar Rao has exploded in Maharashtra a day after Congress MP Rahul Gandhi sparked a row by commenting against Veer Savarkar. BJP has held a Jute Maru protest against Rahul Gandhi in Mumbai. The agitated protesters demand an apology from the Congress MP for what he said. Let's take a listen. The Savarkar slugfest is back. Congress leader Rahul Gandhi, who is in Karnataka for Bharat Jodo Yatra, has reignited the Savarkar Rao. Countering BJP's remarks that Jawaharlal Nehru was grandfather of India's partition, Rahul Gandhi had launched a scathing attack on RSS and its ideologue when Ayak Damodar Savarkar. The RSS was helping the British. Savarkar used to get a stipend from the British. And these are historical facts and these are not facts that the BJP can hide. BJP has hit back at Rahul Gandhi and Congress's ally Udav Sena for Congress's attack at freedom fighter and Hindutva ideologue Savarkar. Maharashtra BJP unit also held a Jute Maro protest against Rahul Gandhi and Udav Thakre in Mumbai. The kind of derogatory remarks made by Mr. Rahul Gandhi that is deplorable, is appalling and he should apologize. BJP workers also held posters of Udav Thakre with black patch on his eyes and mouth questioning his silence over Rahul's remarks. He's not criticizing Mr. Rahul Gandhi was the problem. He abandoned Hindutva. He compromised with ideology of late Balasab Thakre. Following the protest, Udav Sena loyalist and MLC Manisha Kande also slammed Rahul Gandhi's remarks, demanding an apology. We condemn this statement from Rahul Gandhi and I think that this statement from him was absolutely uncalled for. When this is a Bharata Jodo Yatra, uh, there was no necessity of bringing Swatantri Vir Savarkar into picture. However, several political leaders backed Rahul Gandhi's remarks saying RSS and Savarkar never took part in the freedom struggle. RSS supported British Raj, that is 100% true. But whether he would take money or all these things, it is his information, I have not. We seriously know this Savarkar works for the Britishers. Uske vipri jo role ilzam lagaya hai ki ye log angrezo ke agent the. भारत छोड़ो का जब नारा महात्मा गांधी ने दिया था तो उसका आरएसएस ने विरोध किया था अगर इनके नेता होते तो इन जगहों पर या उनकी मूर्ति बनती लेकिन कभी उन्होंने ऐसा कोई काम ही नहीं किया जिसमें उनकी मूर्ति बन सके मीनवाइल इन नेबरिंग कर्नाटका अ हॉट बेड ऑफ सावरकर कंट्रोवर्सी द मुस्लिम यूनाइटेड फोरम रिक्वेस्टेड डिस्ट्रिक्ट अथॉरिटीज नॉट टू नेम अ सर्कल आफ्टर वी सावरकर इन द कोस्टल टाउन ऑफ मंगलुरु साइटिंग कम्युनल टेंशंस ब्योर रिपोर्ट इंडिया टुडे In Tamil Nadu, for the second time in a row, Chief Minister M.K. Stalin has unanimously elected. She, he's been unanimously elected as DMK party president at the General Council meeting in Chennai. Stalin was elected unopposed to the party's top post for a second consecutive tenor. No opposition to him. Here's a look. Chief Minister M.K. Stalin getting the DMK mantle for the second time in a row. Elected party president unopposed at the all-powerful General Council meet. Stalin was the only candidate to have filed the nomination for DMK top job. 
The Tamil Nadu Chief Minister received drowsing applause from DMK members when he entered the General Council meeting. During the meeting, DMK chief asked the party workers to ensure that they are the ones who rule Tamil Nadu. Satamanda terrorist Mumbai under the Buddha, Kadakatin Selva can bother, Podoma Kerade, Adima Hirakarade. Idudan Yanaka Bayate Kudukaran. Kadakatin Selva Kum, Yenmidan and Ambikayum, Makarade, where a where a Makaradam Petereka could in the Narpe, a carpata vendum in Bodo, in the Nambike, Takaweke Vendan Bodan, in the Sindhana Hirakarade. Continuing to address the crowds, Stalin warned the party members to be careful when they speak in public. One soul will be able to do it. One soul will be able to do it. One soul will be able to do it. One soul will be able to Ninga Sona, the Vettio, Vettio, Parapudvar. Either a Kibadis or the Kanamakanam Seriakido. Stalin's half sister and DMK MP Kanimoi has replaced Subalakshmi Jagdishan as the party's deputy general secretary. Party's firebrand face A Raja was also among the other deputy general secretaries. DMK veterans Durai Murugan and TR Balu were elected as general secretary and treasurer. Everyone uh, is thoroughly encouraged by his speech. He has really um, advised everyone as to how we should behave, what are the priorities in front of the cadre as well as the, um, the representatives of the public. MK Stalin was chosen as the DMK's president on August 28, 2018, following the death of his father and party patriarch Karunanidhi. Since then, DMK has had successive electoral victories in 2019 parliamentary elections and 2021 assembly elections. From Odmada for India Today. On that note, it's a wrap on this edition of the Bulletin. For the news and updates, you could log on to indiatoday.in. You could also download our app for more. Stay tuned. Our India Today special on the other side. Are watching India today. Notice something new. You started using a new body lotion. Funny. I'm so Hello. sorry for the delay. I was on another call. It just kept going on. Uh, no, Papa. You were in a steam bath. A steam bath? Uh, at home? Do do see party takes. <laughs> Go do your homework. Already, the kickoffs in five minutes. Get all the boys. We have the entire place to ourselves, man. Not working? Of course it is. But I don't want you guys to be using this bathroom. So use the other one. Armed with facts, she takes the news by its horn. Fierce, bold, and direct, setting the tone for the biggest stories from every corner and every angle. Expect nothing but the unfiltered truth. News first, niceties later. Watch me, Nabila Jamal, on India Today.
largest producer of mustard in the world is facing a heat wave. We're talking about Canada. The delicious Dijon mustard is France's favorite condiment. A heat wave across the ocean in Canada has caused a drastic shortage. The shortage is evident in France. Canada supplies 80% of the mustard seeds to France. Because of the drought, the Canadian harvest became half in 2021. This has propelled France to grow their own crop. Remember, Europe is battling a fuel crisis and a power crisis post the Russia-Ukraine war. Mustard seeds have become more attractive after a drop in the prices of grains and oil seeds. Jerome Garbe is a mustard expert, said that 15,000 tons of mustard seeds should be produced, meeting 40% of the requirement. Luke van der Mason, president of the Burgundy Mustard Association, said that store shelves should be replenished in October. He also said the shortage will be completely over in early 2023. We're very confident for Christmas. Being an agrarian economy, India produces its own mustard. Rajasthan is the largest mustard-producing state in the country. Therefore, it's never going to be a problem for India. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Presented by CoinDCX, your gateway to crypto. Hello and welcome to the Business Today show. I'm Udayan Mukherjee. These days, global financial markets are in a state of great turmoil. As central banks across the world try to tame inflation, there is a real possibility and danger that next year many of the large global economies will get tipped into recession. How will stock markets do in this kind of a backdrop? Uh, no one knows the answer and there is considerable uncertainty about whether this inflation beast can be tamed in time, sometime in the next few quarters. Uh, who better to talk about all of this than a real veteran of the stock market who's watched many such cycles and many such bull and bear phases. Mark Mobius is not just the legendary fund manager of Templeton, he's now founding partner of Mobius Capital Funds uh, and he joins me on the Business Today show today. But Mark, it's a pleasure to speak to you again and uh, you know as I was just describing, yeah, this is not the first uh, dip bare phase that you are witnessing in your career. You've seen so many of them from the 2008 global financial crash to uh, the tech bust in 2000 and even before that. Where would you rank this period in the scheme of uh, the great uh, problem patches that you've had to negotiate in the stock markets over the last many decades? Well, this is relatively mild uh, when uh, you look at it from the perspective of history. Um, you must remember, we were dealing in the markets in Brazil when inflation was 2,000 percent and Argentina and places like that. And of course, uh, history in India also was uh, very checkered in those areas. And of course, you had the Asian financial crisis, which is very, very severe. So I would say this uh, downturn is relatively mild, at least at this stage. Um, and we can uh, pretty much handle it. The caveat in your, in your answer is at least at this stage. Uh, uh, the fear is that it might be looking mild now, but the way the central banks are acting, it might get out of control very easily next year. Uh, how, what would you say is the probability of that? Well, I think the good probability of a higher interest rate is still there. Um, the Fed in America, which, you know, the Fed really leads the world in terms of uh, interest rate hikes with probably the exception of China. Uh, but if you look at the Fed and their desire to tame inflation, which is now running the CPI, running at about 8%, uh, their playbook says if you want to tame inflation, interest rates have got to be higher than 8%. So that means they're going to go to 9%. So when people talk about, you know, oh, three quarter percent is such a big uh, problem. No, no, this is relatively minor. The rates will go much, much higher. If, of course, the big if, if the CPI stays at this level. Yeah. Uh, so do you think that the Fed is panicking the, about inflation at this point in time? It realizes that it might have made mistakes in the last one year and is trying to compensate for it. Is there a fear in that sense of an overreaction from the central bank? 
Yes, I think they realize that they are uh, late. They should have moved much earlier, uh, and now they're trying to catch up. Uh, the problem they're facing, however, is that unlike in the past, you didn't have cryptocurrencies running around. Uh, I had a recent trip to the U.S. visiting various states, and people are spending like crazy. And one of the reasons, of course, is that they still have money left over from the handouts that were taking place uh, during the COVID crisis. The current administration has released oil from the strategic oil reserves, which means gasoline prices have come down. And that makes people feel very happy and very rich uh, in America because gasoline is so important. And then don't forget the cryptocurrency. Uh, cryptocurrency probably represents 2% of the money supply. And the, the velocity, although that's 2% small, the velocity of this money is very, very high. And people are spending. Uh, another very interesting note in America is that the unemployment rate is so low. And we noticed a lot of companies, a lot of restaurants looking for workers. They're just not around. What does that mean? It means people don't want to work. They've got enough money to spend and to live without having to work. So it's going to be very, very difficult for the Fed uh, to tame inflation, in my view. Now, you have a long memory, uh, Mark. Uh, I mean, uh, you may even have been around in the financial markets in the 1970s as a young man. Uh, you know, at that point, inflation actually reigned for many, many years and Fed was unable to tame it. And all of us have read how bad the economic and the financial market situation was then. Do you think, I mean, what you just said about inflation, we run a risk of that kind of a protracted inflation period or would there be alarmist to think about it at this point? I don't think it's alarmist to think about it. I think we've got to live with uh, high interest rates. And by the way, high interest rates don't necessarily mean a uh, downturn in the stock market. It could be temporary. You, of course, the stock market is now reacting negatively to the possibility of higher rates. Uh, but if you look at the history, you'll find that stock markets were able to uh, do quite well, even with high interest rates. And of course, that means you've got to find companies with pricing power, companies that are able to raise prices in line with the higher inflation. But there's no question that the Fed could go much, much higher and there could be a lot more pain uh, ahead, provided that the CPI stays at this level or even goes higher. Your point is taken about interest rates not necessarily meaning a stock market downturn, higher interest rates, but the way interest rates are going up this time, it seems like most of the global economies might get tipped into recession, and that has ramifications for the stock market, at least in the foreseeable future. Do you see that as a real risk, or do you think recession might be averted in some of the major economies? Oh, yes. I mean, I think the, the possibility of recession is definitely there. In fact, if you take the official definition of recession, we are already in a recession in the U.S. because you've had two quarters of negative uh, growth. So uh, we are in a recession, but a recession does not necessarily mean that people feel poor. Uh, you're going to find that these two diff things are uh, quite different in many ways. And uh, yes, a recession uh, is hitting companies. Uh, in, and of course, the stock prices decline because their earnings go down. But this could be quite temporary once uh, these companies are able to raise prices again. Hmm. What does all this mean for currencies, Mark? I mean, the stock market is one part of the equation. But, you know, there is a huge flux going on in the currency world. I mean, where I sit in London, the pound has collapsed over the last one month. Uh, we are seeing many such reactions, even in the euro versus the dollar. How do you think this part of the equation will play out uh, between the dollar and the other major currencies? That's quite remarkable when you think uh, about not only the pound sterling, but the euro. Look at where the euro went. It's quite remarkable. And what does that mean? It means that imports for these countries in Europe and the UK are going to become a lot more expensive, more difficult, because usually these imports are denominated in dollars. It means that the U.S., of course, can uh, import a lot more <laughs> cheaper. And the rest of the world, of course, is under pressure because... Uh, you see all these currencies are weak against the U.S. dollar. Uh, Indian rupee actually has been holding up fairly well. But if you look at other countries, it's been a pretty much of a disaster for many of these countries. 
Uh, but you must remember that even in situations like this, uh, you have companies that can do quite well. Uh, for example, in Turkey, companies that can export uh, and re receive dollars and their costs are in Turkish lira, which is devaluated massively against the U.S. dollar, these companies can do quite well. So it's not a complete disaster for everyone, but it's certainly something that's quite remarkable uh, when we see the major currencies decline against the U.S. dollar to such an extent. Mm. The fear mark at such times is that one part is what how the macro plays out. The other is because of what is going on in the world of interest rates, in the world of currencies, that at some part of the world there will be a financial accident. Uh, and you know, this, this kind of collateral damage. Do you see the fear of that? Some kind of accident which dislocates the system and something like a 2008 uh, situation pans out? Uh, definitely, when you see prices uh, move in such a remarkable fashion where interest rates and uh, where currency rates move such in such a uh, fashion, then there's a possibility of a big accident happening. Uh, I don't know, you've heard rumors about credit risk being in trouble uh, yes, it could happen where Credit Suisse is in gambling on uh, foreign reserves or on, on currency, on interest rates in some ways, you know, with all these derivatives. Uh, uh, banks can get into big trouble if they're playing around with these instruments. So, uh, yes, there's a possibility of an accident. I'm not saying that Credit Suisse is, is in trouble, but I'm just saying that you could have a major bank like that uh, having... Uh, a real problem and then that would create a panic. Mm. Now we are talking about inflation, interest rates and financial accidents. What, what about geopolitics? Uh, I know the Ukraine war has been raging for some time now. The market might have priced in quite a bit of it. But I mean where you sit, closer to that, there is always the China-Taiwan thing which is simmering. Uh, do you think something might explode on that front and bring geopolitics back into play as one of the key risks for the market sometime in the next few months? Well, I think it's a very important point you make, and that is uh, these uh, geopolitical issues are really at the top of the agenda. I mean, we can talk about interest rates, we can talk about the stock market, etc. But when you have a war going on in Europe and the possibility of Russia using uh, nuclear weapons, uh, then you really got a, a crisis, and that that could uh, wipe out everything that we've worked for for the last 50 years. So it's a real problem. And of course, the China-Taiwan situation has simmered down, has quieted down a little bit, but there's no question that continues to be an issue uh, going forward. I don't see the Chinese taking military action against Taiwan in the foreseeable future, but the threat is always there. And particularly if Russia is successful in Ukraine, then it might encourage other countries to try the same thing. Mm. What are your thoughts on China, Mark? Because, you know, we are talking about a global economic slowdown. Uh, clearly, there's a possibility of recession in the U.S. Many European countries are already staring at recession. Uh, China becomes important at a time like this uh, to in deciding whether the world gets tipped into a really big slowdown or it manages to amble along. Uh, the numbers coming out of China over the last quarter or so are not very comforting. Uh, where do you stand on how China, the Chinese story will play out in the next year or so? Well, first of all, you can't ignore China. You, it's, it's either equal or a little more or less than the US economy. So you just can't ignore uh, China. And you can't ignore Chinese companies. You continue to look at Chinese companies to see where the opportunities are. Uh, but then, as you mentioned, some of the numbers don't look very good. As you know, they've had a property or housing crisis recently. And uh, one of the reasons why Chinese investors are somewhat depressed is because uh, most of their assets are usually in property, not in the stock market. And when property prices go down, they feel uh, poor. So uh, all of these issues, including the COVID lockdown has hit China. Uh, foreign investors have been burnt badly. American investors uh, had a lot in China. As you know, the Chinese market represented, or still represents about 30% of the major indices. And uh, 
over 50% of investors in emerging markets go into these index funds. So when China goes down, uh, they all get badly burnt. And of course, Russia being eliminated from the index somewhat um, means that they've lost seven, eight percent of their portfolio overnight. So all of these factors make uh, people very wary of China. But that does not mean that there are not opportunities there and we continue to look. So let me ask you to wear your global investor hat for a minute and tell us what do you think large global investors are thinking at this point in time or would be thinking at this point in time? Because you've run billions of dollars as a global investor. Uh, you know, would they be thinking that this is not the time to be adventurous and uh, up allocation to emerging market equities? Maybe it's better to be in the safety of home in US dollar assets where bond deals are inching higher. Would there be a propensity to take money back into the home ship at this point in time? Yes, that's already happened. You know, one of the reasons why these interest rates uh, have been attracting uh, uh, people back to the U.S. market is because with U.S. dollar deposits, they can get a lot more uh, and equal to what they've been getting anywhere else. Uh, but the other important factor is that uh, people in other countries that were holding local currency uh, debt or local currency assets uh, want to get rid of those assets and move into U.S. dollars. So that's the reason why you see this incredible uh, strength of the U.S. dollar. The other factor that you must look at is a lot of people have been burnt in the market and therefore don't want to talk about investing more in the market. Uh, we haven't really reached the uh, end, however. I think there's still a considerable optimism in the market. And I think it probably would take another leg down to really make people very despondent so that they're in the process of selling despondently. In other words, giving up completely on the market. We haven't seen that yet, but this could come. So uh, it's a very interesting phenomenon that we have now where, as I mentioned, at least in America, people feel quite wealthy, they're traveling and so forth. If you look at even in London, if you look at the hotel rates and prices in general, they have not come down, they've gone up. Uh, so there is still a considerable flow of money. So we haven't reached that point where people are giving up completely and saying, look, that's it. Uh, but uh, there's definitely a move or has been a move into U.S. dollars. Now, this is a a uh, very interesting point you make mark i mean having seen so many bear cycles in the past you've just said that sentiment indicators according to you are not indicating a bottom that you have not seen the kind of pessimism yet which is consistent with markets having bottomed out exactly it's interesting that you you i mean by definition we're now in bear markets in most markets around the world uh but uh uh, we ha I don't think we've seen the end there. In other words, a true bear market is when people have really given up and are just dumping everything into the market and so saying, look, never again. I don't want anything to do with stocks and so forth. We haven't reached that yet. Are you talking about the S&P out here? Are you talking about the NASDAQ? Because the NASDAQ was the first to lead the fall and there the stock price collapse has been quite brutal. Uh, do you think the NASDAQ has sort of made its bottom or do you expect techs to lead the slide like it did last year? Uh, no, I think techs already had it. They've already had the big downturn. You must remember that NASDAQ has outperformed the S&P for a number of years. So even those that are, have seen this downturn are probably above uh, what they would have been if they were just in the S&P 500, let's say. Um, uh, but the... I would say NASDAQ has already had it. We've already seen that uh, that decline. And the next leg will be with the S&P. And by the way, don't forget Bitcoin and the cryptocurrencies. Uh, uh, Bitcoin would, would have to go down quite a lot if the pessimism continues and increases. And that could be a, a very good leading indicator, let's put it away, uh, for what's happening in the stock market. So we watch the Bitcoin prices very, very carefully because we just don't know where they're going to go. We're now roughly at about 19, 20,000, but it could go down to 10,000 
And that would be really a very, very uh, pessimistic scenario for many people. Mm. How would gold do in a scenario like this? The one that you're painting, Bitcoin down to 10,000, another big leg down for the S&P 500. How do you see gold faring? I think gold would do fairly well. It'd be fairly steady. I'm not saying gold would, would go through the roof, but I'm saying that gold will probably hold its own and perform better in such an environment. Now, you know, sitting in India, a lot of people are actually very enthused by the relative outperformance. Uh, some see it as a risk that India has not fallen anywhere close to how much even the S&P 500 has fallen this year. But some take comfort from the fact that India is actually standing out and being such so resilient as a market. Uh, how do you see this cookie crumbling? Uh, do you see the relative outperformance continuing or valuations yeah. actually acting against India in the next leg down which you expect to come? I think India will continue to outperform. I'm not saying that uh, it will, the market won't go down. There's, you know, if there's a global uh, downturn, then India, of course, will be affected. But India, I definitely will outperform. Uh, and part of the reason, of course, is the fundamentals of the Indian economy. Um, the Reserve Bank has done a fairly good job in managing the money supply and so forth. And most importantly, the government has moved to improve the investment conditions. And so they're attracting more and more high-tech manufacturing uh, that is now in China and elsewhere uh, to India. And this uh, so-called Gati Shakti program uh, to speed up uh, approvals and to speed up the government bureaucracy in India is going to be incredible. It's going to have a big, big effect and a very positive effect on the Indian economy. Mm. And where would you be positioned, Mark, as an investor in India? I mean, if you were running emerging market money now and you said, this is an outperforming market, I want to be here, uh, what would you buy? Because traditionally, large global investors like you have bought IT and banks, the two big sectors in India. But IT has come under a cloud because of the global headwinds. What would be the right way to be positioned at this point? Well, we still like software. We still like uh, Indian software. Uh, and as you know, India is a leader uh, now globally, globally in the global software market. And I think they will continue to improve and there'll be lots of opportunity in that area. Uh, the other is uh, infrastructure related stocks. Stocks uh, in, for example, tubes, pipes and tubes, stocks in uh, any supply of uh, relatively high tech kinds of things for the construction industry. I think that would be a good area to be because a lot of the infrastructure projects in India, in India will be accelerated as a result of the new government policies. So I would say those would be the two areas and possibly uh, in healthcare. Because more and more uh, Indians are taking advantage of uh, better healthcare and they have the money to do so. And that would be a growth area. When you say healthcare, do you meet uh, uh, hospital chains, diagnostic companies, those names, or pharmaceutical companies? Uh, diagnostic and hospitals, most importantly, and a few selected uh, pharmaceuticals. Right. So, sum up the global situation for us, Mark, now. I mean, what is your base case assumption that this, over the next 12 months, it still is a market where it's difficult to make money for equity investors, that this bear market actually extends through the next 12 months because the last 12 months have been uh, flat for equity market investors. They have not made any money. Do you expect one more year of pain ahead? I think perhaps a half year of pain ahead. Um, but uh, you must remember, even in this painful situation, there's money to be made. As I mentioned, if you have companies that have good pricing power, uh, strong balance sheets and so forth, they're going to take market share away from their competitors and they're going to do very well. So, uh, you know, if the index is going down, it doesn't mean that all the stocks have to go down. So, but generally speaking, yes, there's probably uh, more pain generally in the index ahead. And one of the reasons for that, of course, is the Ukraine situation. Uh, you must remember that the Ukraine situation could get worse before it gets better. And that could have a global impact in many, many different directions. Uh, of course, there are winners and losers there as well, because although Russia is going to be selling less gas and oil to Europe, other countries will be selling more. So uh, that probably is one of the reasons why the U.S. dollar is strong, 
because the U.S. dollar has become uh, an important uh, uh, currency to buy oil and gas from the U.S. Mark, always a pleasure to hear your thoughts. Uh, thank you very much for taking time out uh, for us today and speaking about uh, such a whole range of issues. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Notice something new. You've started using a new body lotion. Funny. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at arjthug.com. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Kerala public health. All political parties traveling from different parts. Armed with facts. Looking at political facts. She takes the news by its horn. Do you think the future of these students are not hampered? Fierce, bold and direct. Setting the tone for the biggest stories. From every corner and every angle. Yeah. Expect nothing but the unfiltered truth. News first, niceties later. Watch me, Nabila Jamal, on India Today. Co-presented by Only OLX Autos gives the best price for your car. Co-presented by Macho Hint, Fashion Bade Aram Se. Powered by Ashirwad Shubh Chakiyata, Raho Char Kadamagi. Hello and welcome uh, once again to this India Today special, India Today, India Tomorrow, where we bring you a slice of life by cutting across generations. And today we have a special pairing with us. Joining us now is one of the rising stars of the Hindi film industry, Kriti Sanon joins us, and her mother, <laughs> Geeta Sanon, who is a physics professor in the University of Delhi. So two completely different career paths chosen. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Thank sir. You. Uh, Thank you. 
I'm going to start with something controversial. <laughs> uh, because it has been reported that, Kriti, you refused uh, Karan Johar's lust stories oh because God. the role centered around the female orgasm and your mother vetoed it. Is that true or not? Not vetoed, I would say. I, I uh, Obviously, back then, I was also just two films old. And um, I would, like any normal girl, would discuss with the family and parents of, you know, I've been offered this, so what do you feel? Uh, and uh, because it was a short film, it was not a full-fledged film. So my mother was just uh, like, you know, it is a short film. It's a 20-minute thing about only a female orgasm. I'm, I mean, fine, if you're doing a 20-minute thing in a full-fledged film, it still makes sense. But uh, maybe I don't think you should do it at this point. So that was the whole discussion. So I was like, okay, I mean, I kind of felt like, okay, maybe I shouldn't. And, and at that point, um, also coming from a normal middle-class family, to ease your parents out in this world as you are also entering is, I think, very, very important. And... Um, you see, that's when she's way more chilled. <laughs> In fact, she's way more chilled. Like there were times when I was like, you know, I don't know if I should wear a bikini or not. I think, you know, and she was like, so what? So, aisa yeah, nahi hai. I mean, she's also are, very chilled in many aspects. If you are on a beach, you will wear a uh, bikini. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, It's all right for me. You know, that's where it came but, from. That this middle class Punjabi family from Delhi yeah, yeah. first sending, allowing their daughter to enter the industry. Thing. It was a yeah. big thing. Then once you've allowed her, yeah. then are you going to allow her to take the decisions or are you going to take the decision ki ye role mat karna, wo role karna? No, that is not the thing. If she asked for advice, then I have to give uh, yeah. I actually do the honest it, advice. Things that I feel, but at times if... If I feel like what, she asked what she's me. saying is... So what was correct? your problem with that? Ki kahan ye middle class morality kahan aagai ki, yaar, Kriti, you can't do this film on a female orgasm. Ab baki no, to, I, she's I, happily doing it. No, I thought uh, we would not be comfortable seeing her doing such a scene. And that too in the beginning of her career, you know? And her, I think her problem so, was more that it was a short film. So it wasn't like yeah. Karan Johar is directing a full-fledged big film. It was about orgasm. Only. Which I don't think, see, I don't think there's anything wrong. I feel like also maybe how will it be made, what will the scenes be like, how will, how it, will look it look, all screen. of that. Maybe if I would have, like Karan said, if I would have made him talk to my mother and he would have explained it or whatever, she would be, have been okay with it. So you know, I the, feel the like... The reason I'm asking you is because obviously the first big challenge was to allow Kriti to go into the world of, yeah. the, uh, of the film industry. First Telugu film industry, then Hindi film industry. That in itself, was that an easy decision to take? Ki, Kriti, you should be allowed <laughs> to make your own choice. Did you think? Uh, it wasn't easy decision. Like, uh, her father didn't want her to uh, join film industry. He's a chartered accountant. Right? Yeah, yes. yeah. So after uh, doing engineering, she had two good jobs on hand. And uh, suddenly she decided uh, for this path. So uh, I tried to discourage her initially, to be very frank. Uh, but, uh, you know, telling her, I used to feel she's very naive. Kaise karegi? You still feel I'm naive? <laughs> I, I, I still feel. Yeah. yeah. I, I remember telling her ki, Bita, uh, ye. Uh, uh, Priyanka Chopra or Deepika Padukone, they are very confident girls, you are not. So she said that no confidence will come slowly and uh, I mean she proved me wrong. So it was your, it was entirely your initiative yeah. Yeah. that you want to totally. give up engineering. I didn't give it up, I completed it. No, no, no. And she you completed, completed it, but then you didn't want to be an engineer for yeah, your life. Yeah. You wanted to experiment yeah. with the I, world of Honestly, films. I was a very, very studious uh, child, uh, and my mom, mom's a professor, so I used to be into <laughs> studies a lot. But uh, when I completed my BTEC, while I was doing it, I started modeling. And when, when I started facing the moving camera for even ads and TV commercials, I felt like it excited me and I felt happy in front of the camera and I felt like this is something that I can do. You know, sometimes you don't, till you've explored, you don't know if you can do it. And engineering, na karte bahut loge, but not too many people know what to do.
So, <laughs> I was ah, very that, shocked. They do MBA. Yeah. Even like, like, she would have done an MBA. Says, right? If physics ki professor ban jati, professor in Delhi University. <laughs> she didn't want that. You didn't want no, to be I that. didn't want to no, be a teacher. She didn't, she didn't want to be a no. teacher. No. And no. then I was like, okay, I've done uh, B.Tech, but what am I going to do? Aage? I'm not excited about that. Nor do I know what do engineers do. You can go in different paths. So, uh, this was something that was exciting me and I was feeling like, you know, I could do it and I used to always love dancing. Like from uh, being a kid, five year old, I used to love dancing. So I felt like maybe I want to explore. Let me give it a try. You know, and uh, then she was like, my parents she were like... She convinced us. She yeah. convinced you. Because, yes. you know, I'm seeing in the last 10, 20 years also, a lot of middle class girls are coming into the Hindi film industry. Yeah. We've got a lot of children of army backgrounds. Whether it's an Anushka, whether it's a Priyanka. Yeah. So it seems almost now, unlike in the past, doors are opening. I mean, parents are, are willing to give you a chance. chance much yeah. more than yeah. 30, 40 years ago. Yeah, honestly, yeah, definitely. But I feel like my parents have always been very uh, liberal in that way of like, do what you feel like. You know, there's never been a pressure that nahi yehi karna hai ya ye nahi karna hai. I wanted to uh, take science. Uh, she felt like... Uh, she felt that I, I wasn't someone who would be able to take the pressure of being in science. Mm -hmm. Because science has a lot of, like engineering has a lot of pressure, you know, in terms of the studies and everything. There also, I, I wanted to do it. So I did it not because my mother was a physics professor, but because I wanted to. So they've always been, in fact, I feel like, you know, sometimes I feel that my mom hasn't fulfilled a lot of things that she probably wanted to do. You know, uh, in her life. You wanted yeah. to be the actor? No. You no, got no. a lovely face. You could have been an actor. <laughs> no, no, no. She wanted to learn how to sing. No, I wanted to learn singing. She wanted to learn how to swim. Yeah. I remember. I wanted to learn swing, swimming. But I am from a very conservative uh, family. So I was not allowed. I so, see. so you uh, could wear the bikini that you said your daughter can now wear. Up, up, that is swimming yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. You know, yeah. be, be, because you know, DPS R K Puram uh, is a is a school which my wife went to. I can tell you, oh. and all she told me it's a factory yeah. where everyone is competing to get ninety nine and hundred percent. Yeah. So yeah. from there to then suddenly come into the film industry after having done the DPS route mm. uh, is is a shift from the world of academia and competition and engineering. And she was a topper throughout. You know? I see. Yeah. yeah. She was a topper throughout. So you didn't and want her to do a, a... I mean, you were not initially disappointed. Kya Kriti itna zab topper throughout and then going into the film industry. You didn't ever... You said your husband had more reservations than yeah. you. Yeah, I didn't have uh, those reservations. But uh, somewhere, you know, uh, uh, you underestimate your child. Ki mera bacha bhot sida hai, ye nahi kar paega. You know? That kind of feeling. Do you have any image that in the Hindi film industry or Telugu film industry, what is happening? People seem to have a perception from the outside of what happens in this industry that you know, casting couch, all these things. You were not worried about that? No, I was not worried about that. She would handle that, I knew. But I used to feel, no, no, these girls are much way smarter than her. She I was actually very shy. She was child. a very shy child from very the beginning. Very shy. Yeah. Very shy. I yeah. was very shy. I used to have stage fright. I used to, uh, uh, you know, get um, nervous at times, or you know, anything if I have to do, chahe exam ho, chahe I'm performing somewhere. You know, I would like not eat, drink anything. I would be like under pressure that I have to do it right. So. She used to see that and that time she used to feel that maybe I don't have the confidence to go in a field like this which is so competitive. Uh, but but at the same time she was like, you know, if you want to do it, I don't want you to ever feel that, oh, I didn't try. So go ahead. You know, because the interesting aspect is this entire debate in the film industry about nepotism. Ki agar, if there is somebody in the film industry who's known to you or you're a son, yeah. daughter, nephew, niece of someone in the film industry, you'll get an easy break. For the rest of you, it's much more competitive. Yeah. Is that true? Let's settle that. Is that true that it's much more competitive for Kriti Salon coming in from Padmar Ganj in Delhi to make it against all these actors and actresses who are the sons and daughters? Definitely it's much more tougher. It is a way longer journey to reach to the same point, uh, especially in the beginning. I feel, yes, after you've done one film, two film, three films, 
those first few opportunities after that everyone sort of equalizes and it comes to the talent and only that but in the beginning to even make people know your name you know till i did bareilly ki barfi also for example um uh ashwini ayer tiwari my director of bareilly ki barfi her kids they were small but they knew me as tiger didi Because I did my first film with Tiger Shroff, they knew Tiger Shroff's name. Because right. Tiger Shroff is the son of Jackie Shroff, right? So they knew so his Kriti name. So Kriti Sanon and on the other side Tiger Shroff's, I, I mean Jackie's son. So Tiger must have also suffered because he was always known for a while as Jackie's yeah, son. Yeah, I feel everyone has their own struggles and own pressures. Uh, uh, yeah, to uh, to get a simple meeting with a director or to get into certain auditions, you know, even that used to be very very tough when you come from nowhere. You don't know where to start from. It's like you really don't know anyone you don't know if it's a good film audition or not even that so i feel like those struggles are way more and there's so many more people like me uh, who might be even more talented you know who are struggling and they don't get that opportunity so the initial struggle is always way tougher way longer and uh, uh, you know in the beginning also when my film struggle is still there when my film released also uh you know uh in the beginning when people would spot me at like the airport and all ke are wo tiger shop wali film mein aayi thi na so it used to be like that you know so to make them know my name was also a challenge in the beginning it only comes also you are you're worried if you're going to get a second film or not right uh you don't get your second film till your first film releases and is judged mm-hmm. you don't get it before sometimes when you come from the industry you do have that thing of your announcement is so big of the first film that your second film comes before your first film is even released you also get uh, magazine covers right that so, is what i was saying yeah so there are many the magazine things. covers and uh, think <laughs> all who see who you see on the magazine covers these days like so i feel like you saw you saw hero panti <laughs> you, uh, did you go and see it first day first show yeah, first day first show not i watched day, uh-huh. way i watched trial. her telugu movie also you watched her telugu Lenu, movie also Lenu Kedvi. yeah but after the movie was made huh? you didn't you didn't go on the shoot during the shoot uh, you see during I in, had, in the I 1970s huh. hema malini's mother would sit At the shoot with Hema Malini, did you go ever to the shoot? Yeah, up. Uh, she you used to feel. The... She used to no, feel. No. I would be nervous if she comes. To see Once it. I had gone with her. Mm. I think it was in uh, the shoot was in London, mm. and uh, Telugu film only. Yeah. Telugu film. Yeah. Yeah. But I said I'll not go on your set. She has uh, come even in certain uh, films. She has come till the vanity van, <laughs> and she's not come on set at times. I think. Yeah. When was the first time you came on set, Mom? Was it Pani Pat? Pani Pat. Pani Pat. Yeah. Pani oh, until Pani then you Pani. hadn't even gone on the no. set of any of no. uh, uh, Kriti's films. No, no, no. She used to feel a. I would get nervous. Uh-huh. She would sometimes. I have uh, forced my parents to come for my debut IFA award. Okay, when I was going because my mother was like, my mother has reached Singapore and then she's been like, नहीं नहीं तू चले जा मैं वहाँ पे नहीं आती हूँ. I said why? She's like मुझे ना डर लगता है कि अगर मैं तुझे देख रही होंगी ना you might trip. ने आप शॉपिंग चली गई सिंगापुर और ये गई थी अवार्ड लेने नो नो शी केम इट्स अ गेट यू केम इट्स अ वियर्ड फियर इनसाइड मी नो बट देन शी एंड्स अप टुडे बीइंग अ फिल्म फेयर अवार्ड बेस्ट एक्टर व्हिच इज इन अस व्हाट वाज द फीलिंग दैट डे नाउ टिल नाउ इफ शी इज परफॉर्मिंग इन सम अवार्ड फंक्शन एंड आई एम वाचिंग ऑन टीवी आल्सो as soon as her परफॉर्मेंस इज यू नो अनाउंस्ड आई आई गेट गुसबम्स But I've performed in Kam. Why do you get stressed I after? I know, I know. She's going you know, to dance. You're not dancing on the stage. <laughs> I know, but no. But it's a thing, you know. I feel like I've been also. I've lived a very protected uh, life. Like you know, my parents have. We've been like protected t- uh, kids. And uh, if my exam be done, I was going to go. So my mom used to worry. Like uh, every mom does that. But not just that. me. Every not mom just does me, that. Even my you sister. Know, till the yeah. child comes back and uh, says, "Ki ha, acha ho gaya." तो यू यू रिमेन वरिड कि कैसा होगा कैसा नहीं होगा एंड यू यू अलाउड यू यू अलाउड बोथ योर डॉटर्स टू एक्सप्लोर दिस वर्ल्ड ऑफ ऑफ सिनेमा इन अ वे या या आई डिड दैट राइट सो यू यू नो यू बीन वेरी ओपन एंड एंड टू योर ग्रेट क्रेडिट आई बीन वेरी ओपन टिल टिल नाउ आई एम वेरी ओपन फॉर एवरीथिंग लाइक आई हैव अलाउड देम 
کوئی لو سین ہو کرتی کی کوئی لو سین ہو یا ask too many things when I'm doing a film unless and until I am confused about something. Um, uh, so I didn't ask her and there were some make out scenes and all of that in, in the film. So after watching the film, she had just passed the way, way by the way comment that there was no more. But, but it wasn't like, I don't do it. But it was just a very by the way comment. Also, I feel like somewhere, I mean, because that film coming back to it, because it was a short film and everything, she felt like it might not really do much to my career. Mm -hmm. And then, then what is the point? What do your neighbors in Patparganj now say? Ki beti badi star ban gayi hai? Ya kis tarah se dekhte? How, are, are you perceived differently both in the university where you teach ki Kriti yeah. Sanon ki mother aari hai? Yes. You are now noticed as Kriti, Kriti Sanon's mur, uh, mother, not a professor of physics. Definitely. Aapki <laughs> <laughs> identity badal gayi hai. Identity, yeah, sometimes it troubles me, especially in college, you know. Kyo? Uh, because in college, uh, when I used to pass from the corridor and uh, uh, students uh, used to say ki ye ye wo hi geeta sanan ma'am hai jinki book hai no, she's I also written she's hai. written two I books in bsc practicals so, yeah and uh, uh, that two physics books yeah yeah, yeah. Books she has. and and students use those books so i was popular because of the uh, books. books and uh, after she came into this field uh, now geeta sanan ki mom hai ہندی فلم انڈسٹری شرما جی نمکین بدھائی ہو یو نو ڈیلی از ناؤ ڈیلی واز سین ٹو بی دا سینٹر آف پالیٹکس اینڈ پاور and mumbai was entertainment you made the transition from delhi to mumbai coming to mumbai was that in itself uh, a huge change in your life are you more comfortable in mumbai today than you are in delhi today yes i i think uh, when i initially initially when i moved to yeah. tell us ki main night show ja rahi hu aur hum <laughs> they used to get very worried that well, how you going to come back yeah uh, how you going to come back home in and all delhi it is a different scene yes so now Uh, when uh, we realized here to till 2 o'clock in the night uh, people are uh, on the roads also we are coming sometimes up from a night shoot you know and we are coming at 3 am 4 am so it just feels a lot more safer here honestly in 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 terms of like the roads and the safety and everything i miss delhi food very badly also when i moved to mumbai my first reaction was like where are the main roads Because, <laughs> I, because they didn't look like main roads to me and we have this concept of main roads right That's main right. road and I, gali no, i have actually done the other move i moved from mumbai to delhi yeah. and the first thing you when i you must be like my god my first thing when i moved to delhi in the 1990s that troubled me was power cuts we had never had yeah. power cuts in mumbai yeah, but that's actually there and and you miss the food because i have heard that your mother makes the best rajma chawal somebody told She me does, go yeah. to the sanon house because they make the best rajma chawal too yeah 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 that's what rajma chawal is like پنجابی کے گھر میں راجما چاول اچھا نہیں ملے تو پھر کیا پنجابی تو یو پنجابی بائی ہارٹ ٹوٹلی ٹوٹلی انجینئر <laughs> into this world what is the biggest change in you kriti how have you changed as a person i think i've become a lot more confident and also a lot more open as a person i feel like 
um, open minded you know i just feel like uh, when you i am a very opinionated person i am also very very strong headed with strong opinions people who know me very well feel like i can argue till i win so i'm that person but i feel like when you come in this profession you talk to so many different people you understand so many different opinions also as an actor you have to understand different opinions of looking at the same uh, you know different ways of looking at the same thing so i feel like i'm way more open as a person uh, and also a lot more confident today than what i was i i i think i've gained what i said na confident dheere dheere aa jata hai so it it has yeah. been that only पर जब आप पढ़ती हैं किसी एक ये फिल्म गॉसिप मैगजीन या ऑनलाइन पे कृति सनोन इज फाउंड कनूडलिंग with some <laughs> with some of our main stars then are you okay with it or not very you updated i must say with all the girls no i'm not updated this is what i keep hearing see, so are, are you okay with see, all that or not no no initially uh, we used to be up, upset and uh, stressed mm. but now now she just replies to the person on a tweet <laughs> why did you say this like <laughs> tweet up kar leti hai if somebody if somebody says she dms them then you dm people <laughs> no. you send people a direct message on twitter if they no. accuse your daughter of having no, no. a relationship no no if I, they I don't uh, do gossip this now. if they gossip or if they say something wrong i feel like doing it <laughs> but i am uh, always yeah. stopped She stops, She yeah, stops you. She stops you. Mama, don't now get into a panga. Yeah. I said uh, yeah. it's not so important. So many people are not reading it. You will do it. More people will read it. <laughs> Can you not? <laughs> But I think in the beginning, I remember there used to be a little. क्या होता है ना रिलेटिव्स इन ऑल एवरीवन देन इज ट्रैकिंग व्हाट्स गोइंग ऑन इन योर लाइफ कॉलिंग कि ये पढ़ा हमने समटाइम्स यू टू कॉल मी आई हैव आई हैव रीड दैट यू आर डूइंग दिस फिल्म यू हैव नॉट टोल्ड अस एंड आई एम लाइक बिकॉज़ आई एम नॉट डूइंग इट सो सो समटाइम्स दे यूज्ड टू रीड थिंग्स एंड फील लाइक इट्स ऑल ट्रू आई थिंक स्लोली दे हैव रियलाइज्ड दैट अ लॉट ऑफ व्हाट इज प्रिंटेड इज नॉट ट्रू Uh, but you know you and a lot is uh, hyped and made into canoodling when it's just chatting <laughs> acha chatting so, or canoodling mein yeah, the, the lines are very fine okay, huh? okay let's take a break at this point we'll be back with plenty more with geeta and kriti sanon as they tell us their life story Notice something new. You started using a new body lotion. Funny. I'm so Where sorry for the delay. I was on another call. It just kept going on. Uh, no, Papa. You were in a steam bath. A steam bath at home. Do do see party cakes. <laughs> Go do your homework. Seven twenty already. The kickoffs in five minutes. Get all the boys. We have the entire place to ourselves, man. Not working? Of course it is. But I don't want you guys to be using this bathroom. So use the other one. I'm so sorry for the delay. I was on another call. It just kept going on. Uh, no, Papa. You were in a steam bath. A steam bath at home. Do do see party day. Go do your homework. Everyone's busy finding what's trending. You're busy finding out why. India today. For those who research before reacting, download the India Today app now.
I don't read the news. I read between the lines to tell you the true version of events. The true story of our times. To document grief, the toughest assignment for any journalist to be. From those who matter. Women politicians gonna stick up for each other. Of those who should matter. I document the truth. I don't distort the truth. I don't glamorize the truth. I don't gloss over the truth. The ghosts of India's contentious medieval history have come knocking again. I hustle for the truth, on the ground, in the newsroom, in the I studio. I don't try to grab eyeballs. I inform you to make you see the point. To the point with Preeti Chaudhary. At these times, only on India Today. Welcome back. You're watching India Today, India Tomorrow, where we have a special mother-daughter with us. She does a wonderful film like Mimi, you know, plays the role of a surrogate mother and you won a Filmfare Award for it. That must make, you know, that must make you even prouder that here is a girl yes. who's, you know, shown me what she can do. Yeah. Even after, you know, uh, seeing her in Panipat, I felt very proud. I told her that I saw Parvati Bai. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't see Kriti in that. And that was a big deal for me because the first person who can see through you is your mother. You know, they will know when you're faking it. They will know that this is also in the house. Like this is Kriti. This is Kriti. She's playing herself. You know, so and, and, and also, I presume it also makes the transition to have slowly but surely getting female-oriented roles, right? Because for a long time, there was a feeling that you know, if you're a pretty girl there yeah. in, in the Hindi film True. industry, the focus is on the male hero. You think yeah. that's changed now? That, that, you know, roles are made for a female uh, star? See, I feel like earlier also there have been some amazing roles for women in general. Sri Devi ma'am, Madhuri ma'am, uh, you know, Smita Bartel. So many people have done some very, very meaty roles. Yes, they are being written a lot more now, fortunately. Uh, and But I also feel like the women are also wanting to do more and mm. wanting to do uh, a meteor part and are craving to do more. So it's a combination of supply and demand. So I feel like, you know, I'm glad that I'm a part of a time where uh, they there are amazing roles being written for women. And I feel like, you know, once you do a film like Mimi, what the problem is happening now is that I crave to do those. Mm. And I crave to do more, but I can't be only looking for Mimi in every... Uh, you know, in every film that I that comes across me, sometimes the films are amazing. The characters smaller but impactful. But you know, it's a great film to be a part of, and you have to sort of be like, okay, I can't be so hungry everywhere to balance it out. <laughs> so you know, what for you now? Uh, your have you ever thought ki yaar, ab Delhi chhod dete hain daughters making it big in uh, in the Hindi film industry? Forget college, ho gaya physics. I live with her. Have you thought of that, or you? You want, you like your own life in Delhi and allow Kriti to do her uh, own thing in Mumbai. See, I, I like to teach. After every lecture, I feel very good. But I want to be with uh, them also. <laughs> now, so during COVID, I believe you did all your lectures Yeah, online. I have both yeah. the things. I had my she lectures and I was happiest. here. Happiest. While living in uh, Mumbai. <laughs> yeah. So that was a great time. Living yeah, with yeah. your daughter. It was a doing blessing in disguise. It yeah. was a blessing in disguise. Yeah. Yeah. And are you happy to have your mother around or is she a constraint? Be honest. No, no, Would absolutely Would you rather happy. be on your own 
so i no no i feel like uh, so in the beginning we got very me and my sister i i live with my sister anyways so we got very used to obviously just the two of us and nobody asking us kitne baje aaye hai kitne baje ja rahe ho uh, in <laughs> the like, moment she yeah. comes it's kitne baje ja rahe ho no, kahan ja rahe ho kiske sath ja rahe ho no that much i tell utna wo phone pe bhi poochte hai aisa nahi hai ki delhi se kam hota hai wo acha <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, it just in general in the beginning obviously we we weren't used to that and uh, i but i think i was more than glad in covid that my my parents were here in mumbai uh, in mumbai because uh, i would have been very very worried and very concerned if they were back in delhi and then we kind of really again got used to the family bonding and the time you know coming back to family and coming back to a home that was not silent and quiet uh and now when they go for even a few days it's it's like the suddenly the house is empty and there's like no sound it just feels like so weird and, and my no maid and no rajma chawal my, my house helps also start crying when my parents are leaving now so it's it's like and they also now i don't know if they miss us more or they miss the dogs more but they definitely do miss being we, here like we miss <laughs> the dogs more <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> no but you know you because also You yes. know, we have a camera, so on uh, uh, my husband's phone, huh. we watch the entrance. The, huh. Yeah. And when we are not there, the dogs are sitting there waiting for yeah, us. Yeah. So you are missing your dogs in Delhi while yeah, you are here with your daughters in Mumbai. Because no, they, the dogs are no, in Mumbai. No, oh, the dogs are in Mumbai. Mumbai. You are missing only. them while you are sitting in yeah, Delhi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They because FaceTime they are, the, they, the dogs more than they FaceTime us. They FaceTime us. Then you FaceTime the <laughs> dogs more than you FaceTime your daughters. Now that's terrible. <laughs> See, <laughs> they are like Kids. babies. Yeah. yeah. They are like babies, and they need us more. Now the girls have grown up; they don't need us that much. That's not true. <laughs> That's not true. Mo- mothers are always needed, right? Yeah, always. Mothers Parents always, are always. But needed. you know, you you've not just done acting. When I was, you know, looking through your bio, as it were, you've started what fitness. You've got a fitness group. Uh, uh, fitness, yes. Fitness. Yes. I've just, uh, yeah, I've just uh, started this fitness uh, studio. We're going to be coming up hopefully with an app also very very soon. So it is something that I kind of got into during uh, uh, the COVID time, the lockdown time. That's because a Punjabi entrepreneur in you. Is it? Yeah, well, I, you know. I never thought of all this. You know, it's all like I'm doing it as it comes to me, and I felt like why not? Uh, and I do have always that urge of. uh i'm not very easily satisfied and i i feel like i'm i've always been very driven and ambitious so i feel like okay this is achieved now what next so uh i when i had gained weight for mimi um after i shot for that film uh, we went into a lockdown and i was with that 15 kilos extra on me and i was like okay i need to reduce this and i took get back to working out but how because gyms were shut and i started working out with these uh, uh, you know trainers. Uh, trainers who were like absolutely amazing and uh, even virtual sessions and all i've lost all the weight in my uh, bedroom working out virtually so uh, i really liked the energy and i felt like you know uh, it is important to be fit and then that's how i kind of started this whole thing with them as we end she's after me she's after you to get fit to get fit to lose yeah. weight you yeah, you got a fitness trainer <laughs> aapki koi fitness trainer no, hai no not yet yeah, she does a little yoga sometimes yeah na acha ye fitness trainer aapki hai meri kaha sunto aap show me your 10000 steps you have done or oh. not <laughs> <laughs> you know, it is it is so cute sometimes when i'm on shoot Haan. somewhere away and and i just get a uh, screen grab of 10000 steps when she's finished it this only the day she finishes it the day she doesn't she doesn't send me oh hey this but, is okay you can be the way you yeah, are you're a physics yeah, yeah, professor she's yeah. the actor she has to remain fit but in conclusion to many of those who are watching this is a great middle class dream that has been realized what would you tell mothers like yourself who are perhaps in east delhi thinking meri bhi beti agli kriti sanon ban sakti hai kya kahi what would you tell them should they go for it or not uh see they should definitely go for it but uh, uh they should have a b plan like when i sent her uh, she was an engineer okay still even after that i asked her to appear for gmat and get a good score Wow. And she did that. I did that. So wow. You know, I'll tell you when when you come. From, if the films don't work, or if this career doesn't work, then what? 
इट्स नॉट ऑलवेज अबाउट इंडस्ट्री की इमेज कैसी है या क्या सुना ऐसा है कुछ आपने? नहीं है एक्चुअली द ओनली थिंग वॉज दैट इट्स नॉट अ सिक्योर प्रोफेशन योर इवन वेन यू आर देयर योर फेट चेंजेज एवरी फ्राइडे यू नो एवरी रिलीज चेंजेज द वे पीपल लुक इट यू Uh, and when you come from nowhere and you don't have a godfather or you know a film background here um you always have to there are two ways of looking at it there are some people who say no just be driven and have one thing so that you don't ever have to go to a second plan but i think to to at least keep your parents secure in their heads because it can be not everyone gets there at times it's unfortunate but there, there are, are so many, many strugglers sure. here it's a tough who don't and also you know here. it's it's like you know uh, what if you get one film but then you don't get the other what yeah. if your first film doesn't work you sure. know where are you going to go from there so i feel like it is it makes you secure in your head when you have a plan b it made me passionate but not desperate when i came into the industry so i wasn't okay doing just anything and everything coming my way I was wanting to do the right thing, and why? Because I knew I had something to fall back on. So let me then ask you in conclusion: What's the best thing about being in the industry, and the most difficult thing about being in the industry? Oh, that's a difficult <laughs> question. <laughs> I think the best thing about being in the industry is um, uh, you get to. it is not a monotonous life you get to do something different every single day you wake up as a different character doing a different scene that you won't do in your life and you get to learn a lot of things that you wouldn't learn an experience a lot of things that you wouldn't have otherwise and you get paid for it ah oh. so so that is there like you know i've learned uh, a little bit of horse riding i've learned like scuba, so many other skills scuba diving yeah like so many other skills that i wouldn't have i'm doing action in a film in ganpat right now so i've learned like some weapons and stuff which which is exciting but i would have never known how to do it if i was not a part of this industry um what is the worst thing of being in the industry um i think your personal life is not so personal and private anymore mm. and it kind of uh, you That miss the little thing. you miss the little things everyone wants to know everything about you uh, at every point uh, uh, you know everything that you say everything that you do is judged way too much and nowadays after social media becoming like such a big deal it's judged way too much when she comes to delhi what what is the first thing that uh, you do, uh, what is the first thing you all do together as a family kya when whenever kriti comes to delhi to the house do all the neighbors land up there to take selfies no 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 we 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 don't uh, let don't anyone tell, we don't allow anyone you don't tell people that kriti is <laughs> yeah, in town yeah 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 sometimes don't sometimes if we have to there are some uh, relatives sometimes we you know end up going to like someone's place and all that's different but pata to chali yeah, jata hai it's not have, like we sometimes have a get together where all yeah. the relatives come yeah to but koi ye to koi ye to nahi keh raha na ki kriti ki shaadi kab kar rahi ho कह रहे होंगे कह रहे हैं 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 ऐसा तो नहीं है वैसे भी आजकल दुनिया Absolutely, and also I feel like um, I mean there is something which probably has prob- made you also a lot more secure about it. I feel like why women were supposed to get married, uh, you know, uh, earlier uh, at a certain age was more because of the biological clock. It's more about the baby and getting pregnant, and it's healthier, you know, when you're younger, and then your eggs get older and all. And uh, I'm say- actually saying this for the first time, but I want to say to inspire many, many girls who can afford to do it. Uh, I've frozen my eggs. and i feel like that kind of i was like now there's no biological clock don't tell me anything i will work till when i want 
I will get married when I feel it's right because <laughs> I am in love with the person I want to spend the right my life with. You're surprised? No, I'm not surprised. <laughs> I'm happy in a way yeah. that. Everyone, and, and is, everyone her, is breaking all the stereotypes yeah. that exist. And yeah, when I told her, see, she I was like, you must. Work, she's working a lot, but she should enjoy life also. I want her to, you know, look for a good guy and make a boyfriend at least. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. That's, that's the Punjabi mother coming in, or the good Indian mother coming yeah. inside. Beti, I'm glad that she said boyfriend, not Boy husband. Yeah. Haan, she said, you yeah. said boyfriend, not husband. Abhi yeah. pehle boyfriend hi banai ki na. She won't even tell you, baby, no, when no. she has one. You will? She gets to know. She gets to know. I'm not very good at lying to her. Okay, good. <laughs> but listen, at the end of the day, you're on a dream run. You've got lots of big movies coming up. I wish you all success. Thank you. And so much. you have an ambition to be number one one day. Is that the goal? That's always the goal. It's that's nothing, right. nothing less goal. than that. It's always that's always the goal. But uh, other than that, I feel like my dream is to to eventually leave a sort of legacy behind, a sort of work that people remember me for, uh, and and. Yeah, that's that's more than you know. Today, when like Bachpan se when I used to watch like Madhuri Dixit, I used to be like, oh my god, you know, I love uh, the kind of idol? work she was she when was. I was a kid. I used to dance always. all her songs always, uh, and and there are so many girls who aspire to be like her or have gotten inspired by her, and I feel like if tomorrow, like 50 years later, if someone looks at me like that, that will be like amazing. And your mom's ambition is to write uh, another book on physics. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Why not? Why not? Why, Why not? not? Only physics. Uh, she sometimes I feel like she uh, she's also into designing, into uh, designing a lot. You know, when I was a kid, um, she used to uh, I used to show her a magazine and say, "Mujhe na aisi wali dress chahiye jo actress ne pehni hai," and she used to actually make it for me. So and she still uh, knits tops and all for me. I love wearing them. So, so you can be the fashion designer for yeah. all her films. Adi amuse. Right? Maybe. <laughs> the only problem is then she'll make you get fit also and put a trainer on to you. Then you will you will have to go on a diet. <laughs> but it's wonderful to have both of you here together Thank because you I think so you, in a way, represent the new India. Celebrate, in a way, uh, your uh, ambitions and dreams being fulfilled. Physics professor, star actor, great <laughs> diversity. Congratulations to both Thank of you, you and you. Thank you very much for joining me on India today. India tomorrow. India tomorrow. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you, so, you much. so much. That was a special here with the Sanon family. Thanks very much for joining us. Bye for now. जान गवाते हैं हर साल लापरवाह ड्राइविंग के कारण Well, that's true. Speed junkies on souped-up motorcycles have been a recurrent menace in India. Country's expressways and roads are fast becoming the choicest stretches for bike stunts. Stunt biking on roads is now driven by likes on Facebook and Instagram. That's the hype. This is becoming one of the worst menace in India, which is costing lives. Road accident is one of the leading causes of death, disability and hospitalization of people worldwide in general and India in particular. Approximately 1.3 million people die each year as a result of road traffic crashes as per World Health Organization data. At least 1 out of 10 people killed on roads across the world is from India. The cost of road accidents is borne not only by victims and their families, but by the economy as a whole in terms of untimely deaths, injuries, disabilities and loss of potential income. During the year 2020, more than 3,60,000 road accidents were recorded, causing loss of around 1,30,000 lives. Road accidents take place mostly because of overspeeding, Drunken driving, driving on wrong side, jumping red light, using mobile phones while driving and bike stunts, among others. 
However, top 10 states in number of fatalities on national highways are Tamil Nadu, Uttar Pradesh, Karnataka, Madhya Pradesh, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Kerala, Maharashtra, Rajasthan and Bihar. This is in order as a report that was released by the authorities. Unfortunately, the worst affected age group in road accidents is 18 to 45 years, which accounts to at least about 70% of the total accidental deaths. So be careful and drive safe. Kerala's public health. All political parties traveling from different parts. Armed with facts. Looking at political back. She takes the news by its Do you think the future of these students are not hampered? Fierce, bold and direct. Setting the tone for the biggest stories. From every corner and every angle. Expect nothing but the unfiltered truth. News first, niceties later. Watch me Nabila Jamal on India Today. You are watching India Today. Justice, liberty, equality, the pillars that built India. A nation where everyone has dignity and opportunities to prosper. But today, over 75 years after independence, Dalits remain a community trapped for centuries by the caste system, languishing in a dismal state. Nearly 20% of India's population is Dalit. Dalits still live in abject poverty, excluded on the margins, facing atrocities, toxic untouchability, and no opportunities for economic upliftment. The father of India's constitution, Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar, fought all his life for the upliftment of Dalits. In the past, many state and central governments have made big promises, but it has been nothing more than lip service. Basic human rights have still not been delivered. Dalits remain downtrodden and discriminated against. This shocking reality is a national shame. Few have dared to break the cage of caste discrimination until now. Friend to the downtrodden, upholding human rights and dignity, Championing Ambedkar's India, KCR is showing India and the world how a revolution is sparked in Telangana through his path breaking scheme, Telangana Dalit Bandhu. Approximately 17,50,000 Dalit families call Telangana home, and now they are calling Telangana the land of opportunity. Thanks to Dalit Bandhu, launched in 2021 by the TRS government, a world-first scheme which will give each Dalit family an astounding financial boost of 10 lakh rupees. There are many more schemes along with this which are under implementation all over the state. But Dalit Bandhu is a specially designed program for the upliftment of the Dalit community. It has an unprecedented objective to uplift 17,50,000 Dalit households with a one-time capital grant of 10 lakh rupees per household, 100% subsidy with zero repayment, delivered via direct to beneficiary transfer with a dedicated Dalit Bandhu Scheme help desk and monitoring committee at village, mandal, district and state level and a 10% reservation for Dalits in profit generating schemes, government contracts and licenses. In addition to this, Telangana has another visionary program for Dalit students, residential schools and colleges, and Ambedkar Overseas Vidya Nidhi, a 20 lakh rupees overseas scholarship, giving them the most powerful tool for success, education. Huzurabad, 2021. The Telangana Dalit Bandhu pilot was launched. Telangana's Dalit Bandhu is a path-breaking scheme that places absolute trust in the beneficiary. Each household has complete freedom and flexibility to decide its business and how to grow their dreams. 
నేను వచ్చేసి ఫార్మసీ చదివాను సార్ దాని తర్వాత అజయ్ ఫార్మసిస్ట్గా చాలా ప్లేస్లో చేశాను సార్ ఎప్పుడైతే మన తెలంగాణ గవర్నమెంట్ ఈ దళిత బంధు పెట్టిందో అప్పుడు ఇంకా నేను నాకు ఎప్పటి నుంచో నా ఓన్ బిజినెస్ నా ఓన్గా బిజినెస్ పెట్టుకున్నామని నాకు అంతకుముందే ఉండేది సార్ మన టీఆర్ఎస్ గవర్నమెంట్ దళిత బంధు స్కీమ్ ఒకటి పెట్టి మన ఓన్గా నా ఓన్గా నేను సెటిల్ కావడానికి ఒక ఆపర్చునిటీ క్రియేట్ చేసింది సార్ House holds were identified as beneficiaries and the direct benefit transfer of 10 lakh rupees was made. Each family unit was free to decide how they wished to invest this 100% subsidy. It could be a single or multiple businesses. Multiple beneficiaries could pool their resources to build a bigger business. It could be in any sector of their choice. The sky was the limit. In no time The stories of transformation began rolling in. These are just a small fraction of the 40,000 success stories that Telangana has empowered through the Dalit Bandhu scheme. In just one year, it has smashed records for any Dalit upliftment scheme in the country. Till date, the Dalit Bandhu scheme has been implemented in all 119 assembly constituencies in Telangana. Beneficiaries have achieved prosperity for their families. They have also created opportunity for their community by providing employment and revenue. The resounding success of the Dalit Bandhu scheme has energized the TRS government to accelerate its efforts. From 40,000 beneficiaries with an outlay of 4,441.8 crore rupees, Now Telangana government has raised the Dalit Bandhu budget to reach about 2 lakh beneficiaries with an outlay of 17700 crore rupees making this the world's largest direct benefit scheme Delta Bandhu vachin tarvata ee 10 lakhalu anedi maamuluga andarki opportunity raadu veedi poorthe government vallu maaku 10 lakhalu ichesi మీ ఇష్టం ఉన్న వ్యాపారాన్ని పెట్టుకో అని చెప్పేసి అన్నారు అనడం వల్ల మాకు ఇంత ఆర్థిక పురోగతి కలిగింది అదే కాకుండా మేము ఇంతకుముందు ఒక దగ్గర వర్కర్ గా పనిచేసిన వాళ్ళ ఇప్పుడు ఓనర్ గా ఉండగలుగుతున్నాం దళిత బంధు పథకం రాకముందు మేమైతే చాలా స్ట్రగుల్స్ ఫేస్ చేసాం దళిత బంధు పథకం కింద మేము ఈ ఎంబ్రాయిడరీ మిషన్ ఎంచుకొని పెట్టుకున్నాము నేర్చుకున్న వరకునే నేను ఫుల్ఫిల్ చేయాలనుకొని ఈ ఎంబ్రాయిడరీ స్టార్ట్ చేశాను సార్ ఇచ్చినందుకు చాలా చాలా ధన్యవాదాలు కేసీఆర్ గారికి తెలంగాణ ప్రభుత్వానికి కూడా మేము ఎంతో రుణపడి ఉన్నాము ముగ్గురం కలిసి ఒక యూనిట్ పెట్టాము అంటే థర్టీ ల్యాక్స్ పెట్టి ఒక వెహికల్ ఉన్న ఇప్పుడు అమెరికన్ టూరిస్ట్ షాప్ పెట్టాం బాగానే నడుస్తుంది ఇప్పుడైతే అంటే నేను జాబ్ చేసేవాడిని ఇప్పుడు ఓనర్గా అంటే ఒక కంపెనీ ఓనర్గా ఇప్పుడు ఫీల్ అవుతున్నా చాలా హ్యాపీగా ఉంది జీవనోపాధిగా మిషన్ కొట్టుకుంటూ బ్రతికేదాన్ని సార్ నేను మాకు ముగ్గురు పిల్లలు వాళ్ళని చదివించుకుంటూ మేము బ్రతకాలంటే చాలా కష్టమైంది సార్ ఇప్పుడు దళిత బంధు ద్వారా కేసీఆర్ గారు లాదుకున్నారు సార్ వాళ్ళు ఇద్దరం కలిసి పెట్టుకున్నాం సార్ మిషన్ కోయంబత్తూరు నుంచి వెళ్ళి తెప్పించుకున్నాం సార్ మిషన్ నాన్ ఓవెన్ ఓవెన్ బా బ్యాగ్స్ సార్ మేము మాకు నెలకు యాభై వేల వరకు వస్తాయి సార్ ముగ్గురు జీతాలు యాభై వేల వరకు వస్తాయి సార్ For Telangana's leadership, it's not about breaking records, but about ensuring financial freedom for all. Each Dalit Bandhu grant of 10 lakh rupees has an inbuilt 10,000 rupees safety net, Dalita Rakshana Nidhi, to ensure that all Dalit families get financial assistance from the fund at times of distress. To further strengthen this, Telangana government contributes additional 10,000 rupees which is over and above each grant. A great safety net that has no parallel anywhere in the world. For the KCR government, this is more than just a financial benefit. If any beneficiary of Dalit Bandhu meets with fatal disease or accident, the family should not go through additional depression and hard times. They should remain protected. That is the true purpose of the special safety net designed as Dalita Rakshana Nithi. KCR sir, in the scheme this crowd of Anadhi, Chala Gopavisham sir, Mahalanti Valaki, Oonga settle, Oonga Oka company vetti established ka Aulan Kune Valaki Kosam, it is a golden opportunity sir. Adhika Kunda Dalitul one time Samajam no andar ki chinnachu pungane on tari, Ippudu idhi vada malla ok. 
హెల్త్ బంధించి మమ్మల్ని ఎంతో ఆదుకున్నారు సార్ మాకు మరో అంబేద్కర్ గారు సార్ మాకు మాకైతే మాటల్లో చెప్పలేము ఆయన మాకు ఎంతో బతుకునిచ్చారు అసలు under the fearless leadership of KCR Dalits finally have a government that protects and defends them Telangana inspires them to overcome oppression and empowers them to be bold so that each Dalit can move up in the world with head held high creating their own success story making Telangana shine and in turn India You are watching India today ప్రొవోకేషన్ The USS Ronald Reagan and its striking group of accompanying warships was abruptly redeployed in response to North Korea's IRBM launch over Japan. An urgent meeting of the Security Council was convened to discuss the situation in the Korean Peninsula. North Korea however says it was in response to South Korea and US warplanes conducting bombing drills the same day. The North condemned the United States for talking to the United Nations Security Council about Pyongyang's so-called countermeasures. They said, "We are watching the United States posing a serious threat to the stability of the situation on the Korean Peninsula and in its vicinity by redeploying the aircraft carrier in the waters of Korean Peninsula." The situation has worried nations for which DPRK poses grave threat and danger. Sirens have sounded out in central Tokyo for the first time in 5 years. South Korea's military mobilized four F15 Oh sorry.
are watching India Today. You're watching India Today. I'm Nabila Jamal. Let's take you through the top news. The headlines first. Prime Minister Modi in poll-bound Gujarat addresses massive rally in Madhera. Prime Minister's Vikas pitch to Gujarat voters. Madhera ke liye, Mahesana ke liye, aur pure North Gujarat ke liye, Vikas ki nai urja ka sanchar hua hai. Kejriwal's minister quits amid row over anti-Hindu oath. Rajendra Pal Gautam, who has called Ram Krishna as false gods, now has quit the Ahmadmi Party as Kejriwal faces backlash in poll-bound Gujarat. BJP Congress slam Kejriwal Man's chartered flight and the chopper journey. Congress calls this Kejriwal's idea of Ahmadmi, while BJP says joyride spent on taxpayers' money. Ekna Chinde, Udav Thakri camps now in a huddle after election commission freezes the bow and arrow symbol. Sources claim that Trishul, the rising sun and Mashal are being explored by the Udav camp as new symbols for the party. AIMIM yeah, Minister, uh, the chief OAC wades into Tipu showdown, claims that Tipu has irked BJP because he has waged wars against the British, says the BJP will never be able to erase Tipu's legacy from India. All right, now, newly constructed road in Bengaluru caves in, in Kundanahalli underpass constructed months ago. Severe civic apathy has been exposed. India's IT corridor, Congress hurls a 40% commission charge at the Mumbai government. Ahead of elections in the state of Karnataka, we're seeing jibes by the opposition hitting out at the ruling BJP, questioning them on this road that's caved in, in Bengaluru's Kundanahalli underpass that's constructed just a few months ago and were, was inaugurated. Severe civic apathy has been exposed. India's IT corridor. In fact, Congress now hurling the 40% commission charge at Bombay government. Bengaluru civic apathy that's quite exposed now. We're seeing that this road that was inaugurated just a few weeks ago, or rather a few months ago, has caved in already, with the Congress now hitting at the BJP, saying that this is a 40% commission sarkar. They take the money, don't do the job. Sagai joining us on the phone line, our day to day correspondent from Bengaluru. Sagai, Kundera Harley underpass that was constructed just a few months ago. Civic apathy that's been exposed in India's IT corridor, where the road itself has fully caved in. Barely a few months, and we're seeing this infrastructure that's exposed. Of course, Congress taking this opportunity to hit out at the BJP. Absolutely. Congress is taking every single chance. Uh against BJP and after Sunkut Kati flyover where we have uh, seen a whole through now you get to see uh, yet another uh, shoddy work of a BBMP where uh, one of the underpass uh, road has seen uh, caving in and people are alleging that it is uh, uh, carelessness of BBMP because when you try to construct this they haven't used a proper mechanism on the other side uh, Congress has uh, taken the chance and trying to cash in in the situation where it said that there's a result of 40% commission where the uh, BJP is taking commission and that is the reason uh, these kind of uh, uh, shoddy work done by uh, uh, the contractors. All right, these are the visuals there. Kondanahali underpass that was inaugurated just a few months ago. The road itself has caved in with uh, Congress hurling the 40% Commission Sarkar Jai by the Bombay government ahead of election saying that this is the civic apathy despite taking bribe. All right, now in a big blow to Udav Thakre's legacy claim, the election commission has seized the party's symbol. Udav Thakre's faction of the Shiv Sena has now submitted a letter to the election commission regarding interim symbol and the party's name for upcoming bipoles. Udav Thakre's faction has picked three symbols for the party which involve the Trishul or the Rising Sun or Mashal. They want one of the three while 
these three names that they've picked for the party include Shiv Sena Bala Sahib Thakre, Shiv Sena Udav Thakre and Shiv Sena Prabodhankar Thakre. Now, Udav Thakre has come down heavily on the Shinde camp and asked him not to use Bala Sahib's name in his party. Meanwhile, Shinde camp likely to object to Udav camp's symbol suggestions. According to both these factions, they will have to choose from available options of the Election Commission of India's website. In, 18, if, in 1989, Sena had in fact demanded the tiger symbol at that point and the Election Commission had denied it because it was not part of their website uh, options that were available. The camp now, both the camps, yet to decide on the party symbol as well as the name. The faction led by Chief Minister Eknath Shinde will be submitting their letter to the Election Commission by 1 p.m. Monday morning, Monday afternoon. We have to say that कि काल निवडणूक आयोगाने तो आदेश आपल्याला दिल्यानंतर आपण तात्काळ तीन चिन्ह त्यांच्या आदेशानुसार तीन चिन्ह दिलेली आहेत आता ही चिन्ह मी आपल्या समोर दाखवतोय एक आहे त्रिशूळ दुसरा आहे उगवता सूर्य आणि तिसरा आहे धगधगती मशाल तीन नावं सुद्धा आपण तात्पुरत्या का वेळासाठी का होईना आपण निवडणूक आयोगाला काल दिलेली आहेत तत्ल पहिला नाव आहे शिवसेना बाळासाहेब ठाकरे दुसरं नाव आहे शिवसेना बाळासाहेब प्रबोधनकार ठाकरे आणि तिसरं आहे शिवसेना उद्धव बाळासाहेब ठाकरे मला अजिबात आश्चर्य वाटत हे होणार याची मला खात्री होती हल्ली निर्णय कोण घेत याची मला माहिती नाही पण निर्णय हे गुणवत्तेवरच घेतले जातील याची खात्री हल्ली देता येते आणि त्यावेळेला असं काहीतरी घरे हे गेले काही जे स्वार्थच होतं ते घरे तुम्ही तुमचं मत आहे नाही सगळं प्री प्लॅनिंग होत पण सर अशा पद्धती असं म्हणायला मला माझ्याकडे काही माहिती नाही पण असं घरे असं मला माझं मन सांगत होत नाही असा इतकं होत निवडणुकांना जर जायचं असेल आणि शक्तिशाली एखादी संघटना असेल तर ती जे ठरेल ते चिन्ह सेवक करून टिकेलच असं सांगता येणार नाही आणि त्यावेळेस चिन्ह असो अथवा नसो निवडणुकीला सामोरं जायची तयारी ठेवली पाहिजे जिस ढंग से इन्होने हमारी चुनाव चिन्ह को फ्रीज कर दिया है वो क्या था सुधा सुनवाई तो होनी चाहिए कि नहीं बिना सुनवाई बिना जांच बिना छानबीन तो क्या चल रहा है देश में तो कहां देखे आशा से एक ही तो बचा है आश्चर्यजनक निर्णय है इंटेरियम है फाइनल नहीं है पर इंटेरियम में एक अंधेरी इसका जो बाय इलेक्शन है उसको लेकर आया है पर सरप्राइजिंग इसलिए है आश्चर्यजनक इसलिए है कि कहीं भी दोनों पक्ष के कैंडिडेट्स नहीं थे हमारे ही पक्ष के कैंडिडेट थे तो कॉन्फ्लिक्ट था ही नहीं हर बड़ी में ये निर्णय लिया गया है और आप इलेक्शन कमीशन का इतिहास देख लीजिए पोल सिंबल फ्रीज हो जाता है पार्टी सिंबल फ्रीज हो जाता है डिस्प्यूट के चलते पर पार्टी का नाम ही आप फ्रीज कर देंगे ये पहली बार सुना है मैंने तो आ, पर हम लोग सब शिवसैनिक इस निर्णय के बाद हम लोग और भी ज़्यादा हमने निर्णय लिया है कि ऐसे लोगों को जो सेंट्रल एजेंसीज का इस्तेमाल कर कर सेंट्रल पावर का इस्तेमाल कर कर धनबल का इस्तेमाल कर कर इस तरीके का काम कर रहे हैं कृत कर रहे हैं पाप कर रहे हैं उद्धव ठाकरे जी के शिवसेना ने सब खो दिया पहले हिंदुत्व फिर सरकार उसके बाद में सिंबल अब नाम भी गया और सबसे महत्व की बात कि महाराष्ट्र की जनता का विश्वास भी उद्धव ठाकरे की शिवसेना ने खो दिया आम आदमी पार्टी एंटी हिंदू राव एक्सप्लोडिंग विद दिल्ली मिनिस्टर राजेंद्र पाल गौतम हैज नाउ रिजाइन फ्रॉम द कैबिनेट फॉलोइंग इज कॉन्ट्रोवर्शियल ओथ विच इज पार्क मैसिव कॉन्ट्रोवर्सी आफ्टर टेंडरिंग हिज रेजिग्नेशन राजेंद्र हैज क्लियर्ड दैट आम आदमी पार्टी चीफ अरविंद केजरीवाल नॉर हिज पार्टी हैज एनीथिंग टू डू विद द इवेंट दैट हीज अटेंडेड इन फैक्ट द फॉर्मर मिनिस्टर अटेंडेड विशाल धाम दीक्षा समरोह इवेंट विच वॉज ऑर्गेनाइज बाय द बुद्धिस्ट सोसाइटी ऑफ इंडिया ऑन अक्टोबर फिफ्थ वेर ही एंड थाउजेंड ऑफ अदर्स वो प्रेजेंट एट दैट इवेंट टू कैन ओथ नॉट टू वर्शिप लॉर्ड राम लॉर्ड कृष्णा 
and other Hindu gods. Sources have told India today that Kejriwal, who is wooing the voters in Gujarat and eyeing the upcoming elections in the home state of Prime Minister Narendra Modi, now is facing angry, angry uh, citizens of Gujarat who are not very happy with this Ahmadi Party's involvement in this mass conversion drive of Delhi. Resignation of Rajendra Pal comes after BJP's continuous attacks on the Ahmadmi Party. The Saffron Party has called it an insult of Hindu gods and also filed a complaint against Rajendra. The party has also placed Kejriwal in a skull cap. Several posters there that's uh, donning the city where Kejriwal is shown in a skull cap, basically trying to project him as anti-Hindu. राजेंद्र पाल गौतम हमारे साथ हैं बातचीत करने के लिए दो पन्नों की चिट्ठी लिखकर उन्होंने अपने मंत्री पद से इस्तीफा दे दिया है क्या वजह है ये हम सीधे आपसे जानना चाहेंगे क्यों आपको इस्तीफा देना पड़ा मैंने इस्तीफा इसलिए दिया कि मैं आए दिन लगातार देख रहा हूँ और उससे हृदय छलनी हो जाता है हमारे समाज के लोगों की मूँच रखने पर हत्या की जा रही है मंदिर में चले गए मूर्ति छू दी उस पर हत्या की जा रही है घड़ा छू दिया उसमें निर्ममता से हत्या की जा रही है और कोई ना प्रधानमंत्री जी बोलते हैं ना गृहमंत्री जी बोलते हैं ना देश का कोई बड़ा नेता बोलता है आए दिन उत्पीड़न और ऊपर से जो हर साल अशोक विजय दशमी पर 14 अक्टूबर 1956 को जब डॉक्टर बाबा साहेब अम्बेडकर जी ने बुद्ध के धम की दीक्षा ली इसी जाति का तो उत्पीड़न भेदभाव ऊंचनी छुआछूत से मुक्त होने के लिए और पूरे समाज के लाखों न्यायों को दीक्षा दिलाई तो उन्होंने बाईस प्रतिज्ञाएं दिलवाई थी ये लेकिन बाईस प्रतिज्ञाओं को भारत सरकार ने खुद मोदी जी की सरकार के मंत्री थावरचंद गहलोत जब सामाजिक न्याय एवं अधिकारिता मंत्री थे उन्होंने डॉक्टर अंबेडकर लाइफ एंड स्पीचेस के अंदर वॉल्यूम सत्रह में कुछ छपाया अपने साइन से अपने सिग्नेचर से लेकिन आपने अपनी चिट्ठी में राजेंद्र जी को आपने अपनी चिट्ठी में जिक्र किया है कि निशाना बनाया जा रहा है आम आदमी पार्टी को और आपके नेता को निश्चित इससे मुझे दुख पहुँचा बहुत कि मेरे नेता का मेरी पार्टी का इससे कोई लेना देना नहीं है ये सामाजिक प्रोग्राम है बुद्धि बुद्धि सोसाइटी ऑफ इंडिया का और मिशन जय भीम का एक संयुक्त प्रोग्राम है और हजारों जगह पूरे देश में रोज हो रहा है आज भी हो रहा है लेकिन भाजपा आरोप लगा रही है कि हिंदुओं की जो भावना है उनको ठेस पहुंचा नहीं नहीं कहाँ एक शब्द बता दो उनकी ठेस पहुंचाने के लिए बोलाओ भाई मेरी कहाँ आस्था है मैं किसको मानूंगा किसको नहीं मानूंगा ये मेरा मतलब है मेरा मेरा मसला है मैं जाके किसी और को तो नहीं कह रहा मैं किसी के किसी के आस्था के ऊपर ठेस नहीं पहुँचा रहा किसी के खिलाफ एक शब्द नहीं बोल वडोदरा की जनता का गुस्सा गुजरात का आक्रोश और जिस प्रकार से उनको कल भागना पड़ा वडोदरा से उसका ये परिणाम है कि आज वापस आते ही दिल्ली तुरंत राजेंद्र पाल गौतम का इस्तीफा हुआ है मैं फिर से ये कहना चाहता हूँ कि ये गुजरात की जनता की जीत है ये हिंदू समाज की जीत है दिस इज नथिंग बट लास्ट मिनट अटेम टू सेल्वेज द सिचुएशन इन व्यू ऑफ द गुजरात इलेक्शन दिस वॉज अरविंद केजरीवाल प्रोजेक्ट दैट वेंट हॉरेबली रॉन्ग एंड राजेंद्र पाल वो स्कॉट ऑन कैमरा वायोलेटिंग द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन द ओथ he is under as uh, a minister he was seen as promoting enmity between uh, communities he was seen as uh, driving a wedge between uh, communities his entire oath was completely loaded against a particular community it was in very bad taste and clearly at this point in time arvind kejriwal could not have afforded it but the truth is that people like uh, rajendra pal are manifestations of what arvind kejriwal politics is all about and arvind kejriwal cannot um, distance himself from what rajendra pal has done ke bahut hi prasanta ke vishay hai ki ab wo unhone istifa de diya mantri ne hame aisa pratit hota hai ki mukhyamantri ne us cheez ko samjha aur unse istifa liya main delhi ke sarkar aur khas taur se मुख्यमंत्री अरविंद केजरीवाल जी को मैं बहुत बहुत धनाई धन्यवाद दूंगा बधाई दूंगा और मैं आशा व्यक्त करूंगा कि फिर भविष्य में इस प्रकार की कोई भी इनके पार्टी से हिंदू सनातन धर्म के खिलाफ आपत्तिजनक शब्द या आपत्तिजनक Let's now listen in to the controversial oath that was taken by Rajendra Pal Gautam the Aam Aadmi Party leader that's now led to his resignation Main Brahma Vishnu aur Mahesh ko नहीं मानूंगा नहीं मानूंगा और ना ही उनकी पूजा करूंगा ना ही उनकी पूजा करूंगा मैं राम और कृष्ण को राम और कृष्ण को ईश्वर नहीं मानूंगा ईश्वर नहीं मानूंगा और ना ही उनकी कभी पूजा करूंगा और ना ही कभी उनकी पूजा करूंगा मैं गौरी गणपति गौरी गणपति आदि हिंदू धर्म के हिंदू धर्म के किसी भी देवी देवताओं को किसी भी देवी देवताओं को नहीं मानूंगा नहीं मानूंगा और ना ही 
Now, a big political controversy has erupted in the southern state of Karnataka over renaming of Tipu Express as Wadiar Express. While the BJP hails this move, citing developmental works carried out by Wadiar, Wadiar dynasty in the former Mysuru kingdom, the opposition calling it a polarizing move just ahead of assembly elections in Karnataka. Let's take a quick look at this detailed report. <laughs> Express is now Wadiar Express. The railways has renamed the train that plies between Mysuru and Bengaluru as a tribute to the Mysuru royal family. The popular intercity express that connects the two cities in just two and a half hours was renamed after a request by BJP MP Pratap Simha. The Mysuru MP had written a letter to Railways Minister Ashwini Vaishnav a few months ago making the demand. The Wadiyas were incidentally dethroned by Tipu's father, Heather Ali. The renaming of the Tipu Express has snowballed into a political controversy in Karnataka. The BJP claims that the Wadiya dynasty has contributed to the development of a vast network of railways in the former Mysore Kingdom, transforming Mysuru into the modern state of Karnataka. See, this is a very good decision. Uh, which has really uh, been very well appreciated by people of Karnataka. It is really a pride and a honor to name uh, Wadair Express as well as Kuempe Express. It is our pride. Tipu is uh, converted more than lakh of people in Kurg and he killed uh, many Hindus. So that's why he is not a great man in the name of Wadair. That he is a Kannadiga. Tipu is not a Kannadiga. He is a uh, some Persian uh, language. And also, I got that our Chamra Chodier call in that is Mysore railway line. That did do that. It has a little dark layer. So, an end finally, he would air express name. Karna I got that. Santosh Tovish. However, opposition leaders have called the Narendra Modi government decision a polarizing move. जब संविधान बनाने वालों ने कॉन्स्टिट असेंबली के जिम्मेदारों ने उस पहली संविधान की किताब में टीपू सुल्तान की फोटो डाली तो भाजपा को से नफरत क्यों है जब तक टीपू जिंदा था अंग्रेज डरते थे आज बीजेपी टीपू से डर रही है क्यों डर रही है आप टीपू अगर आपको ट्रेन निकालना था एक और ट्रेन किसी और नाम से निकालते रीनेमिंग ऑफ टीपू एक्सप्रेस टू अडियर एक्सप्रेस इट रियली शोज अ स्मॉल heart and mind of this government who wants to create controversy. The entire people of Karnataka, I'm sure they understand the value of what Tipu Sultan has created. Tipu's descendants also slammed the decision. If the new train, whichever would have been given, there are a lot of trains would have been given in the name of Vadaya. I am not objecting it is given in the name of Vadaya, but my objection and my sentiment which has been hurted, removing Tipu Sultan, and renaming to Wadair is really hurted my sentiments. Renaming Tipu Express is just the tip of the iceberg as Tipu Sultan has always been a political flashpoint in Karnataka. From protesting against Tipu Jayanti celebrations to removing Tipu's lessons from the curriculum and replacing Savarkar posters with Tipu Sultan, BJP and Congress have had several tussles in the recent past. I have got all the respects for the Wadiyar family, the Maharajas of uh, Mysore province. But they should not have changed the name of Tipu Express, which has been given to the train. Instead of giving the name of Wadiyar to some other train. With elections approaching fast in Karnataka, Tipu Sultan will certainly be a poll agenda. Your report, India Today. Red Prime Minister Modi is on a three-day visit to Gujarat starting today. Prime Minister Narendra Modi arrived in Madhera and laid the foundation stone of several developmental projects worth 14,500 crore rupees. Modi's visit to Gujarat comes amid Ahmadi Party Supremo Arvind Kejriwal and Punjab Chief Minister Bhagwant Maan already hectically campaigning at the battleground state. On his first day of the visit, Prime Minister has laid the foundation stone of developmental projects worth 3,900 crores in Mehsana's Madhera. 
He also declared the village of Modera as India's first 24-7 solar-powered village. The first of its kind project realizes the Prime Minister's vision of solarization of the Sun Temple town of Modera. Prime Minister has also offered prayers at the Modeshwari Mata Temple, followed by attending a laser show at the Sun Temple in Modera. Prime Minister's visit, he's also set to visit Madhya Pradesh on this last day of his trip. India Today on Top of the Story. जरूरत की बिजली उपयोग करो और अतिरिक्त बिजली सरकार को बेच दो और इससे बिजली के बिल से भी छुटकारा मिलेगा इतना ही नहीं अब हम बिजली बेच करके कमाई करेंगे अब तक ये होता था कि सरकार बिजली पैदा करती थी और जनता खरीदती थी लेकिन मैं उस रास्ते पर चलने के लिए प्रतिबद्ध हूं मोढ़ेरा के लिए मैसाणा के लिए और पूरे नॉर्थ गुजरात के लिए विकास की नई ऊर्जा का संचार हुआ है हजारों करोड़ रुपए से अधिक के ये प्रोजेक्ट रोजगार के नए अवसर पैदा करेंगे किसानों और पशुपालकों की आय बढ़ाने में मदद करेंगे और इस पूरे क्षेत्र में हेरिटेज टूरिज्म से जुड़ी सुविधाओं को भी विस्तार देंगे पहले दुनिया मोढ़ेरा को सूर्य मंदिर की वजह से जानती थी लेकिन अब मोढ़ेरा के सूर्य मंदिर से प्रेरणा लेकर के मोढ़ेरा सूर्य ग्राम भी बन सकता है ये दोनों एक साथ दुनिया में पहचाने जाएंगे और मोढ़ेरा पर्यावरणवादियों के लिए दुनिया के मैप पर अपनी जगह बना लेगा दोस्तों On that note, it's a wrap on this edition of the Bulletin. For the news and updates, you could log on to indiatoday.in. You could also download our app for more. Stay tuned. Our India Today special on the other side. Everyone's busy finding what's trending. You're busy finding out why. India Today, for those who research before reacting. Download the India Today app now. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at arjthug.com. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. watching India Today. Justice, liberty, equality, the pillars that built India. A nation where everyone has dignity and opportunities to prosper. But today, over 75 years after independence, Dalits remain a community trapped for centuries by the caste system, languishing in a dismal state. Nearly 20% of India's population is Dalit.
Dalits still live in abject poverty, excluded on the margins, facing atrocities, toxic untouchability, and no opportunities for economic upliftment. The father of India's constitution, Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar, fought all his life for the upliftment of Dalits. In the past, many state and central governments have made big promises, but it has been nothing more than lip service. Basic human rights have still not been delivered. Dalits remain downtrodden and discriminated against. This shocking reality is a national shame. Few have dared to break the cage of caste discrimination until now. Friend to the downtrodden, upholding human rights and dignity, Championing a baker's India, KCR is showing India and the world how a revolution is sparked in Telangana through his path breaking scheme, Telangana Dalit Bandhu. Approximately 17,50,000 Dalit families call Telangana home, and now they are calling Telangana the land of opportunity. Thanks to Dalit Bandhu, launched in 2021 by the TRS government, a world-first scheme which will give each Dalit family an astounding financial boost of 10 lakh rupees. There are many more schemes along with this which are under implementation all over the state. But Dalit Bandhu is a specially designed program for the upliftment of the Dalit community. It has an unprecedented objective to uplift 17,50,000 Dalit households with a one-time capital grant of 10 lakh rupees per household, 100% subsidy with zero repayment, delivered via direct to beneficiary transfer with a dedicated Dalit Bandhu Scheme help desk and monitoring committee at village, mandal, district and state level and a 10% reservation for Dalits in profit generating schemes, government contracts and licenses. In addition to this, Telangana has another visionary program for Dalit students, residential schools and colleges, and Ambedkar Overseas Vidya Nidhi, a 20 lakh rupees overseas scholarship, giving them the most powerful tool for success, education. Huzurabad, 2021. The Telangana Dalit Bandhu pilot was launched. Telangana's Dalit Bandhu is a path-breaking scheme that places absolute trust in the beneficiary. Each household has complete freedom and flexibility to decide its business and how to grow their dreams. I am a pharmacy, sir. Then, after that, as a pharmacist, I have a lot of places. Now, we have a lot of Telangana government. We have a lot of business. 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 We have a lot of TRS government. Dalabandu skim apa di peti mana orang na orang ni no setel gawat ane kiri oka apa jenis tu create ishun sir. Households were identified as beneficiaries and the direct benefit transfer of 10 lakh rupees was made. Each family unit was free to decide how they wished to invest this 100% subsidy. It could be a single or multiple businesses. Multiple beneficiaries could pool their resources to build a bigger business. It could be in any sector of their choice. The sky was the limit. In no time, the stories of transformation began rolling in. These are just a small fraction of the 40,000 success stories that Telangana has empowered through the Dalit Bandhu scheme. In just one year, it has smashed records for any Dalit upliftment scheme in the country. Till date, the Dalit Bandhu scheme has been implemented in all 119 assembly constituencies in Telangana. Beneficiaries have achieved prosperity for their families. They have also created opportunity for their community by providing employment and revenue. The resounding success of the Dalit Bandhu scheme has energized the TRS government to accelerate its efforts. From 40,000 beneficiaries with an outlay of 4,441.8 crore rupees, now Telangana government has raised the Dalit Bandhu budget to reach about 2 lakh beneficiaries 
with an outlay of 17,700 crore rupees, making this the world's largest direct benefit scheme. Delta Mandu achin tarvata i padilakshala ne di mamul gandar ki opportunity radu. Di di purtiya government wal magu padilakshali chesi. Me istam na vyaparan ne bedko anje pesi annaram annaram wal magu inta adi ka puro gati kali. Me adi ka kunna me mu inta mandu ka dagara worker ka panje se wala puro owner ka unda galu tu nam. Never before has such a revolutionary scheme been designed to end caste discrimination. Where Dalits receive 100% opportunity along with 100% dignity. Dalita bandh padakam raaka mundu. Me mai the chala struggles face jaisam. Dalita bandh padakam kinda me me embroidery mission enchu kone pet kunam. Next kuna workune ni no fulfill aya lan kone. Y embroidery start jaisam sir. Ichna andu ko chala chala dhaniya vadal ke aise ar gari ki Telangana prabudhvan kuda me mento rona padi unnamu. Mukhranga sir ko unit bata ma. Ante 30 lakhs bati. वेहिकल अमेरिकन टूरी षाप बड़ी नाब चेसा इन ओनर अटे कंपनी ओनर फील चला हापी गा जीवनोपाधि मिशन ब्रतिके सर मैं मुगर पिछले वाल चुकू मे ब्रतकाले चाल कष्ट सर इन दलित बंधु द्वारा केसीआर गारक सर वाल इधर कल सर मिशन को सर मिशन For Telangana's leadership, it's not about breaking records, but about ensuring financial freedom for all. Each Dalit Bandhu grant of 10 lakh rupees has an inbuilt 10,000 rupees safety net, Dalita Rakshana Nidhi, to ensure. That all Dalit families get financial assistance from the fund at times of distress. To further strengthen this, Telangana government contributes additional 10,000 rupees, which is over and above each grant. A great safety net that has no parallel anywhere in the world. For the KCR government, this is more than just a financial benefit. If any beneficiary of Dalit Bandhu meets with fatal disease or accident, the family should not go through additional depression and hard times. They should remain protected. That is the true purpose of the special safety net designed as Dalita Rakshana Nithi. Yes, sir, sir, in the with the scheme this crowd of money, the Chala Gopavisham, sir, Malandi Valaki, Unga settle, Unga company with the established Gaul and Kunevala Kosum, the golden opportunities. Adega Kunda Dalitul and Samajan under Kitchenachupani on Tari, if you do the Vadamala. Under the fearless leadership of KCR, Dalits finally have a government that protects and defends them. Telangana inspires them to overcome oppression and empowers them to be bold so that each Dalit can move up in the world with head held high, creating their own success story, making Telangana shine and, in turn, India. You are watching India Today.
world's noisiest democracy, this you see here, is the noisiest democratic newsroom. And once a week, a bunch of us here get together to kick around and dissect and fight about the big headlines of the week. We're starting today's democratic newsroom with what else but the viral Rahul Yatra. Take a look. It rained down on Rahul Gandhi. Then he was tying his mother's shoelaces. All really evocative, powerful images that have gone viral in what is clearly a yatra that is full of images that are meant to portray Rahul Gandhi in one way or the other. Uh, the whole point, Preeti, of the Congress party saying Rahul is only a participant, I don't think, I, even the Congress people are laughing at that, obviously, because this is about Rahul Gandhi, this is about relaunching him, reshaping him, projecting him. But do you think it's doing what it's intended to do? I'm hoping that for the party's sake it is, because yeah. what has gone down in the recent past uh, says anything but that. But why do I think that this could be his one and only shot for resurrection and why I say that is because for the first time the organization bit of the party and leading the party in elections and as a face uh, or political face uh, is different. Why do I say that is for the first time you have the president elections where you've kept the organization bit away and at least for now because Rahul Gandhi kept talking about the vision he has for and India. And he hasn't said a word about He's the presidential not, yes, stuff. Yeah. That he has a vision for India. He has a vision for India. This is his only shot right mm. now. Every time I anchor I realize and describing those visuals I think it's incredible that Rahul Gandhi is on the ground and now Sonia Gandhi has joined in. Look at the support that Congress party has got on the ground. No, but is that stage? But, but I believe it's too little too late. I think the moment should have come about two too years Too late ago. for what? 2024? 2024 to begin with and also Congress to make its way. Maybe it can be What's five years point? later. What's, What's the point of these photo ops? It's not happening. What's well, the point of the these point, photo ops? The if they're natural ops, the or staged? The point of the photo ops, what I believe is that it's showing a leader, approachable, accessible, someone who's empathizing, but who's, sympathizing. My he's question showing, is... He's showing and those images speak for itself. My question yeah. is simple. That you're going about this entire photo op and it's not the first time he's done it. Jumped into the sea, he did push-ups, he went to schools, he was seen interacting with all these girls, taking selfies. Nothing new if you ask me what's happening right now. Because he did it then, what did he get out of it? Kerala elections, LDF came back. Tamil Nadu rode on the DMK. So my point is that while great, it makes for great social media content, grassroots level, the Congress still does nothing. You know, I'll tell you what the difference is. This time around, he's going to do it for 150 days straight. So for whether you like it, whether you hate but him. But it's a for social what, media campaign. No, no, let, me, let me finish. My point is, where is Rahul Gandhi? What is he doing for Gujarat? What is he doing for Himachal Pradesh? Even in Himachal Pradesh, they're nowhere. So great, what you're doing is great for no, you. Guys, party. that's my question. But why you why you why is the, I'll get more of it. It's true that this is the biggest sort of uh, yatra or campaign uh, in Rahul Gandhi's name that's happening. But I agree with Akshita that it's happened before. The relaunches of Rahul Gandhi have been happening over and over yeah. and over again for a long time. But now, this time, what is the message going out? If they're preaching to the converted, they're doing a great job. If they're trying to reach out to newer people, then they need to be in a difficult area. Uh, compare this to their rivals, the BJP. Where is the BJP president? He's going into constituencies where the BJP had lost. lost in the last elections. That is where they're spending more time. That is where they're trying to make inroads. Point two, that picture was truly iconic when it was raining and Rahul Gandhi was standing there and there were so many comparisons with Sharad Pawar that yep. this is Rahul Gandhi's Sharad Pawar point. moment. Hmm. Turning point of the elections. Hmm. What happened subsequently? A two-day break. There is a break in phase one, there's a break that in phase part -time two. Part-time politician and tag. That part-time politician no, I tag. Think I, that needs to I, go. I disagree here. I think it was a valid criticism. Why is he not going to Himachal or Gujarat? One thing the Congress realizes and should realize, it's not the BJP. So while Nadda might be going into new terrain and trying to mark new political territory, these guys can't think about doing that. They have to save what they have. They had 20 seats, Kerala, uh, in uh, the last general elections. A big, a big chunk. 18, yeah. uh, I think 19 or 18 went yeah. to the Congress, mm. right? Karnataka was a wipeout so for them. So this is about BJP, protecting what you the have. The BJP took Karnataka. So the number of days that they are spending in Karnataka, they want to make sure that they get that. Maharashtra, they are spending a sizable chunk in Maharashtra. When they come up, they know Uttar Pradesh, they've lost. Those 80 seats are not coming to them. They get three, they are, they, you know, that's good for them. If the flip side of that is, they are capitalizing on their strengths where they think they can make inroads, stick on to what they had and build a little more. Ooh, 150 days. 150 yeah. days, he will find himself yeah. in the, today he's tying his mother's shoelaces. Yeah, Yesterday yeah. he was standing in the rain. Yeah. 
whether you hate him, whether you like him, you will see his picture. He'll be talk of conversation. No, no, absolutely. There, there, you know, there's a, 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 there's a, there is a. But my point is, Rahul Gandhi versus Narendra Modi, it's a complete fail. But if it's about rejuvenating his own political Why career, that a complete fail? Shrugging off or shedding off that papu image, I think he's on the right. Why path. is that a complete fail? Because I, as a voter, would want to know. I'll tell you why. I know what Narendra Modi it's stands for. His attempt for. is a fail. I know. I know what fail. Narendra Modi or his ideology stands for. I still don't know what Rahul Gandhi stands for. You come to power with promise. What do I stand for? Not stand against BJP. What do I stand for? You're not never going to no, connect to the voter. I think he's the creating voter. that image. You're saying people of the masses. Yeah. 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 People of the masses. If you not making an impact, we wouldn't be talking about it over here. We wouldn't be discussing it. Whether it eventually translates into votes for him in the general elections, does he perform better in the upcoming state Let elections me, next in year? In defense of we'll in out. defense of the media, I have to say Rahul Gandhi has always made news. You, we can argue till kingdom come about why he makes news, but there has never been a point where the media has ignored Rahul That's Gandhi. That's true. But, but just to come to Karnataka for a moment, Nabila, he's in he's in our state. Right now, the rain happened there, the shoelaces happened there, the break happened there in Kurg also, lovely place I hear. <laughs> but does that talk to people of Karnataka? Because Karnataka is being seen as the one state so, where yeah, the Congress has a chance. Yeah, so, Shiv, in, in 2018, I think the works were different. There was, uh, there was a sentiment towards the BJP, leaning towards the BJP. And again, when it comes to Modi, the aura unmatchable. I'd say this time and again, there's no match to anyone in the Congress versus Prime Minister Modi. This year's assembly elections, it seems there's some level of anti-incumbency. Yeah, pastor, that very yeah. controversial yeah. pastor that, that oh, no, uh, you know, yeah, re religious leader that he met. A religious leader who's very critical of the way Hindus live in our country or the way in I think that is honestly India. not a letdown of Rahul but his team. Maybe they didn't do the right kind of research and I, and I think they've admitted that. My said only it was a point massive is, mistake. the Congress, in whichever state it does well, is also because it has a very strong regional leadership. So does that mean that it's not really the Rahul effect? What the Congress has done is gone back to textbook campaigning. Every time any leader has taken up Padhyatra, the kind that it they are... Uh, you know, he's embarked on right now, it's given them dividends. Who's behind this yatra? Dig Vijay Singh. Dig Vijay Singh. Singh came back with a thumping majority at the back of a similar yatra, no, which no, no. he carried out uh, ja in Madhya Pradesh. Jagan Mohan Reddy. Jagan Mohan Reddy. Name it. There are, you know, you, you go back. You know, history stands testimony to the political dividends uh, or kickbacks that Padhyatra can ha. get you. May I remind all of us here that the Karnataka elections are still a few months away. If they summoning DK now, imagine what's going to happen closer to the election. <laughs> so let's wait for that. Karnataka is going to be that one big exciting fight that everyone's looking forward to and like Preeti said 150 days and we're just getting started India today will never ignore Rahul Gandhi everyone's got a favorite Sena ever since that big political coup with Ekna Chinde deposing Udhav Thakre well two big rallies on Dashera lots of color lots of muscle flexing so who really won or did anyone win at all and where do things lie with Bal Thakre's Shiv Sena Two big bang Dashera rallies in Mumbai, one by Udhav Thakre and one by Chief Minister of Maharashtra, Eknath Shinde. We've been talking about it because India Today was the first to break, remember, a few weeks ago, the entire break in the original Shiv Sena. Polomi was there in Mumbai, Polomi. What did you think about yesterday's? Big war of the rallies. You look at the drone shots from Shivaji Park, you look at the drone shots from BKC MMRDA grounds, it looks like huge crowds. Mumbai police numbers are Udhav got 1 lakh and Shinde got 2 lakh, is mm. what they're saying. And it's the mm. elections which will prove who exactly... At the beginning of November. Uh, well, so yes, yeah. 3rd of November is one by-election, it's Andheri East. So this contest is going to be extremely important. And then subsequently the civic body elections in Mumbai in February next year. Are these Dashera rallies considered so important as far as muscle flexing oh, is concerned? So, I, Udhav Thakre you, isn't this a, a long legacy? No, and this is the, actually the Bala Sahib Thakre. Thakre. Yeah, Thakre. Bala Sahib Thakre. 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 Right from 1966. You know, he's done it right there. All these three netas are speaking the same language. I mean, yesterday also Udhav Thakre is speaking Pakistan, Kashmir, Hindutva, Ekna Chinde, BJP. These three parties, my point is, what are they fighting about? No, Eventually, but that's where it becomes very yeah, interesting. That, so, They're other parties... They're fighting about power. That's the whole point, <laughs> but it's the same it ideology. When you in talk fact, about ideology, it's yeah. the same. It's No, but now the ideology is very different. How? I'll tell you how. They're talking about Gaddar. They're huh? talking about Katappa. Huh? Who yeah. stabbed who in the back? Who's the, the, actually the betrayer? So, you know, and who's the real inheritor? This right. entire fight is who's the real Shiv Sena? Who's the inheritor can I, can of Bala Sahib Thakre's um, legacy? What's happening the right real now? You have a pro-BJP pro Sena and anti-BJP Sena. You have Thakre Sena saying we won't be BJP servants. We will not, we will not buckle. They but, had a video of Bala Sahib Thakre from 
uh, previously video. an old video where he said that we have joined hands with the BJP. It's not because we're looking after, we are looking for power or whatever, but we've categorically stated to them, Desh bhar mein aapko rule karna hai, aap rule kar liye. Maharashtra amara mm -hmm. Can I just so, say So, Udhav Thakre wanting to stay on as Chief Minister, Shiv Sena keeping that seat and not yielding power to the BJP in 2019, that was Bala Sahib's wish. Mm -hmm. You know, is from, what Udhav Thakre faction is From everything that's happening in Maharashtra, i just like to say that this is exactly what happened in Tamil Nadu yeah. with the mm -hmm. AI ADMK. Oh. And today, and still you, going look on. At, today no, you, you look know, at what's happening with the AI ADMK. Both sides, to me, uh, whether it's the EPS, OPS faction or the TTV, Sashikala faction and this Jailalita legacy fight. Andheri East by polls will be a litmus test of exactly that. And why do I feel somewhere down the line, even if the election commission doesn't come up with one, what happens to the symbol, in all probabilities, there'll be a freeze on the symbol. It's advantage Uddhav because who Uddhav is going on to the electoral battlefield as my own candidate. Just, and he's facing what the BJP. That so what he is going to do is, he's going to go down and he's going to say, this is the Shiv Sena, you have a Shiv Senek, this man is a BJP, but, backed by the Shiv Sena. But let me just tell that, why I drew the parallel? The Shinde yes. camp narrative, which basically says that we were always natural allies, allies to, the to the BJP. The point remains, Uddhav Thakre claims inheritance by birth. Iknat Shinde says Legacy. it's talent, it is work, it is the Shiv Sena and he says, when I give my power to whoever it goes to, the inheritor will become my son not dynasty and, not, but legacy. and not dynasty Shiv Sena, and legacy. That why no, but no, also what Shiv Sena? Shiv Sena is Bala Sahib Thakre. Bala Sahib Thakre in Shivaji Park Shiv gave Sena, the legacy to his own son. But, but that Shiv legacy Sena. is not Sorry, to be inherited. Did, it's right? hard work. So did, it's the Marathi Asmita. It is not inherited father to son. Udav Thakre to have gone with NCP Congress what is was in itself questioning the card. The card of course was taken by surprise that this does not match our ideology. We're also pretending like there are no Shiv Sena with the Shinde faction. True. That's not true. I was just about to say that there's... Hello, I mean, there are, there are agree. lacks of Shiv like Sainiks who are on lacks. the Shinde yeah. faction. When it's not like all the Sainiks are with Udav. And when you're in power, power, you are the chief minister. Yeah. You, will, yeah. you, you will have the entire machinery and the administration with you. No, but then and when people you speak about sympathy, sympathy factor for Udav Thakre, he might have sympathy among the masses, but his own MLAs don't believe in him anymore, it appears. For the kind of exodus that's happened, one really wonders what's gone so wrong. Udav Thakre, why didn't he have that kind of support? Even in the most the idea of the basic numbers. numbers. Did he take they it for granted? Did he assume what, what that I'm the son? One Sena will always be my name. Which he's now talking about. Then. If you're with BJP, you endorse Hindutva. If you're not, you don't. No, it's simple. Would Bala Sahib Thakre ever have allied with the Congress and NC? Well, yes. In his last interview, Bala Sahib Thakre did say that they don't, he doesn't want and to get anywhere near the Bharatiya Janata Party. Yes, it was. But the dynamics were changing. In the last leg of Bala Sahib Thakre, there have been multiple interviews where he's been open. And he said that he would not touch BJP with the barge. But, but and I would think, and I would think, side is my question. I would think for Uddhav Thakre at that point of time, Uddhav Thakre, there were a lot of negatives. He never attended any meeting. He had absolutely no contact with his MLAs. I would reckon Polomi will, you know, will field for that. But ultimately, the Shiv Sena breaking up with the BJP, it's a regional party. The BJP BJP would have taken over the Shiv Sena was the fear, I would reckon. So and that just, was one of the main reasons. Everyone's talking about, the Sena talking about the Sena camps. Nobody's talking about BJP, the mastermind no, behind the whole coup. That you know the reason to I drew the parallel to between Tamil Nadu and Maharashtra is because at the end of the day, it hurt the AIATMK the most, right? And my question is that that all of this, while you're seeing all of this bickering and muscle flexing, etc., perhaps for the headlines. In all, as far as the masses are concerned, would they have completely lost faith in this party and does it mean advantage for someone else? As far as the Shiv Seniks are concerned, there is one aspect that is that is being overlooked and Shiv Seniks are talking about their future. Does their future lie with Uddhav Thakre passing on the mantle to Aditya Thakre or does the mantle go to Shiv Seniks who are actually fighting on the streets in Mumbai, in Thane, in other parts of Maharashtra. Okay. All the people who've actually fought at the grassroots level to rise. See. And Iknat Shinde, according to the other faction, symbolizes the Shiv Seniks moving forward and not the dynasty. Since the coup took place, there's been a lot of power play. There's been a lot of... Uh, uh, flux, transfer of, uh, you know, MLAs and leaders between one side and the other. Yesterday was the first big opportunity since that coup to actually uh, power project on, you know, who the real Dada is because obviously that kind of thing really washes, especially before, like Preeti said, a crucial bipole and then the big BMC elections. But who's going to own that bow and arrow symbol is, in my view, going to be that first big bang on the drum over who owns the Shiv Sena identity. Whether someone can ever claim to have Bal Thakre's legacy remains mm. to be seen. 
this is very much a story that's unfolding. It's not over yet. And remember, we're happy to bring you, the viewer, into our democratic newsroom every single week. And our final act, how can it not be about film? This time, it's about Adi Purush, Ram, Ravan, Sita, and the big war over this new film. Take a look. There's a genre called So Bad It's Good in Bollywood and we're all very familiar with it. Well, the latest entrant into that hopeful genre is a movie called Adi Purush. Except it isn't just any other movie. It's actually a retelling, a reimagination of the Ramayan and it has exploded in India's media and popular imagination because of the depiction of Ravana, Hanuman and in some quarters also Sita. It's become a big talking point. There's been a lot of sentiments hurt, which is the usual thing these days. Gaurav, starting with you, since you've been doing shows about it, talking about it, being trolled about it, tweeted about it, what do you think? I think um, the Hindi film industry by and large is very insensitive when it comes to concerns uh, of followers of the Hindu religion. The way they mock uh, people who follow the Hindu religion, it's now been perfected into a fine art. And you see this even in Adi Purush because the depiction of Maryada Purushottam, Sri Ram is very decent. The depiction of Ravad, uh, as several people say, he looks more like Alauddin Khilji. He looks more like Babar or Temur. He doesn't look like Ravad according to popular perception. Uh, let's go back to what Valmiki wrote about Ravan. The only definition in terms of physicality that Valmiki defined Ravan of is a broad chest and angry. This was the depiction of what Valmiki defined of Ravan. Now, we might say, oh, he looks like Alauddin Khilji. We don't know what Ravan looked because like. Was it was the definition. Exactly. It was the definition. Okay, so. We don't have a comparison. So Ramanand yes. Sagar, Ramanand Sagar's definition it's of Ramayan was what we grew up on. Yes. Does that make it the real McCoy, the real gig? No, it's open to interpretation. No His Ravan can be no, different no, than your Ravan. Preeti is absolutely right. There is no comparison yardstick over here, right? Everyone feels that that's what Ravan is. That's what Ram looks like. He's absolutely right. Maybe your generation only saw Ramanand Sagar. Why I raised the issue was only because of the controversy around Islamization of the entire film. So why do you think it's Islamicized? Because he's wearing a surma? Is that why he looks like Khilji? Is that why he looks like a Muslim and that's why it's Islamicized? I don't understand how your sentiments are getting so hurt by the way Ravan looks in this film. You've only seen a teaser. You've not seen is the entire film. Is it because it's Saif playing it? The fact is Saif is Muslim. Saif named his son Taimur. Saif is wearing surma. Saif is playing Ravan. We have become we are so Saif very is scared. on board a pushpak viman that looks like a chamgadar. True. Really? In your view, it's it's eventually the the uh, Muslim community. If you if you say anything Can about Allah or Prophet Muhammad, then there's outrage. I disagree with that outrage, and I'm saying that to you. The Hindi film industry for long has followed an agenda, and that agenda. People are saying enough is enough. Why is so these suspicious? Filming? Once it's happenstance, twice it's coincidence, third time is enemy action. Here we watched it n number of times and only with Hindus, not with anyone else. This outrage was never there in the past. Why, why has it come in, in maybe the last few years? Why were Hindu sentiments not hurt as much? And if it was, why was there not outrage? There was no outrage then. And imagine how long has it been pent up. In my personal view, when a censor board in a democratic country clears something, that should be enough. Should exactly. It's law of the okay. land and not yeah, sentiment. That, that's my point of view. That's my the, point. That's my point of view, is if the fact yeah. You know, all of us can sit here and discuss the film to Kingdom Come. But yes, where the problem lies is when a deputy chief minister of Uttar Pradesh says this film will be problematic to release in Uttar Pradesh. When the home minister of Madhya Pradesh comes in and says the same, that's where it's problematic because then they don't respect the institution which and is the MLA, censor board. MLA from Maharashtra. Pooja, what do you think? Allow, how can a movie of this stature not be expecting at a point like this that it will generate debate and controversy? Yeah. Did it want that? That is my point and I think that's exactly what's happening. And maybe happening. people who are hurt by it are falling into the We'll go and watch trap. it. We'll go and watch it. It's happening only too frequently and it's happening only in one direction. And it is for the film industry. That, that's a figment of it your is, imagination. That may be okay. your perception. No, I think democratic right not to go yes, and watch go. the film. Democratic don't watch it. We'll Absolutely. Watch it. I hope nobody Pooja wants to watch it out of curiosity. I probably just don't like the VFX. Nobody... They're so bad. Yeah, I don't want to watch it. I, I, I tell you, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why I'm slightly uh, on the edge here. The reason is I have just seen a film being put down so badly. The film that I connected with, I was very hopeful about, which was 
great was Kashmir Files and I saw how this full-blown ecosystem attacked it from the one word go. And that's why I realized that what Gaurav is saying is also a reaction similar to that. That if you do it to films like that, we'll also speak up, we'll also find flaws. Given the trailer, I have no great hopes from it. Just to bring this, cool this down a little bit and tell everyone that I tweeted and the thing that I got most attacked for is by tweeting that I have made better things on Microsoft Paint than the VFX. True. I don't know if I'll be watching it. I don't watch most films. Uh, uh, maybe if Gaurav agrees to go, I'll go with him or maybe all of us can go together and have a good time watching it. But do let us know what you think. This is the Democratic Newsroom. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Kerala public health. All political parties travelling from different parts. Armed with facts. Looking at political facts. She takes the news by its horns. Do you think the future of these students are not hampered? Fierce, bold and direct. Setting the tone for the bigger stories. From every corner and every angle. Expect nothing but the unfiltered truth. News first, niceties later. Watch me Nabila Jamal on India Today. Russia is using Iranian drones to attack Ukraine. Russia hit multiple targets using these Iranian-supplied Shahid-136 or also known as Kamikaze drones. Ukrainian forces confirmed that Russia has been using Shahid drones to attack their territories. In a tweet, they shared that they have destroyed six Shahid-136 drones. But what are the features of these Kamikaze drones? At its core, Shahid-136 is a loitering munition designed to neutralize ground targets at range. It has been in service since 2021. The fuselage is centralized and blends into the wings, creating an elegant shape. The drone is 3.5 meters long with a wingspan of 2.5 meters. It flies at over 185 kilometers per hour and weighs about 200 kgs. The aircraft is launched nearly horizontally at a slight upward angle and is assisted in the initial phase of flight by rocket launch assistance. The entire unit can be mounted on the back of any military or commercial truck enabling mobile hit-and-run operations that can thwart countermeasures. The Shahid-136 is an evolutionary addition for Iran. It can now rely on its own military industrial capabilities. As per the reports, the drone was used in 2020 during the Yemeni civil war. And recently, it was used by Russia against Ukraine. Watching India Today. You're watching India Today. I'm Nabila Jamal. Let's take you through the top news. The headlines first. Prime Minister Modi in pole bound Gujarat addresses massive rally in Madeira. Prime Minister's Vikas pitch to Gujarat voters. Madeira ke liye, Maisana ke liye. और पूरे नॉर्थ गुजरात के लिए 
विकास की नई ऊर्जा का संचार हुआ है केजरीवाल्स मिनिस्टर क्विथ समेत राव ओवर एंटी हिंदू ओथ राजेंद्र पाल गौतम हु राम कृष्णा एज फॉल्स गॉड्स नाउ हेज क्विट द आम आदमी पार्टी एज केजरीवाल फेस इज बैकलैश इन पोल बाउंड गुजरात BJP Congress slam Kejriwal Man's chartered flight and the chopper journey Congress calls this Kejriwal's idea of aam aadmi while BJP says joy ride spent on taxpayers money Ekna Chinde of the Thakri camps now in a huddle after election commission freezes the bow and arrow symbol sources claim that Trishul the rising sun and Mashal are being explored by the Udav camp as new symbols for the party Yeah, my minister, uh, the chief uh, OAC wades into Tipu showdown, claims that Tipu has irked BJP because he has waged wars against the British. Says the BJP will never be able to erase Tipu's legacy from India. All right, now in a big blow to Udav Thakre's legacy claim, the Election Commission has seized the party's symbol. Udav Thakre's faction of the Shiv Sena has now submitted a letter to the Election Commission regarding interim symbol and the party's name for upcoming bipoles. Udav Thakre's faction has picked three symbols for the party, which involve the Trishul or the Rising Sun or Mashal. They want one of the three, while. These three names that they've picked for the party include Shiv Sena Bala Saheb Thakre, Shiv Sena Udav Thakre, and Shiv Sena Prabodhankar Thakre. Now, Udav Thakre has come down heavily on the Shinde camp and asked him not to use Bala Saheb's name in his party. Meanwhile, Shinde camp likely to object to Udav camp symbol suggestions. According to both these factions, they will have to choose from available options of the Election Commission of India's website in 18 if in 1989. Sena had in fact demanded the tiger symbol at that point and the election commission had denied it because it was not part of their website uh, options that were available the camp now both the camps yet to decide on the party symbol as well as the name the faction led by chief minister eknath shinde will be submitting their letter to the election commission by 1 pm monday morning Ma- monday afternoon me aple sarvan hes sangtoy ki kal nivadnuk ayogani to aadesh aplyala dilya nantar अपन तत्काल तीन चिन्ह आदेशानुसार तीन चिन्ह दिल्ली है आता हि चिन्ह मैं अपने समझ दाखो तो एक है त्रिशूल दुसर है उगवता सूर्य तीसरा है धगधगती मशाल तीन नाव सुधा अपन तत्पुर का वेड़ा का होना पे निवूक आयोग दिल्ली है तथल पैल नाव है शिवसेना बालासाहब ठाकरे दुसर नाव है शिवसेना बालासाहब प्रबोधनकार ठाकरे तीसर है शिवसेना उद्धव बालासाहब ठाकरे मेरा अजिबा आश्चर्य खाची होती हल्दी निर्णय खुद देते मेरा महती नहीं निर्णय गुणवत्ते जी खाची हल्दी देता मन जिस ढंग से इन्होंने हमारी चुनाव चिन्ह को फ्रीज कर दिया है वो क्या था सुधा सुनवाई तो होनी चाहिए कि नहीं बिना सुनवाई बिना जांच बिना छानबीन तो क्या चल रहा है देश में तो कहा देखे आशा से एक ही तो बचा है 
Aam Aadmi Party anti-Hindu row exploding with the Delhi Minister Rajendra Pal Gautam has now resigned from the cabinet following his controversial oath which has sparked massive controversy. After tendering his resignation, Rajendra has cleared that Aam Aadmi Party chief Arvind Kejriwal nor his party has anything to do with the event that he has attended. In fact, the former minister attended Vishal Dhamdiksha Samroh event which was organized by the Buddhist Society of India on October 5th where he and thousands of others who were present at that event took an oath not to worship Lord Ram, Lord Krishna and other Hindu gods. Sources have told India today that Kejriwal who is wooing the voters in Gujarat and eyeing the upcoming elections in the home state of Prime Minister Narendra Modi now is facing angry, angry uh, citizens of Gujarat who are not very happy with this Ahmadi party's involvement in this mass conversion drive Delhi. Resignation of Rajendra Pal comes after BJP's continuous attacks on the Ahmadi party. The Saffron party has called it an insult of Hindu gods and also filed a complaint against Rajendra. The party has also placed Kejriwal in a skull cap. Several posters there that's uh, donning the city where Kejriwal is shown in a skull cap, basically trying to project him as anti-Hindu. राजेंद्र पाल गौतम हमारे साथ हैं बातचीत करने के लिए दो पन्नों की चिट्ठी लिखकर उन्होंने अपने मंत्री पद से इस्तीफा दे दिया है क्या वजह है ये हम सीधे आपसे जानना चाहेंगे क्यों आपको इस्तीफा देना पड़ा मैंने इस्तीफा इसलिए दिया कि मैं आए दिन लगातार देख रहा हूँ और उससे हृदय छलनी हो जाता है हमारे समाज के लोगों की मूँच रखने पर हत्या की जा रही है मंदिर में चले गए मूर्ति छू दी उस पर हत्या की जा रही है घड़ा छू दिया उसमें निर्ममता से हत्या की जा रही है और कोई ना प्रधानमंत्री जी बोलते हैं ना गृहमंत्री जी बोलते हैं ना देश का कोई बड़ा नेता बोलता है आए दिन उत्पीड़न और ऊपर से जो हर साल अशोक विजय दशमी पर 14 अक्टूबर 1956 को जब डॉक्टर बाबा साहेब अम्बेडकर जी ने बुद्ध के धम की दीक्षा ली इसी जाति का तो उत्पीड़न भेदभाव ऊंचनी छुआछूत से मुक्त होने के लिए और पूरे समाज के लाखों न्यायियों को दीक्षा दिलाई तो उन्होंने बाईस प्रतिज्ञाएं दिलवाई थी ये लेकिन बाईस प्रतिज्ञाओं को भारत सरकार ने खुद मोदी जी की सरकार के मंत्री थावरचंद गहलोत जब सामाजिक न्याय एवं अधिकारिता मंत्री थे उन्होंने डॉक्टर अंबेडकर लाइफ एंड स्पीचेस के अंदर वॉल्यूम सत्रह में कुछ छपाया अपने साइन से अपने सिग्नेचर से लेकिन आपने अपनी चिट्ठी में राजेंद्र जी को आपने अपनी चिट्ठी में जिक्र किया है कि निशाना बनाया जा रहा है आम आदमी पार्टी को और आपके नेता को निश्चित इससे मुझे दुख पहुँचा है बहुत कि मेरे नेता का मेरी पार्टी का इससे कोई लेना देना नहीं है ये सामाजिक प्रोग्राम है बुद्धि बुद्धि सोसाइटी ऑफ इंडिया का और मिशन जय भीम का एक संयुक्त प्रोग्राम है और हजारों जगह पूरे देश में रोज हो रहा है आज भी हो रहा है लेकिन भाजपा आरोप लगा रही है कि हिंदुओं की जो भावना है उनको ठेस पहुंचा है नहीं नहीं कहा एक शब्द बता दो उनकी ठेस पहुंचाने के लिए बोलाओ भाई मेरी कहाँ आस्था है मैं किसको मानूंगा किसको नहीं मानूंगा ये मेरा मतलब है मेरा मेरा मसला है मैं जाके किसी और को तो नहीं कह रहा मैं किसी के किसी के आस्था के ऊपर ठेस नहीं पहुँचा रहा किसी के खिलाफ एक शब्द नहीं बोल रहा वडोदरा की जनता का गुस्सा गुजरात का आक्रोश और जिस प्रकार से उनको कल भागना पड़ा वडोदरा से उसका ये परिणाम है कि आज वापस आते ही दिल्ली तुरंत राजेंद्र पाल गौतम का इस्तीफा हुआ है मैं फिर से ये कहना चाहता हूँ कि ये गुजरात की जनता की जीत है ये हिंदू समाज की जीत है दिस इज नथिंग बट लास्ट मिनट अटेम्प्ट टू सेल्वेज द सिचुएशन इन व्यू ऑफ द गुजरात इलेक्शन दिस वॉज अरविंद केजरीवाल प्रोजेक्ट दैट वेंट हॉरेबली रॉन्ग एंड राजेंद्र पाल वो स्कॉट ऑन कैमरा वायोलेटिंग द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन द ओथ he is under as uh, a minister he was seen as promoting enmity between uh, communities he was seen as uh, driving a wedge between uh, communities his entire oath was completely loaded against a particular community it was in very bad taste and clearly at this point in time arvind kejriwal could not have afforded it but the truth is that people like uh, rajendra pal are manifestations of what arvind kejriwal politics is all about and arvind kejriwal cannot uh, distance himself from what rajendra pal has done ke bahut hi prasanta ke vishay hai ki ab wo unhone istifa de diya mantri ne hame aisa pratit hota hai ki mukhyamantri ne us cheez ko samjha aur unse istifa liya main delhi ke sarkar aur khas taur se mukhyamantri arvind kejriwal ji ko main bahut bahut dhanai dhanyawad dunga badhai dunga aur main aasa vyakt karunga ki phir bhavishya mein is prakar ki koi bhi इनके पार्टी से हिंदू सनातन धर्म के खिलाफ आपत्तिजनक शब्द या आपत्तिजनक Let's now listen in to the controversial oath that was taken by Rajendra Pal Gautam the Aam Aadmi Party leader that's now led to his resignation Main Brahma Vishnu aur Mahesh ko Brahma Vishnu aur Mahesh ko kabhi Ishwar nahi manunga kabhi Ishwar nahi manunga aur na hi unki pooja karunga na hi unki pooja karunga main 
राम और कृष्ण को राम और कृष्ण को ईश्वर नहीं मानूंगा ईश्वर नहीं मानूंगा और ना ही उनकी कभी पूजा करूंगा मैं गौरी गणपति आदि हिंदू धर्म के हिंदू धर्म के किसी भी देवी देवताओं को नहीं मानूंगा और ना ही उनकी पूजा करूंगा Now, big political controversy has erupted in the southern state of Karnataka over renaming of Tipu Express as Wadiar Express. While the BJP hails this move, citing developmental works carried out by Wadiar, Wadiar dynasty in the former Mysuru kingdom, the opposition calling it a polarizing move just ahead of assembly elections in Karnataka. Let's take a quick look at this detailed report. <laughs> Express is now Wadiar Express. The railways has renamed the train that plies between Mysuru and Bengaluru as a tribute to the Mysuru royal family. The popular intercity express that connects the two cities in just two and a half hours was renamed after a request by BJP MP Pratap Simha. The Mysuru MP had written a letter to Railways Minister Ashwini Vaishnav a few months ago making the demand. The Wadiyas were incidentally dethroned by Tipu's father, Heather Ali. The renaming of the Tipu Express has snowballed into a political controversy in Karnataka. The BJP claims that the Wadiyar dynasty has contributed to the development of a vast network of railways in the former Mysore Kingdom, transforming Mysuru into the modern state of Karnataka. See, this is a very good decision. Uh, which has really uh, been very well appreciated by people of Karnataka. It is really a pride and a honor to name uh, Wadair Express as well as Kuempe Express. It is our pride. Tipu is uh, converted more than lack of people in Kurg, and he killed uh, many Hindus. So that's why he is not a great man in the name of Wadair. That he is a Kannadiga. Tipu is not a Kannadiga. He is a uh, some Persian uh, language. Can do show agate nam chamra to dear call in dhane illi Mysore railway line tandit do anta itihas le daakle agate. So an end nali Wadiar Express naam karna agate. Sant do show agate. However, opposition leaders have called the Narendra Modi government decision a polarizing move. जब संविधान बनाने वालों ने कॉन्स्टेंट असेंबली के जिम्मेदारों ने उस पहली संविधान की किताब में टीपू सुल्तान की फोटो डाली तो भाजपा को से नफरत क्यों है जब तक टीपू जिंदा था अंग्रेज डरते थे आज बीजेपी टीपू से डर रही है क्यों डर रही है आप टीपू अगर आपको ट्रेन निकालना था एक और ट्रेन किसी और नाम पर निकालते रीनेमिंग ऑफ टीपू एक्सप्रेस टू अडियर एक्सप्रेस इट रियली शोज अमॉल heart and mind of this government who wants to create controversy the entire people of karnataka i'm sure they understand the value of what tipu sultan has created tipu's descendants also slammed the decision if the new train whichever would have been given there are a lot of trains would have been given in the name of padaya i am not objecting it is they they are given in the name of padaya but my objection and my sentiment which has been hurted removing tipu sultan and renaming to wadair is really hurted my sentiments renaming tipu express is just the tip of the iceberg as tipu sultan has always been a political flashpoint in karnataka from protesting against tipu jayanti celebrations to removing tipu's lessons from the curriculum and replacing savarkar posters with tipu sultan bjp and congress have had several tussles in the recent past I have got all the respects for the Wadiyar family, the Maharajas of uh, Mysore province. But they should not have changed the name of Tipu Express, which has been given to the train. Instead of giving the name of Wadiyar to some other train. With elections approaching fast in Karnataka, Tipu Sultan will certainly be a poll agenda. Your report India Today. 
Now, Veer Savarkar's row explodes in Maharashtra a day after Congress MP Rahul Gandhi has sparked row by commenting against Veer Savarkar. BJP has held a Jyote Baro protest against Rahul Gandhi in Mumbai. The agitated protesters have demanded an apology from the Congress MP. Here's more. The Savarkar slugfest is back. Congress leader Rahul Gandhi, who is in Karnataka for Bharat Jodo Yatra, has reignited the Savarkar Rao. Countering BJP's remarks that Jawaharlal Nehru was grandfather of India's partition, Rahul Gandhi had launched a scathing attack on RSS and its ideologue when Ayak Damodar Savarkar. The RSS was helping the British. Savarkar used to get a stipend from the British. These are historical facts. And these are not facts that the BJP can hide. BJP has hit back at Rahul Gandhi and Congress's ally Udav Sena for Congress's attack at freedom fighter and Hindutva ideologue Savarkar. Maharashtra BJP unit also held a Jute Maro protest against Rahul Gandhi and Udav Thakre in Mumbai. The kind of derogatory remarks made by Mr. Rahul Gandhi that is deplorable is appalling and he should apologize. BJP workers also held posters of Udav Thakre with black patch on his eyes and mouth questioning his silence over Rahul's remarks. He's not criticizing Mr. Rahul Gandhi was the problem. He abandoned Hindutva. He compromised with ideology of late Balasab Thakre. Following the protest, Udav Sena loyalist and MLC Manisha Kande also slammed Rahul Gandhi's remarks, demanding an apology. We condemn this statement from Rahul Gandhi and I think that this statement from him was absolutely uncalled for. When this is a Bharata Jodo Yatra, uh, there was no necessity of bringing Swatantri Vir Savarkar into picture. However, several political leaders backed Rahul Gandhi's remarks saying RSS and Savarkar never took part in the freedom struggle. RSS supported British Raj, that is 100% true. But whether he would take money or all these things, it is his information, I have not. We seriously know the Savarkar works for the Britishers. Uske vipri jo unhone ilzam lagaya hai ki ye log angrezo ke agent the. भारत छोड़ो का जब नारा महात्मा गांधी ने दिया था तो उसका आरएसएस ने विरोध किया था अगर इनके नेता होते तो इन जगहों पर या उनकी मूर्ति बनती लेकिन कभी उन्होंने ऐसा कोई काम ही नहीं किया जिसमें उनकी मूर्ति बन सके मीनवाइल इन नेबरिंग कर्नाटका अ हॉट बेड ऑफ सावरकर कंट्रोवर्सी द मुस्लिम यूनाइटेड फोरम रिक्वेस्टेड डिस्ट्रिक्ट अथॉरिटीज नॉट टू नेम अ सर्कल आफ्टर वी सावरकर इन द कोस्टल टाउन ऑफ मंगलुरु साइटिंग कम्युनल टेंशंस your report india today the wrath of flood continues in uttar pradesh affecting more than 200 villages of balrampur district and forcing vehicles to stand in long queues at the national highway 730 here's a quick look Rain wreaks havoc. Roads inundated. Cars submerged in water. Commuters wade through waterlogged roads. Incessant rain for the last three days has brought massive floods in the Tarai regions of Uttar Pradesh. Floods have submerged half a dozen districts of UP, inundating hundreds of villages and throwing life out of gear. The rivers flowing in the Tarai region have been swelling in many places, which has resulted in flooding of even city areas. The devastation of the flood in Balrampur has now reached the city. 
Residents of urban localities in and around Balrampur district have been using boats for movement from one place to another. If you want to know or get the exact sense how this flood is affecting people, you'll have to see these visuals out here. How the narrow lanes, how these houses and the people out here waiting for help have stood on their rooftop for the help. As though SDRF teams are reaching, but though help is somewhere and somehow missing on the part of administration. But what is crucial are the visuals and the scenario how these people are expecting help. People living in the village areas of the district are either seeking refuge on their roofs or have left their homes for safer areas. Meanwhile, relief work is underway. Officials of State Disaster Response Force are conducting rescue operations, providing food and medicines to residents stuck at flooded homes. Sir, as we have come to the flood in the flood, and we have come to the flood in the flood, and we have come to the flood in the flood, and we have come to the flood in the flood. Are you preferring to go to the flood in the flood? We have given the flood in the flood, and we have come to the flood in the flood, and we have come to the flood in the flood. We have the flood in the flood. जैसे डायरिया हो दस्त की शिकायत हो गया किसी को उसके लिए दवा हमने रख रखा है किसी बच्चे को बुखार की शिकायत है किसी को भी बुखार की शिकायत है कोई स्किन का इन्फेक्शन हो गया हो उसके लिए हमने सारी पैकेट बना रखी है The district administration has also sought additional teams of the NDRF from the state headquarters to provide relief. तो जो गांव मैरून हुए हैं उनमें हमारे जिला प्रशासन और पुलिस की टीम के द्वारा वहां पे बोट की व्यवस्था की गई है आज की डेट में हमारी करीबन 110 नावें उन गांवों में काम कर रही हैं और जो लोग फंसे हुए हैं उनको निकालने के लिए हमारे पास एसडीआरएफ की टीम है यहां पे चार टीम यहां पे काम कर रही हैं अलग अलग जगहों पर साथ में हमारे पास फ्लड पी की टीम है वो भी काम कर रही है यहाँ पे लोगों को रेस्क्यू करने के लिए और राहत सामग्री पहुँचाने के लिए According to officials, more than 5,000 families have been severely affected in the region. बहुत परेशानी हो रही है बाप साहब। हम्म हम्म सब सामान बहेगा, सब सामान भीजगा, अचानक आ गया बार। तो खाना बनाने के लिए कुछ है आपके पास? अब लेके कोनो मेर के रावत हैं बच्चे। अच्छा कहाँ से लाते हैं? उतर के बाजार से। मिला नहीं है राशन मगरी वगैरह? नहीं कुछ नहीं, कुछ नहीं मिला। an alert has been sounded to 24 flood outposts in the Gonda and Balrampur districts. As the situation remains alarming, residents are praying to the rain gods for some respite. This is Amar Srivastav from Balrampur, Bureau Report, India Today. Now, for the second time in a row, Tamil Nadu Chief Minister M.K. Stalin has been unanimously elected as DMK Party President at the General Council meeting in Chennai, unopposed. Here's a quick look as to what transpired. Tamil Nadu Chief Minister M.K. Stalin getting the DMK mantle for the second time in a row. Elected party president unopposed at the all-powerful general council meet. Stalin was the only candidate to have filed the nomination for DMK top job. The Tamil Nadu chief minister received rousing applause from DMK members when he entered the general council meeting. During the meeting, DMK chief asked the party workers to ensure that they are the ones who rule Tamil Nadu. Satu mandat terlalu ke mumba iran dah dibeda, kadang kadang tim selwa kian bade, bodoh mak kerana adik sama ayah kerana kerana itu dah, anak bayat aku kerana kerana kadang kadang tim selwa kum, yang muda an nampik kayum, mak kerana yang wayar wayar, mak kerana pecah kerana kuda dengan arpeir, kapar terbentuk yang bodoh, ini nampik kaya tak kaya kaya bentuk bodoh an ini orang yang sindan ayah kerana kerana. Continuing to address the crowds, Stalin warned the party members to be careful when they speak in public. <laughs> 